take some from me or from any of mine, now I'm curious. I'm Better take for you busting me if you miss, I slap a 50 in mine, now I'm furious. Dab in that water, I dab like a query. Yeah, nigga, we was breaking the barrier. If you grabbing that torch, better carry. Trying to hat on that porch on scary shit. Yeah, all our smoke is loud, you got that mouth like beers. Yeah, my son ain't got to work because he gonna hear it. Uh-huh, we your gang gang first, you don't need no your hair. Took the cash from verses, I get that shit to cherry. Love in my city like channel, I swear. Why the fuck I still got a right here word? Heard I seen you on the news, I was worried. And we was just joking with y'all, that's a pair. Real talk too much, got D's everywhere. Still friends, double G's everywhere. I put the BV's everywhere. I do my Camaries air pair. Just ain't know me for shit, no everybody. I don't want to do the shit that you hear. I don't want to tell y'all that I move like Obama. They had a fuck they end up with all over Everybody got to clear it out. Middle of summer, I like a sauna. We was laid back in the back of the Honda. Told young, sneak up in the con. It ain't happened, I want that, y'all. I want someone to eat Benny and Hunter. Give LA a Benny to park. Uh-huh. All my life I had been in apartments. Move the ballot, get a bread ball ballin'. My face I always flip and keep fallin'. Cause I'm a little workaholic. Hit the crib with a 50 and all 20s. I'ma just make a count all of them. But I get the back in all blues. Send a fucking run, run through all of them. You know it's going right, the little dude. I already got a closet, all shoes. Ball 10 pair, baby chief phasos. And my bitch got a closet with some loot. Cashed out on the crib, I ain't get the view. I'm like, fuckin' no problem, it'll do. Mama crib got a pond out of pool. We had roaches and rats, I ain't get the move. I survived through it all, it's just true. Slip on couches and floors all through middle school. Now I'm cool, now I'm boo. Now my car go wrong. Niggas hating on me, but it's boo. Guess I got rich too soon. Yeah. Nigga, I been rapping like six years. What? I seen ten niggas get killed. What, what about me turn down them deals? Uh-huh. Now you pissed off cause I switch wheels. Yeah, switch wheels. Huh? Who run? The limit. No limit, right? Who run? Who run? G.I. Bro. I'm done with this shit. Who y'all think y'all fooling? Not me. Y'all niggas really ain't airing nothing. Who's bust down? Trying to scare us or something? Your shit weak, trying to compare us or something. What I made last week, like a million or something. Rich Max is a bitch and my kids or something. Man, I can fuck your wife, make a share or something. Galora ass mansion with Lara or something. Nigga, try to get my whole drop, fuck my bitch. You think I'ma miss that? Man, she suck mean dick and suck rock dick, so you think I'ma kiss that? I was in LA, bitch, part of her nose, told her I ain't with that. Uh, boy, you tripping. That's how diamonds on your neck, me and better get your wrist back. Uh. Me no broke academics, yeah, that's where you get your news at. Uh, ask your bros, Grammy nominated song just to prove that. Uh. You know your bros told you, man, you better not just do that. Uh. I'm go more. T.Y., tell me when to go. Boy, you ain't rich, you a bitch. Oh, you T.D., bitch, you beat out. Worry about me, bad, get your lick back. Just like bitch, y'all all chit chat. Car so far, got an engine in the back. But let's see, I go with the Gucci and the Prada with the Louis and the Pucci and it's all bitch match. Ho is little Uzi. Got Uzi. Uzi. Myself a hit man. Be quiet, bro. Them niggas over there turn six racks. Not lying, bro. I been fucked this bitch for six racks. After I drop the shit, me her, bro. Ari and my bitch just gonna relax. Probably somewhere on the beach. Probably somewhere on the island. You know that my roller got X, so diamonds in it, so that's that perfect timing. Said Elliot Bezel. I spin them kettle chips, I run it back like a Heisman. <laughs> pull up, I'm swerving, I'm merging. I got the whip, yeah, the one right with the curtains. Got boys that be working, they block and be twerking. They tell us to pull up for diversion. On the beat, me and her, bro, we purge the burger. The body, the lean, got a slurring. You call the phone, you think she sleep, but she sucking my dick while her words keep on slurping. She said that my shape is a size of two liter ginger ale while she keep burping. I take all my hair and I stand on my money. Your bitch think I'm truly as earth. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Faded off the cushion, I'm gone. Only two years old when daddy used to bring them hookers home. Looking like my grandma, my niggas got that ammo. We Jackson and then light up the L. Sam, yo, don't you in this bitch, nigga. Y'all niggas, bitch, niggas. Rats gon' rat and snakes gon' hiss, nigga. Baseball rich, nigga. Do this shit for all my homies. Where them bad bitches at? Come and put that pussy on me. Don't you, you a murderer. Boy, you just be killing shit. Yeah, you know that money talk. I am the ventriloquist. Drink in the trunk. Put your ass to sleep, man. Birdman Jr. got the world in my wingspan. How you niggas want to have it your way? Burger King, I get deep in that pussy. Dig her out. Surgery. Fucking with a real nigga. Fucking right. Certainly. Break in your fucking home. Take your life. Burglary. Whoa, nigga. Die slow, nigga. For dear life, you're holding on. In vogue, nigga. Unload, nigga. Reload, nigga. Tools on deck. Home Depot, nigga. Well, if life is a bitch, then mine a gold digger. Hey, and all my bitches nasty like a cold dinner. Every day I go so hard and work my ass off. I'm good, I'm 100 like a fastball. It's called a foe. Yeah. Uh, I got a 
going back in, man. Yeah, we get fucked, y'all, money. How you want to play? That AK sleep on the side of my bed. That's one eye closed, one eye open. Your cap get peeled like I be profan. I'm sick, I'm ill, I ain't the nigga to fuck with. It's a crazy world and life is shorter than Bushwick. Young money, man, we got this shit by a landslide. Boy, I send them bloods at your ass like a tampon. Uptown shit, wet the whole party. Weezy gon' ball, ball like Steve Harvey. The heater, I'm a tucker, tucker like D. Loris. That's my word, word like D. Soros. I don't see no future in your front and I be stunting hard. Rap game depending on me like a bunch of cards. Fear nobody, but God. Almighty, shoot that motherfucker till I get arthritis. I'm a beast, I'm a ass, I'm a head of my class. I'm a diamond in the rough, like a baby in the trash. I don't talk it, I live it. I paint a picture vivid, and them pistols popping like they sitting in a skillet. I go so hard, go so mean. I'm so New Orleans, told the judge I couldn't budge. It was him or me. Forget the bullshit and remember me. Okay. What up, boys? Uh, appreciate you, Luca. And keep that shit coming. Upgrade to tier two, tier three before the new year, and you'll be blessed. You want my blessings, um, or you're gonna burn in hell and all that. Uh, I need uh, on top of the viewer count. We're gonna need a boost, but uh, from the core guys, this is the most important. I need some help. Let's go spam the like, spam my link. Let's go for the new YouTube video. Let's watch it together just so you guys know how quick. Look at that five minute content. That's perfect for the new year. We're already early. Okay, let's see what we got to work on. You know what women are in my life? Jealous. Base as fuck. Wow. They're always, they're always jealous. They're like this ugly fuck, they're jealous of this, right? Like this is who they're jealous of. Hey, imagine this guy. This is who I'm competing with him. Oh, he's got bitches. I can get men too. You're a woman. No, no shit. You can get men. Nobody gives a fuck. A fat bitch can get men. Nobody knows how many DMs are in a fat bitch. Uh, how many guys are in a fat bitch's DMs. Nobody understands the chads like me. When we're bored, we look at a fat bitch and we go. Hmm. Like, we don't do it, but we go. Hmm. <laughs> so imagine the average guy, what he's doing with these fat bitches. <laughs> The fat bitches are the most beautiful women on earth. Don't cancel me. Check this. I'm going somewhere with this. You know how I know fat women are the most beautiful women on earth? They're the only women that men look at and go, if she lost 98 to 172 pounds, she'd be the hottest woman in New York. <laughs> you don't do that for skinny girls. You don't do it for average girls. You don't do it for curvy. For, for a fucking fat ass, you go, holy fuck, that's a perfect looking woman. She got perfect skin and eyes and nails and everything, hair, whatever. You, you look at her and you're like, oh, she's perfect. If she lost 172 pounds, this girl would be fucking drop dead gorgeous. Men don't do that with skinny girls, average girls, beautiful girls. They say, oh my God, you're perfect. And then they get to know them and they go, you're not perfect. You just, you just know how to, how to hide. When you're finding out she's not perfect, you've got to ask yourself, is she funny at least? You know, because women cannot be funny, but if you're laughing with them, then there's some medicine to the relationship. You know what relationships are? Men lose everything in a relationship, divorce, all that, but the women are destroyed. And again, I can't do it. John, I can't do it anymore. A guy can lose like fucking $10 million in a divorce and everyone wants to hear her side of the story. This fucking nobody bitch who got like nothing to her name, right? Some fucking dumb mid bitch who got no money. She gets everything and she goes, I had to go through the divorce. The divorce was too much. What? You know, women look at me and they go, you, you have a lot of problems with women. And I go, wait till you're mad at your best friends. Wait till you're mad at your girlfriends. You're going to be saying the same shit I'm saying about them. 
And they always do that. They go, yeah, my girlfriends are such bitches. They're such whores. They're such, they're doing this, this, this. But they don't want to admit it because they're like, I don't want Zerka to do the I told you so parade, which I don't even do. I go, bitch, I know. Like, I'm the fuck. I know. You're a fucking idiot. To listen to your best friends until they convince you to ruin things with the guy they're with. And then their best friends go and get fucked and farm horrible mental health. Then they infect the girl with the bad mental health. Then their friendships break. And that's it. The woman's left with nothing. It's like, you should have just stayed with the fucking boyfriend, you retard. Sit in this car, I see a bunch of women, I get angry at women, and that's the content. Men who lose everything complain way less. Imagine they looked at the girl in my eye and said, you won, we lost. We men lost, you won. You won everything, you had everything, we lost. Snap out of it. Who is telling you to be sad? You're stealing our sadness. You're like, See, this is better than uploading a fucking Twitch highlight, isn't it? You know what I mean? Twitch highlights are fucking dumb. This is way better, way to the point, way shorter, and way built for TikTok. I don't really have to do anything. I could just push it through TikTok through 10 accounts for the new year. And this is a way better system than doing those highlights that everyone else does. Because uh, it's like a quality highlight without the fat of it. Uh, or it's like stuff that I can watch, you know? Uh, and then so it'll have like the quality street interviews and then some good stuff from the streams and Then I'll have a second channel with just the full VODs, which I don't even know if I want to do that. I might just do clips but uh, Yeah, I'm gonna do, upload so much content that if I just do masterpieces I mean masterpieces should come once a week But in between that there should be a lot of these small ones, too So I'm always feeding the algo and my face is always uploaded right which is relationships hello of course dude you, anyone who's single is a fucking loser in life right the only thing worse is dating a loser because that's still single have you seen a girl who dates a loser the last thing they tell you is they have a boyfriend after 10 years of talking to them they go oh by the way john by the way <laughs> why are those girls with those dudes then they cannot be alone women cannot be alone They're it's all the quality it's all the value of the stream without the chat and stuff so people actually like yeah, honestly if you want the chat come to the fucking live stream you know i was thinking i'm like should i add chat to this and i'm like nah nah it, it kills the cinematic effect they're so socially calibrated that in the morning dinner time middle of the night they're always texting someone friends or whatever am i being social enough am i being whereas a guy can actually watch a joker movie for two hours not text anyone and feel the energy of alone. And that's why they're meant to stay with cousins and family and grandma. That's where they're supposed to be socially calibrated. But now that liberalism has stripped that, they have whore one and whore two and whore three to talk to. And a bunch of friend dudes that are trying to smash. Any woman who says, these are my friends, they're not trying to smash me. That's like admitting I'm a whore or I'm the dumbest idiot in your phone. Don't talk to me anymore. What the fuck is worse? Finding out you're talking to a fucking retard or finding out that you're talking to the biggest fucking hoe. And they have like a million excuses. If you're the type of guy who listens to a woman's excuses, you deserve whatever's coming your way. You deserve everything that bitch does to you. Like I couldn't ever be in a car where a girl's spitting excuses because they're afraid to. They know I'll be like, shut the fuck up. And that's what the weird thing is. Based men now hear their side of the argument. There's nothing to listen to. Hey man, you don't need guy friends. If you're even having the argument, the communication, you're the fucking hoe. You're the guy is the fucking hoe. The fuck are you talking about that? I've never had someone walk into my car. I've never had a girl have the balls to talk to me like that, where they're like, actually, I have a bunch of guy friends and stuff. They all do the same thing. The worst they'll do is, I'm getting rid of them, John. Then hurry the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> hurry the fuck up. It's so Hodge twins. Like, I saw that comment. I'm like, oh, because they do it in a car. I watched them eat. I grew up with Hodgson's. It's so good to have some of these and not just studio ones. 172 pounds. <laughs> I do a lot of car ones. And yeah. Because I need to be doing IRL streams in Texas as well. And IRL is really in between my YouTube content. It's just me. You know? It, this, is a, this system is so good. This means I'm always live. Like, you can't run from me. You know? Yeah, I'm thinking of shorts, but yeah.
Mm. Try and get a second camera angle too, bro. Are you fucking stupid? This is from a phone live stream. What the fuck? We'll have the good video camera for street interviews when, when we have people. But I'm saying when I'm alone with a phone. That's what I'm saying. Because I don't want a lot of the Twitch streams just to die off. And I don't want to upload... I don't want to upload highlights unless they're like filtered and look polished like this. This looks nice, dude. I want to have nice looking stuff for once. You know, I like Haza's stuff. I like when people upgrade the production value and this guy's fucking what the fuck that's on. Are you worried people will consider you part of the Tate wave? It doesn't really have effect on you if people can Google you. Like, if people can Google you, they go, oh, he's been doing this for years. Like, he's way before Tate. If I came out after, then I'd be like, <laughs> I'd feel so weird. They're like, what the fuck? And if, I'd be just... mm, if anything, I calmed down, though. It used to be more extreme. I chilled out a bit. If you did shorts clips of the part listening to a retard's argument. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really, I want someone to show me how to do shorts. You know, I want to, like, see someone do shorts of me and then be like, yeah, yours are better than mine. Like, I want to compete. I want to see who's, uh, who would get the, play what? We just watch the whole thing, dude. You know what women are in my life? Jealous. They're always, they're always jealous. They're like, this ugly fuck, they're jealous of this. How is right? your Slava? This is who they're jealous of. I imagine this guy. What does that mean? How's my glory? Is that what it means? I, this is who, I'm competing with him. Oh, he's got bitches? I can get men too. You're a woman. No, no, no shit, you can get men. Nobody gives a fuck. A fat bitch can get men. Nobody knows how many DMs are in a fat bitch. Uh, so for years and years of doing these great genius level rants and i let them all disappear like what the fuck is wrong with me i let all of them disappear there's a million live streams i let just disappear forever and i'm not the type to redo rants you know if it comes to me naturally i'll clip it up like this but i'm not redoing that's hurt dude that's like years of content yeah, that is hurt. Whatever. I guess redoing them with better quality would be. Yeah. I really like YouTube, though. I fucking love uploading on YouTube. Like, I don't know what it is, but YouTube is so rewarding, man. I feel so. <laughs> the fuck is this mine looks way more polished bro jeez look at mine dude mine with the cinematic christopher nolan filter was that nine movie nine filmora is retarded dude yo if all my shit look like this this is why you gotta always edit yourself this looks so good then my grandkids get to see shit like this right I get to see all of it without the jokes. I want the value of it from YouTube, you know? The jokes is like, a lot of the jokes are going to be live streamed, but the value, value entertainment. Yeah, I like Timmy's. Okay. Yeah, as long as my YouTube channel is set to go for TikTok, I'm happy. If it's all chopped up for TikTok and ready to go, I really should add subtitles. I should do that for TikTok, though. Apollo, I don't even know what that means. Circa, can you do some for me? Do some what? Who the fuck are you? I actually don't want goofy subtitles. I want them cinematic. I want them to look nice, sleek, and smaller. I think that's what I want. Yeah. Uh, look at this, man. The new year is not even here, and we already got this, and we just need another street interview done 
in Texas quickly. Thoughts on the LTG ban? I don't know what that is. Why do I know what that is, but I don't know? You sound like my brother. Have you ever been to Montreal? No, no, but Montreal's nice. Dunkle's pink vibrator. Okay. Would you pop an Addy <laughs> if you had some? Thank you, Grim. <laughs> Would I pop an Addy if I had some? No, because it makes me slur. It makes me say bad words. Why is chat full of annoying people? I think we need a mod to clean this fucking retards up. Okay, let's see the comments. Uh, you know what women are in my... I think I'm the only guy who uploads and then goes live to watch it. Like Nobody does this shit. Spoken like a true poet. Let's get this guy up. <laughs> so, Rami's good shit. Who is this guy? Absolutely right. This guy clearly is not in chat. W Manic Rant. Based Coke Vanilla. Okay. Mikey, good shit, good shit. All right, we reward some of these guys. Got to host these guys. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the new year, man. John, if you're under six feet, are you even a man? Of course not. I'm so tempted to say to this guy, of course I'll get married to your mom and she'll suck the skin off my dick. And then I realized it's a supporter. Like, I can't always troll. Like, I'm, I want to troll more than I want to be helpful to people. I'm so tempted to just fucking respond to this guy. <laughs> oh, Wajowski's going to love me. <laughs> I need to chill out. I'm so tempted, man. Anytime it's like a good faith question, I want to answer in horrible faith. We live in a society. Look at this. This is a fascist. Damn, that is so sleek, dude. This filter is retarded, bro. This filter is so Christopher Nolan. Can't even tell it's a filter. Who's single is a fucking loser. Look at those fucking teeth, bro. Look at these fucking chompers. Bro. And that's it. The woman's left with nothing. It's like you I'm falling in love with myself all over again, and it's gay. In Ten years of talk. Look at those teeth, man. Oh my god. And then they go, oh, by the look way, John. Big, look how big his teeth are. But and this is like after like some fucking high blood pressure Christmas dinner where we all gain a hundred pounds. Like this is snap and pale. I gotta fix that pale. I'm gonna tighten up. Uh, I'm gonna tighten up and get ready for Texas. I mean. We're going here. This fucking shithole. God, I've never talked more shit about a city and I have to live here. That's the story of my life. Hey guys, and welcome to Cool Vision. In this video, we'll visit Austin, Texas. Austin Chamber of Commerce. Business district of Austin is whole. Look at that. How's that even a city? That's like buildings, but then it's like it's they ran it's it's like a city that's loading in the simulation. Like it where are the buildings? Like it's it's like twenty five percent loaded. To some of the tallest all residential condo towers in the US. Can I stream snipe when you come yeah, if you're a subscriber, you can always snipe me when I'm alone. Look, I don't think you guys realize, like, I don't have friends, and everyone tries to be my friend, but I have, like, antisocial issues. So if you come talk to me, I'll, like, talk your ear off, bro. I'm very alone. But I can only see you, like, a couple times, and then I get fucking mad at you. Pace in the south, there's only one flag. Dude, remember Slicker and I went in here? Pace in the north, and the reason for that is, when it's facing the south, it's, it's kind of... ...and Mexican gourmet food. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you have friends, bro. Relax. I don't know, dude. A friend is like, I have two friends and everyone else is like 
not a friend to me. You know what I mean? I just like I use them. I just use people. I don't give a fuck, bro. I just use everyone around me. Like I use you to further my agenda, bro. What the fuck? Merry Orthodox Christmas and Happy New Year community. Mer wow, look at this. You know what? Maybe the Orthodox guys are more based. You know, after 5,000 biddies, I mean, maybe maybe they're onto something there. The Catholics are falling back now. Maybe I'm a sellout. <laughs> I appreciate that. Where are you from, bro? Okay. Jesus Christ. How do I look? Do I look like a cop? I'm gonna turn that off. I'm 15, bro. How do I usually do this? Oh, I can't wait to actually have a ring light. Not this fucking humming ring light that I spent 200 fucking bucks on. Oh. All right, um, Jesus, man, why is this so? We are getting the fuck out of here, boys. We are leaving, um, Vancouver, Canada for, for good. We're not coming back until we have millions and millions of followers. And even then, probably still not going to. I mean, I just visit, but it's time to say goodbye to this, and that, what a crazy life this has been, because I always think of how many times Miz and all those people wanted me out there to grow my channel and help me out, and I couldn't do it, dude. Could not do it. I could not leave this place, and but something happens when you're old and you realize something. You realize, like... Yeah, you live in the town with your family and stuff, but you don't see your family. You know, my brothers got their own lives, my parents, and I've been kind of just like preaching traditional, but as soon as January starts, everyone goes back to their shit, and then I'm stuck in this dark room, and and why? You know, like I was going to send them $3,000 or I sent 3000 and they're like, no, bro, your rent's only 1000 for 10 rooms, a movie room with a projector, a swimming pool, a fire pit, everyone on Twitch you want to use for content, the hub of partying in case you get bored. I mean, I can't believe all this for 1000 Like the rent is so cheap. In Austin, dude, it's so. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> it's so. It's three. It's like almost three times cheaper. It's just unreal. And I always thought I'd be in a dark, dingy apartment in Austin when I do move out. But. <laughs> uh, really, let's be let's be honest. If this wasn't a streamer house. Or not a streamer house. They got real jobs. But they got the equipment. They know what they're doing with content and stuff like that. This is perfect for me. You know, if I have tech issues, stuff like that. This is actually insane. All their equipment. 
I'm just glad over the years I have such a good reputation on Twitch that, you know, I get to penetrate a liberal softy home. And really, I want Miami way more, but we're going to see how the street stuff go because, yeah. Uh, getting a new house. I don't know, Ronan, if you've been here, but I'm moving into Razor and Nina's. Nina, the most, I mean, she defends Hunter Biden, the most liberal girl in the U.S. And I love her to death. I don't know why, man. She just can't explain it. I love their place, too. Like, I hate everyone's house in Austin, Texas. Kiana's place is, I haven't even, I don't think I've been to that one. The new one, it's depressing. Every house in Austin, Texas is depressing. And this one kind of stopped doing parties and stuff, but it was known for that. I'm just going to revive it. I'm going to, I'll be the cleric. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of awesome. Cause I mean, everyone's been telling me they're like, with the way you live life, Zerka, and you spend like $200 a day on food and blah, blah, all this stupid shit. And I spend 400 a month on a phone plan, one phone plan. That's what Canadian data is like, right? Well, for Americans would be 350. This is Canadian. I'm thinking, and that's a business all because there's no such thing as unlimited data in Canada. It's called unlimited, but you need a business plan. You need to like, it took me a long time to get this dude. And I know, right? And I've been scammed to death out here. And I thought I was a badass. I'm like, I'm covering all these bills. I'm rich as fuck. <laughs> but now, now I'm paying a fraction. I'm paying one third lifestyle cost for 10 more rooms, fire pit, swimming pool, hot tub, movie room. Friendly care package inbound. Wow. Streamer and Twitch.tv. Who? John Zerka. Oh, John Zerka from the Idaho. He is the viral. Uh, he's going viral. Like, All the juicers listen. Go watch John Zerka instead. Jesus Christ, this guy, man. Enemy going to exploit. Trad Chad donated $150. Yo, I've been busy with work and can only watch VODs and catch the stream on my days off. Keep up the good work and W content. I don't we need even more know. truth streams exposing the satanic ruling the class. <laughs> I don't even know how you're watching them when I don't even publish the VODs. <laughs> I'll do it like two days later and just torture the VOD frog. <laughs> but appreciate that. And guys, Christmas donos, New Year's donos, Eid donos, not Hanukkah, I'm kidding. All that now, and I mean now. Now, now, you want a blessed year? Now. You don't stay with me 12 hours a fucking day and don't donate. I'm saying now, bitch. You don't get all this value and funny for free? What the fuck do you think this is? You pay for Netflix and not here? <laughs> Appreciate that, Chad. Trad Chad for the 150, but let me be honest with you, bro. That's peanuts to where I'm headed. Because let me tell you something about life. Life is about support. Oh, look at this fucking bitch. Nobody gives a fuck about your link. Okay? Just give me your money. Check this out now. What is the link, man? What is... I'm never going to remember my thing. <laughs> Just a sec, before I hit the link, just a sec. Give me more bits for the fucking link, you derailer. The fuck was I saying? Give me more of the bits. Give me more. I don't even know what they are. Give me 10,000 of those motherfuckers. Now check this out. Thank you. Now look at this, guys. Okay? A thousand? CJ, you've been here a while. Do better. 
What? What am I? Chopped liver? <laughs> Push the fucking. <laughs> I'm picking up my shit, going to Austin, Texas, and doing everything no YouTuber can do. Real street raw entertainment. Okay. I'm coming after Logan Paul. And here's what I'm saying. 2022 was a great year for me. The year before that was awesome. The year before, every year has been awesome. But I promise 2023, I won't even be able to talk to you guys anymore. That's how big I'm <laughs> If there's ever a time to ask your fucking retard questions, it's now. Because I'm telling you, you will never be able to talk to me again. That's how big this chat's going to be. Remember the last time I said that and it happens and it happens in cycles? This time I'm going away for good. There you go. There you fucking go. Let's go Slavic bro. Now he's now he's trying to antagonize me. Look at these, these Balkan guys are trying to antagonize me now. Do I look Slavic to you? Now I gotta be... <laughs> now I gotta be racist to the guy giving money to me. Like, you put me in a weird position, bro. But here's the point. The point is, if you've ever learned something from me, you owe me money. That's it. And 2023 is going to be horrible for you if you don't donate right now. There's no joke here. There's no joke. Okay, putting a lot of money into this new system. A lot of employees got to get paid. There's a podcast coming. There's IRL and street interviews. Like, this is the trinity of content for you guys. And here's what I'm saying, okay? Imagine I don't do any of this. I just fucking smash bitches and become a degenerate. All oh, oh, the fucking Clint 1717 and just fucking alcohol and shit. Like just, what's that thing called? With the tube? What's the tube thing called? The beer bong. I just start doing beer bong content and I like Nelk boys, what's up? Everyone's like, what the fuck did Austin? Because Austin, you got to know is if you think Vancouver is lib, this is, what is it? Ultra instinct lib? I'm going to be surrounded by softies trying to infect me. Right? Scary. GGS. GG. <clears throat> Podcast going to be great. Especially because I don't know what it is, but asking someone to be on a podcast can get tricky. But meeting them in person and saying, hey, you want to be on my podcast tomorrow? Like I meet them in Austin. They do it the next day. It's like the person thing is so much better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I did to this mic. It's showing all green bars in the Shure microphone. I don't know why it's low. Like, what do I have to do to it? Well, how is this Joe Rogan's mic? Yeah. Well, Mark, I you know, listen, guys. I might actually infiltrate the DNC and become a liberal for 2023, you know, and do some uh, inside work, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Sounds like pedo shit, actually. Never mind. Tease a predetermined cast. I don't like casts. I like new people on every podcast, okay? When it's the same people, I want to, you know what I mean? I want to, I want to harm myself in GTA and shit. I'm so cold. Mm -hmm. If you have an, a an anime picture as your profile pic, I think Train said it a long time ago, that's a pedo. That's Geppetto. That's, a, oh my God, I almost forgot. <laughs> Nick, keep that coming. Don't be a bitch, bro. Push money is always gonna go to your bank account, right? You're always gonna have money. You're gonna work for the rest of your life. You can push harder, okay? Some of us are not trying to work. Uh, 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not trying to work, dude. I'm trying to get my, my shit paid for. And I want to go live and react to uh, Jubilee. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good shit, Nick. Yeah, I don't know why they're the wrong code. Let me fix that for you. Do you guys like the alert or should I fix it? Mm, I think it's broken. Filters, filter out autumn. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, give me that clip the the bit guy sent. Uh, look at Dead Hex calls him the bit guy. Like you don't even, we don't even say names. We're the worst fucking people to subscribe to, man. Who's the bit guy? <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a Wake Wilder clip. Uh, okay, this should be good. Be self medicating, man. Of course, roids, especially roids. Fuck that shit, man. Zerka is getting on trend. Zerka's a fucking idiot. <laughs> this one time I was like uh, really damaged out of surgery. And I'm like, how can I increase my red blood cell count so I heal faster? Yo, wake. Let's get on Anadrol together. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? You're out of surgery. I'm like, okay, just me. Can you get me some Anadrol? And he's like, you're picking the most poisonous shit. Are you fucking stupid, John? And then, uh, and then I stopped drinking that day. I was like, what am I doing? Zerka is an actual fucking idiot if the dude touches an anabolic again. Didn't he have to have like half of his fucking liver resection because- Oh, uh, it's not my liver. He pummeled it with anabolic. It's not my liver. Liver would be life or death. Alex, that dude puts more steroids in his body. I'll actually be sad. <laughs> because as much as I hate- Wait, if I had a- if I had a big afro of hair, I would juice- I would juice- I would Boston, rest in peace, Boston Lloyd. I would Boston Lloyd it. Will you ever do steroids again? If I'm ever bald, which I doubt it because my parents have such good hair. I mean, me juicing would be game over, dude. Like, could you imagine the red pill then? It wouldn't be test. It would be all the aggressive shit. I hate John's platform. Uh, John uh, should still be alive. I like John as a friend. I don't want John to go. I, I'm Wake's worst enemy because Wake says, hey, guys, don't ever do roids. And then one guy asked me the other day, and I said, why would you ever want to be natty? <laughs> like, you can be natty after you do a couple cycles, you know? Get some new satellites. You get some fucking dope satellite cells. Just transform. So, yeah, I'm like his worst nightmare. Yo, I would actually be upset um, with him, like, very legitimately. To the point to where I would like, I would I would literally flush his shit. I would I would I I would flush anything I found. It's so stupid. It's just a liver. God. I Wake's one of those guys who are like you could do it naturally because the guy was like a model. He was like a model when he didn't work out that much. He was just a fit guy. He was like a model. I thought he was dying. He was. <laughs> And he lived, and then he's like, you know what? I'll fucking do it, bro. <laughs> you think they can fucking stop me, dude? I'm gonna fucking, fucking tank it. Be self I'm actually a badass. They're never going to stop me. Yeah, no, I'm going to do shit with Wake. Uh, I just talked to him the other day. He's like, are you in Austin? I'm like, not yet, but I'm going to see Wake. And what is this? If you want her to, ah, I'm nutting in public. All you have to do. I am quite the artist. Holy shit. Is add a fishing hat. What the fuck? <laughs> you watch closely if you're in chat still. <laughs> if you really want her to like you, grow your hair like this. <laughs> if you really all right anyways hold on but here's what i'm saying dude you <laughs> do i always get that close to the sun what the fuck is this bro you'll guard me better don't let me do those kind of jokes like we've got big shit to do right 
We got big stuff to do before we Kanye it. I'm kidding. Never. You know, Kanye is totally wow. <clears throat> Did you get veneers? No, I grew new teeth. No, I didn't see Kanye's new logo. Where where does he where do you guys see Kanye on Twitter or like where does he post? Is he still banned? Yeah, we're reacting to Hassan vs. Fresh Fit today. This will be a short stream. Uh, yeah, BX is definitely invited to the house. I love Becca to death. She messaged me. She's like, uh, her daughter misses me. Like, Lainey and children love me, right? Like, I always said parents love me. And chat's like, no. I'm like, kids love me. And they're like, no. And then I proved the kids thing. And people are like, if people watch your content, Zerka, parents wouldn't like you. That's wrong. K Bubble's dad. Remember, I had a girlfriend at the time, and K Bubble's dad jumped in chat. I was in Texas. He's like, You belong with my daughter. Right in front of the girl I'm with. And I'm like, Oh shit, this guy's like trying to like get me in trouble. And that was kind of like got me in trouble. But uh, yeah, parents love me, kids love me, everyone loves me. And uh, I don't know why, because I'm just using you people. Right, like when I pose for a picture with a kid, it's just to make me look more wholesome, so I don't get canceled. Because I hate children, dude. You know, I just want to have kids, and then like, you're free now. Go into the wilderness and just be free. <clears throat> Does that make sense? <laughs> DJ, I need a hundred gifted right now. Don't be a pussy. What is this? A woman gets so turned on. She gets soaked. When I can't even tell if I'm joking or if there's value here. And she hears the N word. What the fuck is this is made for TikTok, bro. Someone push it. Push it through TikTok. I'll reward you. That's all women want is to hear the N word. That's it that i hope nothing I, else i hope i'm going somewhere with this i don't even remember this else they want in life more than that word i swear to god i'm not lying a woman gets what the fuck finish it bro what is the end of it I've never let it go like that. What's the end of it, bro? What's the end of the clip? The N-word is no. Oh, the N-word is no to a woman. That's so true. Yeah, that's so true. They love it. You just tell them no, they get turned on. I think this was such a good stream because not only do I break down the difference from these studs and players and stuff like that, but this trinity of your job, your looks, and your friend system is really the trinity of getting bitches, right? Not women. They don't exist anymore. And I talk about how when men go for a figure eight shaped girl, that's the first thing they see before anything that women go for that upside down triangle in a guy. But most guys think it's like six pack or this or nice calves and the dumbest shit. But it's really that dominant look. That Justice League look. And that is so true. That's the dad muscle. And this just, this is such a good diagram. Yeah, it's like a stature that comes with that. Yeah, shoulders come from overhead press, right? OHP will always be the king of building shoulders. I'm going to show you guys when I'm in Austin, I start lifting again. And I'm going to show you. And by by overhead press, I mean with your elbows in. <laughs> you, every time I go to the gym, I see people overhead pressing out here. And I cringe. I'm like, ooh, that's got to hurt one day. Like right here, that's a scary lift to do. Even with dumbbells. And I'd say one thing that people get wrong with overhead press is it's really hard to do the movement correct. The best way to do, let's say a dumbbell overhead press, use a belt. 
my delts exploded when I'd, I'd tighten up a lifting belt, right? I'd feel way more stable with the movement. It, it was so insane how much a belt makes a difference when you're lifting, right? And then there's fucking retards who say, no, you want to strengthen your core without a belt and stuff like that. No, dude, if you want to build good delts, you'll be so upright. Your lumbar will be perfect for this movement if you use a belt. And I remember using a belt and it was just the best delts I've ever had. It's just, belt is so based, man. The belt is just so, I need to get a new belt. Same with bench press too. And it's like any chance I can get. Wraps, I never got into wraps, you know, like for, you know how people have deadlift wraps and stuff? Mm-hmm. Bro, just get a stronger core. It's not about core. It's about the focus being on the delts. What is this? His wallet when we went out to dinner. I He pulled out the 50 and he goes, do you think this is enough? I think I said. Bro, I, I, this is the only person who dares call Zerka cheap. When I was really distracted because a girl ran away and I had to chase her and I was just threw fucking money at the table. And I was like, I wasn't even thinking of what the fuck this retard was saying. But I paid $800 for the bill with Heel Mike and his girl. I pay 700 for my fucking steak. I pay $350 for every single dinner in Vegas. I wish I was a cheap guy on vacation. I'm more cheap when I'm at home, but che- on vacation... I've always paid for my friends and I've always gone live and regretted it and said, fuck those guys. And I know when I see them, I'll pay again and again, because really I know when I'm around streamers, I don't care if they have a million followers and stuff. I know they're not going to make it, you know, like years down the road, they're going to be irrelevant. And I know this money's like, this is chump change to someone like me. I know where I'm going in life. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. You know, I can take the hit, but, uh, I, I think I think I think that's a bad way to live. You know, like the most successful dudes, they just split the bill with everyone, right? Don't be the nice guy. You know, this isn't a working work environment. This is not a coworker. This is a fucking cock. Fuck that shit. You know, and this is the first time someone tried to call me cheap. This is the first time in my life, and and I think cheap is a compliment, but I'm trying to become that. Don't compliment me until I'm there, dude. What is this? Oh yeah, Dunkle, let's do a boxing match. I'm gonna be in your city next week. Let's do a boxing match, tough guy. Well, I, do I, I actually get... sound that Canadian? To your biggest clip. <laughs> I wanna show you <laughs> I wanna show you f- And I said when I quit Twitch, I'm doing this shit. Woo, <laughs> did I lie though? Yeah, this guy doesn't understand. I stream a few hours a night for fun, for people who like it. But I'm not really a Twitch streamer anymore. Right? This is more for me. I'm not doing what I did last year. So he doesn't really understand what's going to happen. Damn, he called your ass out. Literally, he is coming for you. He's coming to New York. Great. That's fine. He said next week. You know what next week is for me? I'm going to Texas. Not, Not happening. I work Monday, Tuesday next week at the barber shop because I'm a grown man and I have a real job. Unlike, I'm a grown man and I have a real job. Yeah, his one of his best friends leaked to me that it's not even his barber shop. Like that's a lie. He, it's contracted out. It's not even his. And I didn't even want to. For weeks, I knew that I didn't want to say it live, but. This is probably an old clip. I shouldn't be reacting to this shit because it's like, this gives him life. I don't want to react to this guy. Oh, he says it's not his? Okay, I don't know why his best friend turned on him and said that. I thought he said he owned it. Doesn't matter. Like, honestly, Dunkle, my dude, I host you. I did everything I'm supposed to. You just, you're just a weirdo. I did all the nice guy shit, and now you can, uh, now you can feel the other side of me.
Play card with chai. Dude, gaming is for fucking losers, bro. Okay. I spent... Oh, right. Here's what I was going to say. I spent... Um, okay, here it, is, here it is. I spent Christmas drunk as... I don't want to say drunk. Like wine drunk, right? I said, fuck it. I can drink today. Whatever. With family. Be funny guy. Don't ruin the mood, right? And it was great. We went to dinner, all that. And then my brothers come over and we play... Mario Kart, super addictive. I love Mario Kart, right? So we played a couple rounds. And then we played a lot of the new Smash Bros. Had a blast. And then my nephew and my brother, he wants to like, he wants to entertain my nephew. We decide to watch Pinocchio, this Masonic programming, psychological warfare. But how bad could it be? Right, I grew up with it, whatever. We just watch it together and whatever. But there is something that was not told to me before we started watching the movie. And we put our phones down. We actually watched the movie, right? It was the new Pinocchio. And I don't know if you've watched the new Pinocchio on Netflix but I swear to God, I'm not exaggerating. I've never seen a more satanic Masonic film in my life. When I say satanic Masonic, they threw the whole script out of Pinocchio, rewrote the script where spoilers, he keeps dying and going to afterlife where a spirit of light, an angel with a lot of eyeballs on the wings, just like Lucifer, right? Just like the angel of light, Lucifer talks to him and it's a she just like venus the morning star lucifer right it's a female entity venus is a sphinx in the other world and it shows the whole zodiac calendar on top of it where pinocchio wakes up in sand in egyptian sand and keeps dying and going back and pinocchio at one point gets crucified on a cross and they light the fucking cross on fire. Like this. And I, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, I don't remember Pinocchio having, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I don't remember the script, anything like this. And I look to my twin brother, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this? And it is the creepiest movie. It doesn't even make sense to adults. It's that fucking creepy. And I wanted to joke around and be like, I'm going to find out the Masonic programming in this movie. But I thought it was a cartoon, Pinocchio. I didn't know it's the new one. And it's so fucking demonic. Um, it's, I'd say this, dude. It's more than Eyes Wide Shut. It's more demonic than Eyes Wide Shut. Imagine me saying that. And that's my favorite movie of all time. It's more blatantly demonic it's more demonically charged than Eyes Wide Shut. Think about what movie I'm talking about. That's how insane it is. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm like to my brother, yo, are you creeped out by this movie? And he said, yeah. I'm like, there's no way this is for kids if it's creeping out a fucking gr grown-ass bouncer. And after he gets crucified on a cross and lit on fire, him and his monkey best friend get saved by the cross in the ocean and they're on top of the cross using it like a paddle board. Yeah. And it really shows Pinocchio transhumanist. This is what I think. Pinocchio is the transhumanist future. Right? That that perfect create human future. And the monkey represents the past of that evolution we come from monkeys. Both on top of the cross. So the past and the future on top of the cross which would be the present. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, is this a dream? Am I dreaming that this is what Pinocchio became? Let me find you the clip. It's so fucking strange to me that we randomly picked a movie and it turned out to be worse than Eyes Wide Shut. I knew it was going to be something weird, but look at this shit. New Pinocchio. I could do spoilers all day and you'd still watch. This is it. I want to tell you a story. It's a story you may think you know, but <laughs> you don't. 
Over there. What is that? No, my nephew couldn't even watch it. He got so scared he left. Me and my brother finished it. Papa! It speaks! He's just a puppet. No, I'm not. I'm a real boy. People are sometimes afraid of things they don't know. That guy's name is Geppetto. And Pinocchio, Okio means, I think it was like brain organ or something, but it means penile brain. Penile gland. Right? Pin Okio. I forget how, the breakdown of that. But. I don't understand. Ah, we have found him, our star. Everyone shall love you and call your name Pinocchio. That's the guy from Inglorious Bastards, right? And he plays this uh, group, you know, the spirit of greed, I guess. And it's so strange to me because the whole movie is attacking the church because uh, it's set in World War II and Mussolini's in the movie, right? I was really into it. And um, basically the church is linked to fascism in this and Pinocchio is like the hero Marxist, I guess. Pinocchio! I have something I'd like to give you. It is a school book which belonged to a very special boy. The boy you lost. Papa! Enough of this nonsense. Hey, where are you going? You tell him I love him. And I won't be a burden anymore. I wonder if it's going to show the demon. Hello? Lucifer's in this movie. The wooden boy with the borrowed soul. While Look at this shit! Biblically accurate angel sphinx with the eyeballs in the fucking wings and it's the angel of light and it's a feminine voice the Venus the morning star and the zodiac is on top and this is the afterlife that he keeps going to now you may have eternal life your loved ones they do not you never know just like masons are promised eternal life you know how long you have with someone until they're gone. Look at, look at the fucking serpent tail. Look how, how is this for kids? Not, you never know how long you have with someone until they're gone. It's a fucking chimera, dude. Not, you never know how long you have with someone until they're gone. Even as the ball horns, because I don't remember a sphinx having horns, bro. With someone until they're gone. Look at this shit. Even with the bull horns. Right, they get lost in the fish, just like in the Bible. Please bring him back to me. Papa! See, right there. Look at them. Back to me. That's not a boat. They're surfing on the cross that was lit on fire as he got crucified on a hill. <laughs> it sounds like I'm making this shit up, right? Like, you guys are like, wait, the Satan scene is not the most extreme. No, it's not, dude. There's a way worse scene. Pinocchio! Life is such a wonderful gift. <laughs> Nobody believes me, eh? Look at that. Nobody believes me. Look at this shit. New Pinocchio crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believes me, huh? And Fuck, so it's it not this. That we lived our lives. Fuck, what scene is it? Here it is. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It sounds like I'm lying, but I'll find it. 
Is our contract worth nothing? I'll do my part, and you, you will burn. Burn right, like a star. What the fuck is this? How do people laugh at me when I say Pinocchio and all this is Masonic programming and psychological warfare on our children? How does Destiny laugh at me? I don't remember this fucking scene in the in the original. Are you telling me it's blatant, dude? Are you telling me that they're not even trying? Oh, there it's just a coincidence? He's being fucking crucified. He's going through the flames of Moloch. What does this accomplish for them? It's always to scar symbols, signs and symbols rule the world. So they're always scarring your mind and subconscious, right? Think about how McDonald's uses yellow and red to make you hungry. It hits your subconscious. They always want to scar your subconscious away from the church, right? They always want to parody the church, right? They're the only thing that made people fucking civil. That's what they want to parody. It's subliminal. And a lot of people say it's mockery, but no, it helps them too. It's not just mockery. Oh, what's the chocolate? Ow. Or de here's Destiny's take. It's just art, bro. Ow. Ow. Please help! 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 It's like a Frankenstein theme with the monkey. They're trying to sacrifice Geppetto's new for a newborn son, right? He lost his original one, probably because he's a fucking pedo and sacrificed him. Uh, that's what I think. But yeah, they're trying to sacrifice the newborn ch child through the flames of Moloch. And they can't because he's not a real boy, I guess. That's what this chatter is saying. But it's like, you should have seen my face watching this movie. Out of a million movies to choose from, my brother picks this and the whole time he's just laughing he's like i didn't know i didn't know bro i didn't know and i'm like holy fuck and for a pocket, you loathsome lucius nature you will betray me no more Because you got to ask yourself, when society is being taught biblical stories, it does something to the youth's mind. But what were biblical stories replaced for? Disney. So ask yourself, was it is it just fun and games or are the stories deliberate? Why are all Disney films about kids running away from home and being delinquents and rebelling and being their own savior? always against their parents always against tradition like why is it always a fucking starring a marxist mindset and then you gotta ask yourself who's walt disney the creator of club 33 masonic club 33 freemason right that's not even a conspiracy was the old pinocchio bad all disney films are bad they're all telling a story to your subconscious away from god they're pushing you away from god but I didn't think that humanity become, b would become so stupid that the stories are barely subliminal. Now it's just a cross being burned. Now it's like, it's become blatant. Even the Jepe the no the not Geppetto that fucking dude falling on the rock that's not really a child's film like children's film don't show people hit, smash their bones on rock like that. What about Rapunzel? Yeah, Rapunzel leaves her mom, right? She ditches to get fucking R worded.
They're very strange stories to tell kids. Like they're very, not strange. Look, 10 differences between the old and the new. Yeah, how about the crucifixion difference? Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a stunning stop-motion adaptation of the Italian children's story about a wooden puppet who becomes a real boy. But how does it compare to Disney's animated classic? Yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm explaining the biggest differences between Disney's iconic movie and del Toro's magical take on the legendary tale. Spoilers ahead, so take care if you haven't seen All my life people said I'm crazy, now I think everyone else is crazy. If, if Destiny watches this film and says it's not Masonic programming with the crucifixion and Lucifer the Angel of Light, I don't know what to say anymore. Right, at this point, we live in fucking Looney Tune world. Seen it yet. While the star of Disney's film is crafted for maximum cuteness with rounded features, big eyes, rosy cheeks, and bright clothes, Guillermo del Toro took inspiration from the darkly humorous illustrations of artist Grizz Grimley for his Pinocchio, which means he's- You know what Pinocchio is about? It's about how men get horny when they lie to women. I don't know. All spindly limbs and stripped right back to his more realistically grainy wooden elements. And unlike Disney's Geppetto, who lovingly paints and names the puppet, a drunken carving session by Del Toro's Geppetto means the marionette has a rough and ready look with twigs, tape, and nails sticking out, which fits with the. You know, all men, when they tell a girl, hey, I really care about you, just to pipe her, they get hard from that lie. I'm the only dude on earth. I get very, very turned off and flaccid if I'm lying for pussy. If I'm lying blatantly, playing with her emotions, it's not that I'm a good guy and stuff. It just, I feel so pathetic. Because I'm the type of guy that's like, yeah, shut up, bitch. I don't care about you. And, I st and you know, still pipe. You know, that's a better story for me. But, I, hey, I actually really like you and stuff. Like, I've never once in my life looked in a girl's eyes and said, I really care about you, and not meant it. You know what I mean? Like, that's never happened once. I think that's fucking... Because in my head, I'm like, I'll get it either way. They're going to fucking fall for the jokes and shit. I didn't never have to do that. But a lot of guys get turned on with that lie part film's theme of embracing imperfection. But Del Toro and his fellow filmmakers haven't just revamped Pinocchio's appearance. They've also put a completely new spin on Carlo Collodi's 19th century children's story. Whereas Disney follows the original Italian tale and eventually turns the wooden puppet into a real flesh and blood boy, Del Toro takes things in a different direction as he says he's never believed that transformation should be demanded to gain love. Gone too is the idea that obedience and conformity are necessarily always a thing to aspire to, with the Mexican Oscar winner showing instead how disobedience can actually be a positive thing. And as Del Toro notes, in this version everybody learns from Pinocchio, who's winningly voiced by Gregory Mann, rather than just Pinocchio learning from everybody else. The talking cricket who pops up just a handful of times in Collodi's book, where he actually gets killed by Pinocchio, was given a much expanded role by Disney, as well as being a tea insect, a cute cat with an attitude called Figaro, and an eyelash batting goldfish named Cleo. Del Here it is. He even has some poignant moments as well. In a big change from Disney's Blue Fairy and the book's fairy with turquoise hair, Del Toro's film instead gives us two ethereal blue sister spirits called the Wood Sprite and Death. Yo, someone send me, uh... Disney princesses tier list. Let's see which one's hottest and which one. We'll do it quick. Both voiced by Tilda Swinton. Who on earth are you? A guardian. I care for the little things. That's Lucifer. That's the Morning Star. That's Venus. Forgotten things. The lost ones. The Wood Sprite has huge feathery wings covered with blinking eyes, which was inspired by medieval Mexican paintings of angels and is also a deliberate nod to another of Del Toro's creations, the Angel of Death from Hellboy. I told you its darker themes, Del Toro's movie isn't afraid to introduce the concept of death, though it's done in a darkly amusing manner. For example, the odd group of rabbits who work in the underworld seem more interested in their game of cards than making sure the people inside the coffins they carry are actually dead. And the whole scene is a nod to the famous series of paintings, Dogs Playing Poker. Death herself is a sphinx-like creature with horns and wings covered in eyes and a forked tail with snakes at the end. Whereas Disney's Blue Fairy ultimately turns Pinocchio from a wooden puppet into a real boy made of flesh and bone, in Del Toro's version, although Death does tell Pinocchio he can choose to change from an immortal being into a mortal one, he's still very much made of wood. The idea behind this was that, according to Del Toro, you don't have to change who you are to be loved, but at the same time, Pinocchio's newfound mortality also shows that death is crucial. It was exactly here where I said to my nephew, I was like, get out. I was like, get out of my room. Coachman takes disobedient boy to become. Yeah, I'm not letting him watch this shit. I'm sorry, dude. I don't give a shit. Detail to their new movie, which combines. I'm sorry, dude, but uh, call me a fucking weirdo, but you know, like, oh, he's actually gonna grow stronger from it. Nah, bro, I don't want that in his psyche. That's fucking retarded. If it bothers me, it's just gonna fuck up a kid. Did your brother agree to the Masonic shit? Yeah, he did. He was actually laughing at how much he agreed with. He's like, dude, they're not even... Because if we watched the original Pinocchio, he'd say I'm reaching. 
But for this one, he was like in tears laughing at how satanic it was. And he's a therapist. And he's like, yeah, they're not fucking around with this one. What was this? Biden, a child oh my God. Biden, a child molester. And he kidnaps children and does horrible things to them. Just like Hillary Clinton and Obama who made the virus. The virus is man-made. It doesn't exist. Kids need to be put back in school. The people who are pulling the strings is the Italian Vatican. They actually... Holy shit! Oh my god! The kid gets it before Alex Jones. Whoa! Whoa! I thought he was going to say the Jews, the this. This guy goes to the source of all the wealth in the world in the Vatican. We are reptilian bloodlines from another planet. Oh, my fucking retard kid. Oh. How do you do that, dude? How the fuck do you ruin it that fast? Planets, dude. I know that planet energies affect us, but he's saying there's like flying saucers, I think. Whatever. He's going to talk about dinosaurs soon. I'm going to fucking punch my keyboard. Who made the virus? The virus is man made. It doesn't exist. Kids need to be put back in school. The people who are pulling the strings is the Italian Vatican. They actually are reptilian bloodlines from another planet. They're basically robots. And the evil people that are there, such as the Rothschilds, who suck the blood of, out of children to get adrenochrome yeah. and stay young and beautiful forever. They that part's true. Pick them up and they take them to a submarine and go underground until they can get to Epstein Island, which is where they molest children. Underground? Okay. What? All right. Guess he's going for dumbs. Anyone know what dumbs is in chat? I think he's going for that, but on islands. I think he's fusing those two. Any dumbs in chat? Deep underground military bunkers? You remember that? It's kind of wholesome. I went to McDonald's today and I wanted to get a muffin and I found human teeth in my muffin. Uh oh, so, so what's, what's inside McDonald's food? Um, I think it's like grind of children. People do evil shit, that's it. And these Based. people have plenty of opportunity, they got more money than God. I think the military is gonna arrest the whole damn government. Some people say that there's gonna be- More money than God, watch your words, man. What the fuck is the matter with you? I don't even get how you're on our side if you're talking like that. What the fuck? A blackout, no television except for um, Donald J. Trump screening on live news. And what he's going to do is he's going to um, lock up all the other pedophiles and reptilian bloodlines and put them in jail. I guess I shouldn't be mad at him for that because I once said that Dunkel asked God if he can turn him straight and God said it's beyond my powers. I guess I made the same joke. Uh, he, he, the way he, uh, the way he said it was not like a joke. Andre Trump screening on live news, and what he's going to do is he's going to um, lock up all the other pedophiles and reptilian bloodlines and put them in jail. Where do you get your information from? The dark stream media, like I said, what you have to do is you have to search on the normal media for someone who knows how to get into the dark stream media. Dark stream media is so cool. And another pl good place to check. It's just Minecraft. The Trump media, which is actually telling all the truth. <laughs> just say bitch you. At this point, I had never actually gone on a Q board. So for the first time, I had Jaden's dad, Brandon, take me headfirst into QAnon.pub, which is the main Q board. You know, as stupid as QAnon can be, they still get more right than the average liberal. <laughs> you know, so it's just like... 
the average liberal really needs to understand what I'm saying here. Like you need to you you need to you need to let go of CNN, dude. <laughs> Now, you have to understand that he speaks in, in cryptic code. There's actually a Q clock that you have to decipher all this stuff from. So this this is an actual Q drop? Yep. Anderson Cooper. And you can see all the satanic uh, artwork in the background. Look at that. That's Christ burning. That's Anderson Cooper's mother. He comes from a bloodline billionaire, Vander, whatever the fuck, family. Um, Just like the Rothschild's mansion home, like it's always satanic imagery. Just like Podesta home. Which is just, just troubling. I mean, you have a man here getting burned alive while there's some sort of satanic ritual going around in the background. See, what number five news, what is this, what is this channel called? What number five news does that is so fucking snaky, it's such a snake tactic by the Andrew guy, is he will never show all of the other artwork in ruling class houses he'll only show one image and say they're making a, a leap of faith they're they're making a huge reach with one photo and it's like dude it's the pattern of photos it's the pattern of emails it's the pattern that we're noticing it's not one photo it's so fucking biased the way he does this and he would just look at me and say, oh, John, I, uh, I don't know the other photos you're talking about. Yes, you do. You know Balenciaga. You know Rothschild's photo. You know Sa uh, the Legion of Lucifer photo painting. You know the Podesta paintings. You know all of that. Don't fucking lie to us. I mean, you have a man here getting burned alive. While and, and they all have one thing in common. It's always high-level hundred millionaires or billionaires. That's the only thing those that artwork has in common is that it's owned by billionaires they're nothing else they have in common except that or the the one that sticks out the most it's like where there's smoke there's fire there's some sort of satanic ritual going around in the background i see that sacrifice is misspelled do you think that's also cryptic yeah absolutely Th these guys are smart anything that's misspelled anything that looks out of the ordinary there's something to it the purpose of the movement is to Wait, is what the fuck is up with this dude to question everything inside the pepper you have that upside down kind of triangle if you will yeah. this is the sign for a boy lover right here ah! see channel 5 will not show the fbi files and how many um child rape centers right go undercover as pizza shops or whatever he will not make the connection and i'm not I'm not attacking him for not making the connection. I'm saying he knows the connection and he's choosing to leave it out of his YouTube video just so he can be on the blue pill side and be safe from getting in trouble. If he didn't know the connection, then I would give him the benefit of the doubt. But everyone knows that connection. It's like... They are very very good kids we're very blessed and yeah. that's why i'm comfortable with making the decision to keep them out. like i'm gonna start doing street interviews like this except i'm not gonna be a fucking cuck bitch about it like andrew out of school even that means they don't have all the friends to be around and you know <laughs> i don't want my kids wearing a mask you guys miss going to school um very much it's um it's it's not the virus is man-made like my dad said so it's worthless not going to school but we're gonna have to wear the mask like for 24 7 if we have to go back and stuff like on imagine weekends. if coronavirus never exists would you like to go back to school um yeah i really want i was my only friend yeah it's retard school let's be honest you know if your kids are missing an education what are they really missing how, how, how to be a gay marxist like what are they learning there that are you kidding me all my life i made fun of homeschooled people until i met homeschooled people and then they're like big youtubers rich they got they're just better they're just better people they're better off and then you think of how many losers went to your high school and like they did nothing with their lives it's like what are they really missing bro friends my mom my mom is saying like because she wants to homeschool us but the only thing that's holding her back is our friends i don't have a lot of friends i just have like one or two you have a ten. i have zero <laughs> yes come on you, everyone has one friend. you I'm have your, us at least okay <laughs> yeah which friend do you miss this is exploiting children right here right to make the parents look bad Andrew wants to exploit these kids and say, oh, they don't have friends and they have a horrible life and blah, blah, blah. I could never film that part in good conscience. 
I could do it if it didn't have a political uh, theme. But I know me and my content, so I would edit this part out. I'd be like, do I really need to get my message across and kind of shame these kids and kind of like blow them up and stuff? And, you know, then in four years, these kids kind of like watch this and think, you know. What's the most? Um, probably like Caitlyn. Why? Because she's like the only one who gets me. It's sad that they don't have a lot of friends to play with, but I think in the long run, they'll be better adults mm -hmm. having a better education than being popular. Yeah, Andrew's painting a target on this family's back. And the family, it's so strange to me when families allow these channels to do this, right? Because, I mean, dude, imagine being doxxed as a QAnoner. And to me, this is a doxing. I would consider this a doxing, right? I consider even non-doxing a doxing, bro. Like, if you put children's faces in front of millions of viewers that hate QAnon, that's terrifying. The parents are so dumb for this. Uh you watch any of my IRL streams, if it's a family and children, you'll never see them in my clip. I don't care how funny my joke is about to be. I just walk out of the room. I never film them. Leave them alone. If it's a grown man walking with his mom, I won't do it. There's like certain rules I have. This guy is such a piece of shit. And I guarantee you he edited out all the, all the good stuff that makes them look kind of normal. Where do you get I you? guarantee you that's what they did. Uh, yeah, you thought the sacrifice message from Q. Yeah, there's Pinocchio, Flat Earth. What? Oh, your father! What's that big shining thing? Oh, Wait, what the hell is this? That is the sun, my son. It goes around the Earth once a day. Pinocchio! Pinocchio! You're back! Wait, is that Wilson guy? Is that Tom Hanks? Tokyo, you're back! So, when do I become a real, real live living boy? Because it sounds like that's what will make my father happy. No, I'm going to school so I can learn a bunch of stuff to be a real boy and make my father proud. Father! I'm sorry I didn't come home after I got kicked out of school! You got kicked out of school? For being a puppet! Are you my conscience? Huh? Me? No, I'm not a conscience. I'm a cricket. More of an insect than an instinct. So I joined the puppet show and became famous! You became famous? Well, almost famous. I'm gonna try tonight. Break a leg. Oh, really? No, not really. Oh. I danced in a puppet show and made lots of money! But then I got kidnapped and was locked in a birdcage, so I had to tell a bunch of cliffs to Jiminy so my nose would grow so I could escape its lets. You know, a lot of people don't know, but the English language is the most satanic language ever made. That most words are either linked to secularism or Satan. Even once you say good morning to someone, it's a good morning of a death, right? And that's deliberate. That's done to, to damage your psyche. It's done to keep you suppressed. Right? What the fuck am I mourning, bro? Nothing, bitch. And I, they do this all the time. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. How come you didn't bust any of them cuckoo clocks? Any real kid would love to smash those clocks. It just didn't feel right. Then I got scooped up by a coach full of foolish kids. I was taken to Pleasure Island, where I learned to drink. Uh, I forget what they called it. Help! Adrenochrome. Father! Father! No parents wants a pizza real like Why is S fan in this? You! But Jiminy helped me, and we jumped off a cliff into the sea and swam to shore. Where we found out you sold all your clocks to buy a boat so you can look for me! And now we're here! Well, I guess you ain't transformed into a complete jerk yet. <laughs> I don't want to be a jerk. I want to be a real boy. You did all that in one day? Yeah. My goodness, I haven't had a fraction of that in my whole life! You're a real person, and the only real person I can believe is my father. Huh, the way you're going, you might make it to half a real boy. These kids are drinking beer. Boy, it looks to me like you still got a conscience inside of you. I wish I still did have a conscience. I swam faster than any clipper ship could sail. <laughs> this is like, remind me of Anchorman Ron Burgundy scene. No real boy. 
could ever do such like, a thing. Bilk was a bad choice. Almost. Bullseye. Yeah, Grim. Hot dog. We did it. Yeah, hot dog. Watch that. Oh, Pinocchio. You honestly did try with all your heart, and that makes you a truthful boy. Uh, Lampy, you might want to check. What do I look like to you? A jackass. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are. It was you. Beast. I was wishing for. You will always be my real boy. Somebody dropped a barrel of salt in this water. You're in the sea, Pinocchio. Sea water is salty. I am so very proud of you. This guy's creepy as fuck. I can't believe I used to like him when I was young. Got out of so what you're saying is we need reparations from Hollywood. We need the Hollywood elite that have almost all the money. They need reparations. Oh, I don't care, bro. I don't care. All right. We don't have that much time left for this stream. Uh, let's go to the good shit. Okay. Apparently we have some red versus blue pills. And what pill are you? that people always bring up yo this is three days ago this is what you guys want let's okay okay believe women especially black women and i agree with that we believe women and black I mean, it doesn't women, seem right? like you agree with that that much <laughs> at least right now come on <laughs> like, no i do okay but here's the thing so if i'm believing meg the stallion she first told me i stepped on glass oh, i believe you you stepped on glass then she says, no, I didn't. <laughs> One of your mods <laughs> banned me from the chat. <laughs> no, did they? Yeah. <laughs> I know you hate this guy, but yo, could could you could, could we bring my man Myron in? He's he's been following this case with me the whole time. And he's been very in tune with all the, the uh um, Sure. If you yeah. wanna if you wanna bring him in, we can have that conversation with him as well. Wait, wait, how do I I don't know how to add people, brother? Hold on. Let me see. Uh okay. I did a group thingy. How do I get how does this work? So if you need backup, I thought we were having a normal conversation. No, because... No, well, well, so Hassan wins against Red Pill. i got to see this. We're going over facts and also narrative. Now you're you know bringing I mean? the Fed involved? God <laughs> damn, dude. Yeah. Us, yo, Hassan, I ain't going to lie. Yo. Is, he, is he not? Is he not, a, is he not a Fed? I thought he was, but... Hassan, you know you're virtually feeling crazy. Yo, I'm Bro, with you on. Oh, oh, come on. That's a, that's an exit ramp for you. They say oh. virtue signaling. It's just like, oh, you no, care. Wait, how's that virtue signaling? About uh, women uh, so uh, much. You're uh, virtue signaling. Uh, like, no, I'm just looking at the situation. Like, someone got uh, shot. Uh, academics uses buzzwords like fucking, like the left. It's like, what? Uh, they Congress. said. Someone this got shot. Crazy. They said, this person shot me. I'm like, okay, it seems like that could be true. This would be a crazy conversation, right? Um, hold on. No spoilers, What's going dude. On? I don't want to see this. Hello? Anyway, okay. Yo, here's the point I'm trying to say. You hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, okay. Here's the point I'm trying to say, brother. <sighs> No, it would be different if I was sitting here like Damn fucking it. punching in the air. Like, I'm not accepting the fucking verdict. I am. It's accepted. All I'm trying to say yeah, to but you. you keep, but you keep saying I'm, I'm also not. virtue signaling. I'm in the wrong, all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, You're throwing these things in the air to say, well, why didn't you know that he was guilty from the get-go? And I'm like. No, 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 no. I said, okay. I said when someone is. Hassan Piker has the best microphone in the game, dude. Like, compare it to academics, he's heating my cerebellum, dude. Whatever. Just, uh, you know the thing. The academics has the worst microphone. His contrast is killing me, but what did Hassan do to... I have the same microphone, but what did he do to his... I have a cloud lifter and a focus, right? I don't know what the fuck he did, but that's tuned up, man. That's tooled the fuck up. That look, Listen to this shot regardless of whether they're a man or a woman how do you do that okay and they survive the shooting and they turn around and say this person shot me 
I'm not immediately going to be like, ah, I don't know. I don't, I feel like he lowers academics audio on purpose. Act sounds good on his stream. Is that true? I didn't think it was low volume. I thought it was not scratchy, but like muffled. Uh, I don't like academics, Mike. Like they're lying. Like what the fuck? She got. I think I have a good mixer and all that. It's just, I don't use it. Like I didn't tune it. I didn't press it, but I just plug shit in. Like, I think I have to play with it a bit. Yeah, this, this, his sound is, Hassan has the best sounding microphone on all of Twitch, I think. I like trains too. Yeah, this. A bullet, she got bullet fragments in her feet. Hey, hold on. I, I didn't say she didn't get shot. I don't know by who. <laughs> okay, no I understand. But the person, but you're, you're not hearing oh. me. I'm saying she got hey, shot and she yes. said, this person shot me. Okay. okay, and then she said, I did not see him. My back was turned. No, she also said she did see him. She literally turned her neck around in her testimony enough to be able to see who was shooting at her. Okay, okay. All right. She also so, said the, the dance bitch line, too. Nobody, even her best friend, never even heard that line. Nobody. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Wait, someone, get, like, I haven't followed this one. I like Tori. I listen to Tori, but... I don't know anything about this one. Someone someone jump in Discord and explain this case real quick. Uh, like as fast as you can. Cause apparently he didn't do it, but he was there. Someone join, I'm gonna drag you up and I'm just gonna ask you some shit. Like someone smart, no trolls. The mic is actually designed to be like right here with it. I have to be right here. Hey guys. Yes, nobody joins the fucking Discord, bro. Look at this fucking retard chat. Someone join and help me with this case. This convo is the aftermath of Tory being found guilty on all three counts. For shooting Meg this time. So what happened to her? Did she get hit by bullets? Did she die? I haven't followed any of this. I've been busy packing. She got hit on the leg. They found gunpowder on his hand. But they didn't find fingerprints on the gun. Right? Okay, I don't need it. Okay. Because her best friend also, literally, the more important part of this conversation is her best friend also, originally in the actual testimony, the 9 calls, in every single circumstance, said that it was Tory Lanez who shot Megan the Stallion. Tory Lanez also apologized to every single person involved. Now, he's Canadian, so maybe that's the reason why he apologized. Canadians love apologizing. But ultimately, it does that's seem a little suspicious when everyone is saying that everyone involved originally... In the immediate aftermath is saying this person shot this person okay so, all right okay so, so as it relates to that let me ask you this question so right? why do you think kelsey said tory lane shot megan the stallion and then pled the fifth this time around uh a year later well, I, okay so why do you think that when listen she said that when she wasn't under oath why do you think when she was under oath she said i never saw tory shoot anyone or saw tory with the gun you're, you're using when she's not under oath. I'm using when she could actually be charged with perjury. So who got the upper hand here? Wait. So you think, so you're saying she lied to the, you're suspecting that she lied originally to the prosecutors, well, not the prosecutors, but the, but the investigators. Well, it was actually the prosecutors because they only did that. That interview that we're talking about, it was done in September. Directly okay. to the problem. So it, do, you can't, you can't do that though. That's still you still can't lie to the you still can't lie to the prosecutors in that regard. Hey, you guys made me feel uncomfortable. Like that's still illegal. She was hinting towards, hey, I was under duress. Okay, but she also said Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion. So you're like you're you're desperately grabbing on to her hinting at things while simultaneously completely writing off all the shit that she did say. So so you're telling me that you are going to take the the um interview over the phone right way more serious than her testimony under oath in person in court 
Also, she never said she doesn't know. I'm pretty sure she said that she's pleading the fifth and that she didn't want to answer. No, no. She played the fifth anytime it was it was a conversation about how did you guys was there a fight before um, the shots were fired? And she's this, this guy in chat says basically the debate is Ak and Myron say he's innocent and Hassan thinks he did do it. Yeah, no shit. Oh my god, people like you drive me not like no shit, bitch. What the fuck did you tell us? Said what I believe the driver's gonna say. Hey. I never saw Tory with a gun. This is what she said. Definitely, hundred percent. I never saw Tory with a gun, and I never seen him fire the shot. Wait. And then at first she said I was unsure that he was shot, but later I realized she was shot. Okay, this is precisely the reason why I asked you what your speculation is, because like I need to understand like what you thought happened, because I gave you what I think happened, right? Like there was a scuffle, there was an altercation, right? And then like Tory Lanez popped off, has a short fuse didn't actually intend to fucking shoot Megan Thee Stallion, accidentally did, you know, little guy, big gun, for him at least, you know, hard to fucking control, and he's drunk. So, so then, so then, what is your, what is your take? Like, do you think there's a third shooter? Are we talking like JFK, Grassy Knoll situation? Like, what the fuck happened then? Was it Kelsey who shot Megan Thee Stallion then? Is that what you oh, think? Oh, hey, this is why I went into the whole thing by saying, are we here to find out, I said, we won't find out who actually did it? Right, we're only going to find Okay, out but come on, you, you are, you are making okay, a lot of right. differences, like, don't escape that. I'll tell you my narrative. My narrative is this. <clears throat> okay. They're at this party with Kylie. At the party, I believe that, you know, um, Meg, who was messing around with Tori behind her best friend's back, because the first person, and by the way, it does matter. I'm not trying to. <laughs> Remember Academics overdosed on Red Pill on Fresh Fit Podcast? Where he thought Red Pill means just call bitches whores, uh, call women bitches and whores at the top of your lungs for like an hour straight and get drunk. Like he started off so good, and then he just started freaking the fuck out. I was watching it. I was like, "Wait, dude, you already did this part." Like, what? Big act. Slush shamer, but it doesn't matter who was having sex with who. Corey was having sex earlier in the year with Kelsey. She catches COVID. She Have you noticed that Devil's contracts are always involved with sex? Look at Twitch. Look at everyone who lost their channel. Look at everyone who got canceled. It's always something sexual. It's always linked to lust, right? The devil and lust is like, it's like hot dogs and Coca-Cola. Every problem is around sex. She goes back home. He starts messing around with um, um, Meg. Kelsey comes back into the picture, and at one of the most and first public events they're at together, they're at Kylie's house, okay? They were drinking before Tori gets there. Tori gets there. He's trying to game up Kylie. Meg feels a little bit type of way because number one, that's disrespectful. I invited you somewhere, and we're, now we are. By the way, we're still not at the at the events that took place. Okay, but you're oh. you're building backstory. Fine, you're saying it's not like victim blaming or slut shaming. It's just Wait, it's important. You have, to, you have to build it because if you think that somebody, if I diss you as a streamer, would you shoot me, brother? If I say you're the worst streamer on the platform, would you shoot me? No, of course not. But I'm not Tory Lanez. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my! So Tory is just like this degenerate guy who's not. I mean, like, I, I I think I think that I, yeah, I think that he. Uh, I think that he is not necessarily degenerate. I can never tell if it's a son's opinion because it always lines up with believe all women. So I never know when he's telling the truth, right? Like I want to be on his side if he was there and blah, blah, blah. And it makes sense. But I can never tell when his son, you know, because it's always the woman is you know, in that corner of the internet. The woman is always, it took him a while to come after Amber Heard. I think it was the first one, like day one, the bitch is lying. <laughs> was the first one to you remember that that was this year right but he definitely does have a like i said short fuse very insecure short fuse drunk has a gun around that's what happens this short happens fuse, all the fucking time to less woman. famous people and okay, it's not no, hold on. short fuse and shooting a woman is like come on bro we, are we gonna act like there's no levels of separation dog? Come i mean on. i know but like then then we we come to the other side of the altercation where you are easily believed okay here's my without here, here's my argument okay I listen a lot of Tory, but Tory raps and does a bunch. He raps about it and he does a bunch of coke and he does stuff Yo, like. Order shit's not gonna end, my nigga. Order shit's not gonna end. Apologize, bro. Apologize, bro. Oh, you know, oh, you know what's going on. Apologize, my nigga. Oh, apologize, nigga. I got you, bro. Apologize, nigga. You, bro. Say sorry, nigga. Bad, Say sorry, sorry nigga. Sorry, All right, bet. I got you. Dude. Order shit's not gonna end, my nigga. Order shit's not gonna end. Apologize, bro. Apologize, bro. Oh, you know, oh, you know what's going on. I apologize. My like that is what cocaine is after a bunch of nights of no sleep and keep doing it. That's where you end up.
I've seen softies become aggressive on Coke. Coke is, a lot of people think Coke is like drinking Coke. Dude, Coke is go to war. Coke is insanely powerful on the brain. It's not, alcohol is bad, but Coke makes humans so aggressive, dude. Like it's, yeah. And it's not always the Coke. It's the edginess coming down from Coke after never sleeping. That's when all the problems start. But some people just do a line and then they have problems. And some people, like, they party for a long time and then they get into it. But I could believe Tory can't control himself easily. I could believe that. Any evidence whatsoever? Not a single person has said that this is the case. Okay? What? You believe what? that Kelsey has a short enough fuse to fucking shoot Megan Thee Stallion, but Tory Lanez doesn't. So that's why I'm, like, a little confused about where you are trying to go with this conversation. Oh, Unless there was a third shooter with a sniper no. rifle, okay? No, let me get, You're, it's let either me get Kelsey that. who shot Megan or Tory no. who shot Megan. No, let me get there, then. You see, in, in your story, hey, you suck at music. I had the worst cokehead friends in the city. I had cokehead buddies that were like, yo, bro, I'm, guys, we're done partying. I'm driving home. I'm driving everyone home. They drive someone home, right? Zerka, come here. Do a bump before bed. I'm like, what? So we're doing a bump before bed. Come here. Right? It's on us, bro. It's the Fitch scale. This is the good stuff. And then he go lay down and go to sleep. Well, how the fuck did he do that? What the fuck? That's what Vancouverites are. Like they'll do a bump before for dreaming, I guess. I'm like, I'm I'm not if I do a bump, I'm staying up. What the fuck? Like, how are you doing that? But you know, my buddies were so such heavy users it was like i don't even know how you do that right but i guess you don't sleep for a long enough time you can like, boom, boom 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 i say complete cap i'm getting to it i'm gonna speak of the story so there's a bunch of jealousy going on the women are arguing but they're also arguing with tori which all you, you know what hurts more than anything when you're doing coke and your best friend dies right or someone close to you a friend a friend of yours dies and you're high when it happens, dude, dude, that is like, you know how you feel like the emotions when you're high on drugs? It is like insane. Is it like here they do a lot of funerals where all the young guys do a bunch of coke to cope with the death. And then they all just sit in a garage and start crying together. Like I've been to so many of those parties and it's gnarly like. My city is so fucking coke hit. It's un. I remember Joe Rogan saying Vancouver's the greatest, biggest coke town he's ever been to. And Joe Rogan said that. That fucking. Oh my God, he slapped him. He slapped him. Yeah, he's a the fucking coke hit thumb. And yeah, I never even realized how much blow people do until I went to LA and saw how little they do. And I was like, isn't this the coke town? And yeah, what is up with this part of Canada? This part of Canada is fucked up, dude. Also is in line with what pretty much um, Meg even said on um, um, that Gail King interview. Vancouver got the highest drug overdose death rates in North America. I seriously doubt it. What? Prove that. Us? We're number one in all of NA? That No way that's true. I know we got a fentanyl problem and all that, but... Actually, recently, just a few weeks ago, I lost a buddy to fentanyl. Not a close friend, but another one. It's fucking unreal. That was two weeks ago. That was like weird, weird news. I was like, damn, this city's fucked up. I'm actually glad I'm leaving this depressing ass shit. All three of them are arguing. Um, Kylie kicks them out. You have all three women argue, or you have two women and, and, and Tori arguing, okay? Uh -huh. And then I got to use Sean Kelly's testimony. Uh -huh. The car pulls over and Meg hops out and starts to assault Kelsey. Sean Kelly said it. She was kicking her for several Sean Kelly, who was sleeping at this point, right? Okay. Uh, listen, are we gonna we just gonna throw out his testimony because he doesn't agree? I mean, or has... uh, uh, no, but I would I would be a little, you know, I would be a little uh, questioning it a little bit, right? Like a little bit of skepticism is necessary here because like why the fuck was he up watching uh the street randomly in the middle of the fucking night oh, versus even, he woke up the even, gunshots? That's a, so such a massive inconsistency and and you know, Even common sense that, probably favors one side that he did wake up to gunshots, which was her, which was his original oh, testimony. To, to like pigeonhole it on him. Okay, where's Byron, bro? Lanes. 
says she saw Tori on the front seat firing the gun forward over the open right front door in Megan's direction. Um, Kelsey was outside the vehicle but behind Tori and could only see Meg from the chest up. She ran towards Megan in defense mode and saw her bleeding. This is her testimony. And Tori was still sitting in the front seat, apparently in shock. She claims Tori walked toward them, and that's when Kelsey and Tori started fighting. This is her, this is Kelsey's testimony. She describes it as Tori assaulting her and adds that she did not see the gun at that point. Once they all got back in the SUV, Kelsey says she texted Megan Security, 911, Tori shot. You know, a lot of these stories that these, the girls of rappers or whatever, I guess she's a rapper. A lot of these stories would be so much more believable if the women started out like this. Hi, so I was abusing this man for months and months at a time, and then he took it to a next level abuse. Everyone would believe her. But when women come out and say, yeah, I'm just innocent, and he just like, it just popped off. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, if women came out like that, the, no one's really going to attack you for that. You know, like if women said, yeah, you know, I, I'm abusive too, but he's way worse that's a you could take that w you could win like that but it's always the i'm innocent shit that bothers me meg that's an interview that's not a testimony that's I'm, an interview yeah but but like that is literally <laughs> that is profoundly <laughs> important that, that's her account that literally played a significant role in launching a criminal investigation but no, uh, again, again are we arguing this? what we think happened or we're arguing what should be proven in court if someone says i lied like okay you can play the statement all you want but i lied I'm telling you the truth now. Is that person credible? Yes or no? Wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Okay, you're going off what Kelsey said in September, but she mm -hmm. literally showed up and said, I lied. That guy's wrong. California has 9,000 overdose deaths. Vancouver only has 2,000 in 2020, so it's not even close. Shiffin, are you fucking retarded? Look at the population difference of California and Vancouver. We're clearly a lot higher. If, that's, if what you're saying is true, you're a fucking retard. You know how little people are up here? That makes it look so much fucking worse for us. I lied. She's saying, I lied then, and I'm under oath now, and I lied. So I told you, I'm, I, I'm telling you I lied then. What's up? Are you going to say, okay, we're going to just ignore the fact you're telling us you're lying? I don't think, she never said she lied, by the way. I mean, she, she did lie. She said she said she lied on her testimony. She said she lied. Where did where did she say she lied on her testimony? She just said she can't remember, which is inconsistent for sure, because it was very clear when she was offering uh, evidence to, uh, to launch this criminal investigation. But, um, I, I don't think she ever said I lied. Um, she just said, I can't recall. Yo, Ak, Myron's here. We just joined in. Um, are you guys talking about Meg the sign right now? Or are you guys talking about Kelsey in particular? Um, we just joined. We're, we're talking about Kelsey's, um, statement. He's okay. using the one from September. I'm using the fact that she got on the stand and said, fuck that. I did not tell the truth. Wait, I she never, wait, 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 no, 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 no. You can't, you can't embellish in this circumstance. Cause this is pretty important. She okay. never got on the stand and said, I fucking lied. That's crazy. Yes, she did. She got on. This, these are the facts. These are the facts. This okay, no, 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 no. Before you say these are the facts, I want to. I want. Oh, my God. I just realized Vancouver has its own skid row. And we're tiny compared to any city in Cali. Oh, my God. We are the fucking worst for overdose. How did I not remember that cities don't have skid rows? It's just us. Yo, Poggers, you're from Van, right? Poggers, are we number one for overdoses? Yeah, I forgot about Hastings. I worked on Hastings. Jeez. We are number one? Oh, that is depressing news today. Do we actually have 2,000 overdoses in this city? Kelly only has nine compared to us. And they're like, how many men, how many people are there? Jeez, dude. It's time to leave this shit. I want you to actually show me the facts. And not Milagro Grams, who has been proven time and time again that she was, you know, uh, Okay. Mo, Mo Gagnat, who was there in person, who watched it, who is a lawyer himself. He literally said she took the stand. First thing she did was take the Fifth Amendment. You cannot take the Fifth Amendment unless. Well, what's the timestamp on me? Hi, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We got Where does he join in? Like what? Which is why, like, which is, which is like shooting. Which is why she's supposed to be an investigator. And to me, that's bullcrap, bro. Um, so, you know, make it. Uh, first thing she did 
was take the Fifth Amendment. You yeah. cannot take the Fifth Amendment unless you might be criminally culpable for a crime. Then they said, listen, we'll give you immunity if you testify. Keep in mind Wait, that she no, you can you can still t you can plead the fifth regardless. Like no, you, you can just refuse to testify. Hassan, I, I hate to say this to you, bro, but I used to investigate criminal activity. I used to be a former federal no, agent. I, I, I know, know this I know you're a fit. I know so I, I've seen I, I I've used seen to be talking so about I'm it. telling you, you cannot take the fifth amendment. OK, <laughs> unless you're criminally culpable. That is why Gunn is not protected if they call him to testify. He has Wait, to testify. What? No, you can definitely say I plead the fifth. It doesn't matter if you're like criminally culpable or not. You can still <laughs> refuse to testify. No, we no you cannot because you are compelled to testify. Right. If you don't have a fifth, a fifth Amendment privilege. No, it's literally it's a right. You can just say that you are pleading the fifth, regardless of whether it's because you're incriminating yourself or not. You can only take the fifth. If you might incriminate yourself, you cannot take the fifth any, in any other circumstance. You are compelled to testify. No, you can still. No, you, you definitely still can <laughs> in any circumstance plead the fifth. It doesn't matter what the truth is. What? So I, so I hate to say this, really bro, but that, that, I thought you were no, smarter you than this. The fifth, even if you're not, even if you're not, even if you, that doesn't at immediately mean that you are self-incriminating. If that was the case, then that could be used as. Wouldn't Hassan be right here? Couldn't anyone plead the fifth? additional evidence like you guys are trying to do right now but that's not the case but she's not the one on trial. Like in 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 colloquial in like the the you know in in normie speak we always assume when you plead the fifth oh that means they're guilty like they're incriminating themselves that's what we say but that's not the case you can plead the fifth even if you are not actually incriminating yourself that's kind of the point of being able to plead the fifth okay then you know what let's and, and use your logic it be used against you as evidence let's use your let's use your logic then hassan if that was the case why did her lawyer fight tooth and nail to get her immunity Ooh. Here we go. Exactly. I, I, I don't know. Oh. Exactly. 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 Oh, just take the hell. Right? Just take the hell. This is the 14th Sheesh. of December. Like, so this is Tory Lanez and Megan trial day three. Kelsey takes a stand. She admits to lying to prosecutors. About you know, when my conspiracy brain starts to fucking explode is when I think about how Andrew Tate came from this show with an FBI agent and his dad worked for the CIA, you know, and it's the red pill kind of MAGA. I guess pro cop movement. You know what I mean? I, I'm not that guy who thinks like they're all feds and stuff. I'm not that extreme. But it is strange. About everything she told him in September. No, you're reading No Jumper right now, who literally, by your account, got fucking got DJ academics. They got fucking got, they jumped oh, the gun and literally posted about. The, 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 the verdict coming in before the verdict had actually come in, you can't just use their one-sided assessment of the events that took place. You originally went to Megan Kunif. I'm watching your stream right now. You couldn't find the actual thing that you wanted out of her, so you went to find the No Jumper tweet. If you give me Megan Kunif's test, of, uh, Megan Kunif's, uh, uh, you know, actual court reporting, then we can have a conversation. I got it. It's like it's like you citing yourself. Come on. Hassan, you're missing the point here that Kelsey, right, changed her story. She went in and did an interview with, with actually the prosecutors, not even law enforcement, which is another big red flag. But she went ahead and did an interview in September. Wait, what, say that. What, what's the red flag? The I, red I flag you, is sorry. she did an interview with the prosecutors with no law enforcement there, which is a huge red flag because prosecutors are not supposed to be direct witnesses and witness testimony when you're doing a criminal investigation. There's supposed to be an investigator there. And the reason why there wasn't an investigator there is because the lead detective, Stogner, right, he has some Wait, issues. No, with you, can, you can lead. definitely have prosecutors directly uh, question uh, witnesses. No, Wait, what, what? You need an investigator there. They can't be the only witnesses because they're the ones prosecuting the case. It's a conflict of interest. You need a sworn law enforcement officer there conducting and a leading the interview. Prosecutors can be present. Why would you debate with a cop? Like, wouldn't he know a little better? It's kind of like, I, I would be quiet even if I was in the wrong. I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Maybe this guy knows. You know, I don't know. He's just, that sounds so confident. There's are literally law enforcement officers pretty much functionally. So I, I don't know, like you're making it seem like they're operating on different teams here. Yes, they do work I mean, together. I, I, However, you need an agent, a detective, some type of police presence there to do the investigation and to do the interviews, bro. And that's a big red wait, flag. I, I gotta, can I just address something really quickly? I love chat being like, no black voices. Hassan didn't want a black voice in that circumstance, bro. No jumper. Adam 22's operation. We're calling that a, a, a black voices now. Really? Halo boom. Is that what you're saying in the chat? Dumbass. Shut the fuck up. Well, any anyway, rapper. The point I'm trying to make is there's problems with Kelsey's meme rapper, situation. Okay, sorry. Go there's, on. There's problems with Kelsey's situation because number one, she was interviewed by prosecutors only. There wasn't an investigator <laughs> there, which is a problem in itself. And then second, she switched her story up. She said, "Hey, Tori did X, Y, Z, and you know made him criminally culpable." And then when she came in to testify, she immediately took the fifth. And then her defense attorney said, "We need immunity." They tried to get um, 
tra- uh, they tried to get immunity where she would be covered all the way, but they were only able to get use immunity because obviously to get transactional immunity, which would be her protected all the way, that is very difficult to get. You would need a DA signature to get that. And obviously they're in the middle of the trial. They don't have time to go back to the DA saying, yo, we need the signature. So we're like, listen, we'll give her use immunity. We're on the record. We're not going to prosecute her. That's when she felt comfortable to go ahead and testify after that pretty much. So if she wasn't culpable, why would she fight so hard? Why would her defense attorney fight so hard to get her use immunity, bro? And you can only take the fifth, right? You can ask any attorney this. Any defense attorney will tell you this. You can only take the fifth when you might be giving testimony might, that might incriminate yourself. But if, you, if you're not necessarily giving testimony that's going to incriminate yourself and other people, then you're compelled to testify. That is why Gunna cannot assert the Fifth Amendment privilege if they call him to testify in the YSL trial. If Young Thug goes uh-huh. to trial, they're going to call Gunna on and he cannot claim Fifth Amendment. He will, he will have to testify. That is a part of his plea deal. Okay. <laughs> Why would you plead the fifth for no reason? So I can't speak on why she wanted to, uh, why <laughs> she no longer wanted to offer her testimony. Okay. Um, she did get granted immunity. I'm pretty sure not the, not the full blown immunity. If she was like to go up on that stand and be like, I actually fucking, uh, I actually shot someone. I, I was the one who shot. Uh, well, if you did know, say that, and then protected. all of a sudden your case falls apart. Of course, the prosecutor is not going to fucking do that because someone could very easily fall out of favor with the victim like Kelsey and Megan did and then turn around and be like, but don't rappers want to go to jail, right? Not like to sell more records and stuff, but like because it's gay. You know what? Actually, I'm the one who shot it. But guess what? You guys gave me the fucking immunity. You know what I mean? Like that's, well, she that's could have went on the stand and said that, though, because they gave her use immunity, which means her testimony that was given in that circumstance could not be used against her. However, that does not mean that law enforcement yeah, can go interview she's still, other witnesses and other inconsistencies. She could have very easily said, I am here to tell my truth. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And, and I was wrong originally. She didn't even say that. Yeah, because she because she knew before she was lying. She, she got on the no, stand, but, bro, and said, I lied. Immu- but you just explained that she got immunity from the original lie that she had told. If you're claiming that she originally lied. Yes, she originally lied. And she didn't want to give testimony because so there's a you're, good you're chance. admitting that she would not have been liable under perjury in that regard because she had gotten immunity to offer her true testimony in that circumstance. No, um, what I'm saying is that she could have been. Fi- there's a bunch of things that they. You're all worried about some degenerate, solo, famous people. Bro, if it was up to me, I'd just put every rapper in prison. Right, and I, all I listen to is rap, but I put them all in prison, every single one of them. So you degenerated the youth. Could have hit her with. There's a bunch of charges she could have got hit with. Like what? Which is why, like, which is which is like shooting. Which shooting, is why shooting, she took the fifth amendment. You don't trust no jumper. I got my man. I think I think he writes uh, L.A. Times. James Queely. This is this is uh, Kelsey on the stand. Our interview that they were trying to refresh your memory many times with, she says our interview was not a hundred percent truthful. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Does that make you feel good, brother? <laughs> you literally said it. I'm not you. you said whatever yeah. you're saying, I did not tell the truth. She basically said it and referred to it and kept almost looking at her lawyer. To- John cries himself every night because he doesn't have a girlfriend to be his snuggle bunny lol. Shiffin, I have your whore mother to snuggle with. I just don't want to. All right. I fuck her. I fuck your whore mother. I don't like to snuggle. Say, hey, if I answer this, am I getting fucked up legally? And they did many sidebars. That's just the reality of it. Yeah, her her interview, her interview not being 100% truthful, especially when there's additional circumstances involved in there. I copied another dude's message, Jackass. So did I. <laughs> They're like, whether or not, I actually, I'm not familiar if she got uh, asked the question about the million dollars that like uh, she did get asked that off them or something it. like that. She did. She did um, get asked. But she there are plenty it. of there are plenty of additional instances in that interview. You you are the one who's inferring the parts that you believe is not truthful from that interview, and she still absolutely ended up getting. Hold just read the rest of that. What is the what's the rest of the quote? We not trusting no jumper. We definitely trust the L.A. Times. Yeah, of course I trust the L.A. Times, and I trust court reporters. So you yourself admitted that no jumper got got. So if no jumper got got, and fucking literally. Okay, forget okay. no jumper. Harris says she struggled with postpartum depression, depression and a recent death in the family, and her mind isn't here right now. She also denied Lanes offered her hush money, which Megan alleged he did to the tune of a million dollars. So she yeah, the it. exact quote from her, by the way, wasn't an immediate denial. She literally said it wasn't exactly the way that that was presented. I know, I know what I'm talking about because I know what quote that was. The reason why we're bringing this up, by the way, is because she has postpartum depression now. She has a recent death in the family now. If anything, her evidence or her additional information that she's going to offer currently now and not back then but is who, going to be less conclusive. Wait, wait, what about this one? Critically. She wouldn't confirm she saw Lanes with the gun, which she said in the recorded interview, or that Lanes threatened to shoot her. 
She won't confirm it in court. She's like, she wouldn't ask her. Yeah, that doesn't. Wait, wait. What? That's huge. What the fuck? What do you mean? It doesn't her, mean anything. She already has. She's, oh, you keep you keep referencing. Yes, interview, she right? literally said in interview, yes because she, in interview, you know you and I both know you and I both know she went on the stand and said I can't recall anything. I can't recall anything. I have postpartum. I'm depressed. I can't recall anything. Is basically what she said. And then she's like, oh my god, she said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't mean that doesn't mean that she fucking absolutely lied that's the reason why they played the whole interview in a court of law if a if, if, if any type of witness or victim can't recall their statements and can't even affirm to it right keep in mind she's now under oath she already acted weird with the hey i needed like immunity of this answer she can't co-sign the majority of what she said in a goddamn interview right you think that the jury should be like okay let's just believe her really hmm. come on brother well, first of all, the jury did believe her, ultimately. The jury believed Megan The Stallion, who also is a witness that. in the circumstance. The jury also believed what she said originally, which is important, important to address in this circumstance. And okay, Honestly, how do you not recall a gunshot? <laughs> Wait, what is going on? Yeah, you can find the most depressed person on earth. If you get to squeeze in and eat next to them, they're going to remember the... I don't get it, dude. The jury, of course, did not take into consideration that she pled the fifth, especially because she had the opportunity, given an immunity, to go back and correct the record and refuse to do so while simultaneously admitting that currently, right now, in this very moment, was not likely to give a clear-cut version of the events considering her postpartum depression and a, near, uh, and a recent death in the family. That's what I'm stating. That's the reason why the jury deliberated in the way that it did. Oh, hold on. Yeah, but you're missing yeah. a point here, Hassan. See, here's the thing. Tory gets that Fifth Amendment privilege to not testify and not being used against him. Kelsey does not. Kelsey's a witness in the case. She's not the one on trial. So if okay, Tory yeah, asserts, know, but you can still, please, you can still say finish. some dumb please, shit or potentially please, please think that you're yourself, or finish. ultimately say please let me finish. you have the right to plead the please Fifth regardless. Let me finish. You have the right to plead the Fifth regardless okay. of whether or not you're actually incriminating yourself or not. You <laughs> have that right. That is the right that you have. You're just rambling, bro. Bro, I'm telling you. Tory gets the privilege of them not being able to judge him for taking the fifth. Kelsey does not because the Tory, Tory is the one that is accused. Okay? I'm that a rock star. I'm a go to so When Ke Kelsey doesn't get that same Fifth yo, Amendment privilege yo. at that level as Tory because he's the one that's actually being charged in a criminal case, in a criminal court of law. Smoking on packs, preferably black, leprechaun. All of these hoes, they on my arm. All of these bitches, they know I'm with the dawn. Spawning on bitches, come back to the sixes. I spit threes like I'm playing hey. with the sixes. Bad bitch like she playing with the mixes. Bad bitch keep playing with my dick. Bad bitch wanna get on my Insta. Maybe he's innocent. Keep trying to keep quiet. Right. I got bad bitches trying to get by. Don't chill for a nigga get by. Hey. I got bad bitches and they come wildin'. Hey, I see a motherfucker smiling. Twenty thousand damn bitches on the island. Twenty thousand damn bitches going private. Mm, she make it clap. I got the strap. Twenty one gas. Feel like I'm savage. Twenty one bitches and none of them average. I'm gonna fuck me tonight. Me a bad bitch. I don't give a fuck about niggas. I don't give a fuck hey. about hoes. I don't give a fuck about your bros. I don't give a fuck about your toes. Your hoes. Your man is Jewish. Your pedicure toes. I'm coming on the block with the rocks. Twenty inch blocks in my socks. Niggas keep going that crazy ass shit. If I go to jail, I'ma keep a lock in the sock. I got that from Ken. All of my hoes they spend on me. All at the mall, I'm bending Benzes. Twenty inch rims on Enzes. Bitches is coming to the mall and they going in frenzies. Looking at toy, look at my story. All of these bitches, they look at me growing up fast like a nigga was 40. I don't even know what I'm saying, but tonight I'm about to take y'all bitches and have me a orgy. <laughs> Damn, Mr. Hook. Free Tory, wow. A rapper always wins me over if they can do it live. You know, if they've got bars live, I always love them. You know? And then if they cringe me out, then I never listen again. In the United States. So Kelsey doesn't get that, which is why she was like, I need immunity if I'm going to talk. Because she is compelled okay. to testify. That is why she asked for immunity Look. in the first place. Look. Go ahead. You, you said that you have to be guilty to plead the fifth that is not the you case. don't have to be guilty for the record you have to be yeah, you, or, potentially or liable you, right from a criminal standpoint to invoke the fifth amendment Any yes, statement, wait when the hell did anyone say you have to be guilty to and that you may, give, can yourself. may validly claim the fifth amendment privilege against self-incrimination if you are an innocent witness you can still plead the fifth that is precisely the reason why we look at pleading the fifth 
as a right that people have and not as an indication that that person is somehow criminally liable, which is what you guys are doing right now. Okay. You can only that, take the, the fifth entire, if the entire if you concept behind yourself. pleading the fifth would be null and void if we automatically assume that that person is fucking guilty every time they pled the fifth. No, no, no. pleading the fifth the, is no. an implication of guilt. However, if if the, you are you are making it seem zero, as though it is. No no, 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 no. Well, I mean, one could take it as that, but if you have zero conflict with what's being asked of you when you're either subpoenaed and you're on the stand, you got to answer. You can't just magically say I plead the fifth and then say the judge says to you or you and your attorney, "Hey, okay, let's figure out why you're pleading the fifth. And you're like, "No, just because I want to." They're not going to be like, "Okay, you, you got it." Like, Here, right. I'll, I'll tell you the Supreme. For most cases, you want to plead the fifth because you're everything he says is going to be used against you anyway court decision that that the justice is made on this regard because like people do plead the fifth sometimes when they're innocent or they might be afraid okay uh one reason or the other it's normal the criminal justice system is fucking ruthless right it is ruthless actually the greatest advice i got for this is in life if you're stupid you will go to jail you know it doesn't matter how good your lawyers are it matters how smart you are because the most important part of the whole your whole trial is your prep right how they how your lawyers prepare you that's the most important part so it's like if you're a fucking retard like amber heard you can have the best lawyers in the world and shit but a retard is gonna fumble right um in the 2001 supreme court case the justice noted that the right Hold against up. she had the worst lawyer or was that gray-haired lady remember her she had the worst lawyer ever Self-incrimination provided by the Fifth Amendment in Ohio versus Reiner, the court case that I was telling you about earlier. I know Destiny will be my lawyer, right? Because ain't no lawyer work harder than a dude that you have blackmail against. <laughs> Look, Steve, I like the volunteer work. <laughs> Pay him zero. Get to work and do some research. Convince me I'm not guilty. Okay. That the Fifth Amendment protects the innocent as well as the guilty. The court added that a witness may have a reasonable fear of prosecution and yet be innocent of any wrongdoing. The ruling noted that innocent people might be ensnared by ambiguous circumstances. Mm. So her right to plead the fifth in this circumstance was given to her and was protected by the Supreme Court specifically for situations exactly like the one that she was entangled in where okay, so she could have very, very easily very been definition. fearful she could yep. very easily been fearful that she oh, might prosecution. be because so, so, fearful of prosecution now granted but she not committed granted. crimes that's because oh, okay. she committed crimes <laughs> she committed crimes no 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 but you're but you're still doing that but, you're, but remember you're still doing that you're still claiming that she is she is guilty because she bled the fifth if if you're if you're if you're saying she's but you are, no, i'm i'm claiming she's she's i'm not saying she's guilty yet I don't know the whole thing, but I'm saying it is shady when someone says, I don't recall because I'm going through shit. That's kind of like, so is this the first time in your life you don't recall or is it? Or a fed. So I, I'm not surprised that you think that, but anyway, let's go on. Let's Wait, move on. You're saying Bro, she's you fearful of prosecution, right? <laughs> you're literally alluding to the fact that maybe some. How do you do crimes without getting caught? Well, crimes like this, I don't know about, but most... If you're breaking the law, you're a drug dealer and stuff like that, you have no idea how much being sober when you're breaking the law and being in a suit and tie will help you, right? When I was a drug dealer and I needed to get around town, being clean shaven in a suit and tie was like, I remember at checkpoints, police checkpoints, where they just check if you're sober and stuff. I would rush the cops. I'd be like, hurry the fuck up. And they just let me go. I don't be riding so dirty with shit in the fucking car. And, right? But as soon as you got hand tattoos and you look like a fucking menace, then it's like, yeah. And being sober. You know, you look at the greatest drug dealers in your city. They don't actually do the drug. Like the biggest Coke dealers in my city do not do Coke. They'll drink, they'll do something. But usually they're not doing <laughs> uh, something that she did or could say would be in some realm of maybe being able to um, either the, the, the DA could pick up a charge on. Right. We're not saying she's guilty. Yeah, it doesn't even matter, though. It doesn't matter because what matters is what she felt in that moment. If she feels like she could be ensnared for any reason whatsoever, she has the constitutional right to be able to plead the fifth in that regard. That's it. And that's what she did. She exercised it. Hassan, do you not see that she was the prosecution's star witness and that is problematic? 
<laughs> and, opening, and opening statements. I mean, and opening statements. I, I do feel, they literally I do feel like the star witness was probably the person who survived getting shot, but you know, she was a witness. Yes, she was one of the big witnesses. Yeah, in but that here's the thing. That's Meg. Meg is obviously the victim, so that's going to be a witness in itself. But I'm talking about the prosecution star witness from a how do I say this? From an unbiased standpoint, according to them, was Kelsey, and they talked and, about it in their opening statement. Been the Kelsey's going to come in to and leave everything together. <laughs> yeah, when you get shot, you are a little biased. That's true, but you know you would probably be biased against the person who shot you. In this case, if you claim that it is Kelsey, then she should probably be biased towards her, right? What? No, what I'm saying is that the prosecution in opening statements used Kelsey and said, Kelsey's going to come in here and weave together all our evidence. They were relying heavily upon what? A jail call, a text message, okay? And then also Kelsey's testimony. That's what they were weighing heavily on. And then for everything to make sense and come together, they needed Kelsey's testimony. So when she gets on the stand and takes the Fifth Amendment as the prosecution's main witness, mind you, that is problematic. Well, she, like I said, originally did uh, allow this entire thing to come together with her testimony. Um, the text messages are also pretty damning, too, like uh, saying 911, Tori shot her, Tori shot Megan. But that doesn't necessarily. Why do you think she, why do you think she texted that and then also uh, gave corroborating evidence to that? And, and we're hyper focusing on like her pleading the fifth, which is her constitutional right to do so for any reason. You know what I mean? Like she could just do that, which she did. She exercised that. But we just refuse to think about why she texted that. We don't think about why Tori apologized to every party involved. Um, we're, we're not looking at any of those, uh, any of those instances. Because and possibly all the witnesses don't that you take the fifth on draw reasonable doubt out of like inference, you're working for the defense the team. For, you're making an inference that the apology is for the shooting while you're definitely absolving um, the reason why she would say I'm not taking a stand, period. Unless as soon as she got on the stand, she's telling the fifth. It's not that she was asked anything as soon as she got there. But so you want to make the inference that the apology from Tory, which was innocuous, honestly, didn't say what he's apologizing for. Say, I'm sorry. That's all he said. But you're you're you're, you're saying that's for the shooting. What do you, what do you think? Her, so wait, you, you think he's apologizing because like an altercation happened where like Kelsey shot Megan, right? That's what you were. No, because like, they fist fought. Yo, Hassan, for. Hassan, it's because he exposed the, the, the whole situation for the shooting. Because like, look, if if I was involved in a situation, a love triangle, as you claim, right? And and the girl that was with me shot the other girl, I would not text like I'm sorry to everyone involved. I'd be like. That was crazy. Remember when that bitch shot you? That was wild, right? Like, that's what I would text. Hassan, I think that's what you're operating on 2020. Hassan, Hassan, you're operating on 2020 hindsight. You got to remember, these are women. They're emotional. They're drunk. It's late at night. They just saw him get trying to go ahead and get with Kylie Jenner. Obviously, they're mad. Honest, so honest, I think Tory Lanez was very emotional. I mean, I you can like, say that. You can say that. That's fine. But my point is this. Everyone's drunk, drunk too, and, and emotional. emotional. And, right? Uh, the other thing, too. Megan. Kelsey... Right. He exposes Meg Thee Stein for having sex with men that she had originally hooked up with Kelsey. So that is how the argument ensued. So we don't know definitively if he was apologizing for shooting or for putting out Megan's information know, to Kelsey. That's and like a much her. bigger thing that you would mention. You'd be like, that was crazy when Kelsey shot you. Right. Because only one person said that would be foolish to do that. Though, Let's be honest. Person. I mean, he's not like he's not going to sit there and be like, yo, that was crazy that Kelsey shot. You know, he's going to say, yo, I'm just, if he apologizes, we don't know really? what he apologized for. So you, you're in a situation. You're in a love triangle. You get a lot of women. Right. I, I feel like or yeah, us, we it, talk about it all the time. You're you're in a love triangle. It happens all the time. One of the girls shoots the other girl. You're going to be like, I'm sorry. That, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's yeah, what, that's how it happened. You would be like, how fucking insane was that? That, that this uh, crazy bitch uh, shot you. Uh, Hassan, that he had, women, am I right? That's probably what you would say. Let me take women, this. Women, let, me women, women, this. Women, let me take this. Let me take this. He's in custody and he's been recorded over the jail phone. Why the hell did he say? Why do you think Kelsey texted 911, Tori shot Meg? So, so now you're moving off the argument. If, are we talking? No, about no, no. I'm asking you. I'm asking. I legitimately want to know why do you think Kelsey oh, well, originally texted that? If you can see this point, because you're saying what the text from him should be, I'm telling you why it's not like that. He's in. No, 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 but tell me that. Tell me that. Tell me that. Just I want to know what you mean. Okay. Why do you think Kelsey texted nine one one? Tory shot Meg. Oh, so by by us moving to this, I'm gonna answer it. I'm feeling like you're conceding that other point because what you're saying would be idiotic if you know you're calling off of a jail phone <laughs> to say, hey, isn't it crazy when you got shot by so-and-so? You might as well give a fucking statement. Okay. And not only that, that that's okay, so, you, so you, you got to remember, protecting he's Kelsey, a rapper, bro. Saying, he's right? a rapper. He cannot snitch. That is career suicide. Of course, he's not going to go ahead and incriminate someone else. That, he's a rapper, bro. As the other one, because I have an answer for the other one. He can't do because that. Yo, put oh, like, okay, that's why. Okay, got it. Hassan, Hassan, the every rapper that gets caught cooperating with the police or snitching or doing anything that might put someone else in jail, their career is ruined. So, of course, he's I not going to go on. I don't know, I don't know if their career is ruined. They can still go on uh, DJ Academics' broadcast like Takashi does okay, all the time. Okay, man. Are we going to stick I mean? to the facts here or are we going to try to make side jokes? <laughs> the, the point is, is that rappers <laughs> yo, cannot sit like there and snitch, bro. He's like, no, like, no, no. Yeah, this guy's qualified to talk about the culture or anything like that, bro. Your facts, bro, are non existent, bro. Like, you're deflecting crazy. You're just deflecting. I'm telling you, why not? That's a super question, and nobody was just able to answer it. this question. I answered it. It's a super Tory, question. It's Tory, so direct. Can I, I incriminate? Kelsey text 911, Tory shot Megan. 
if I, that's not I, the case. I, it's three v one now, by the way. Holy I, fuck! I'll answer that question, but I'm going to just assume that because you diverted, you basically like you, you bowed out of that other point. I mean, you can no, assume whatever you want to, okay, but just now, give me that no, answer. I, I just want to know. I'm, I'm like genuinely now, interested in your perspective. Now I'll answer that question, but I, but I really could just ask a question to, to answer. But I'll just answer myself. If I was the best friend of someone who just got in a drunken fight and I unfortunately shot at my best friend, okay, she got hurt. If I'm the closest person to her team, you think I'm gonna text her team, hey, I shot Meg? Come on now, would you text that? So, so in that situation, you think a text message is necessary, right? Like you're saying that the text message is necessary. She's belligerent enough to fucking grab a gun, shoot Megan the Stallion, but then also somehow has it all together. I guess like she, the adrenaline kicked in and all of a sudden she's just like, remembered the consequence of her actions and decided to very cleverly and devilishly text this ruse even though tori lanes on instagram comments has also said that kelsey had not shot megan the stallion and it like so uh, clearly the, the, like no one has said kelsey shot megan the stallion that has never even been brought up except for the blogosphere are we going to hold what, what tori said on instagram which we don't even know if that's him controlling his page we're going to hold him liable for that but we can't hold meg liable for saying out of her own mouth a different story five times. Well, I mean, it was used. Thank it, you. it was used, from what I understand, when an LAPD detective Warren Eberhardt took the stand to testify that Tory Lanez's verified IG account once commented on a theory that Kelsey was a shooter, saying that's not true. Okay, perfect. I'm glad you said that. Now, that sh this incident happened two years ago. They asked that same detective, "When did you see that that message? Did you check the IP address of where it came from? Because you know, you could have an Instagram account and somebody could access it from Zimbabwe. Somebody could access it from Costa Rica. So you, th you think a hacking happened? That's why Tory Lanez, no. or you think Tory Lanez's instant? Tory Lanez, so Tory Lanez's okay. interns are are fighting against. Tory Lanez is what you're saying. Mid trial, mid trial. When Mo went live, Tory Lanez's Instagram joined the live. You think Tory's in court joined the live? He has people. No, I don't. But okay, do you yeah, think but someone with access He's... to Tory's? Why is someone with access to Tory Lanez's Instagram account uh, defending? No, no. Uh, oh, defending here's my, here's my point. Kelsey. I'm not saying you can't use that as some type of proof, but. Number one, you saw it a week ago before trial when you had two years to see it, right? Number two, you made no fucking effort to try to at least go out of your way to prove that he's the actual one that posted it. Well, to be fair, I don't think they needed that because uh, ultimately it wasn't Kelsey that was on trial. It was Tory Lanez on trial because, again, going back to the main thing, the five points that the prosecution laid out was pretty open and shut. Oftentimes, cops... Not very good no, at their jobs, not. okay? No, it's I can't, not. I can't talk about feds. I don't know how Myron was, but clearly he wasn't that good because no, now not. he's doing a fucking POA podcast. However, however, you have okay? For, you have for however, like, however. You're going to attack the argument no, or are you going to just attack the person? That's all you do. It literally it does do. seem like they had a lot of fucking, a lot of evidence, right? Like, I mean, no, holy I'm shit, they had the witness no, who survived. Petition more to you, brother. You gotta run for office. Like the way you're able to duck out of what shit. What do you mean? There's five, there's five points of evidence. Every time we hold you to a point, you move to another one, and then when we try to get you there, you flip to this other Bro, thing. Bro, your counter was someone from Zimbabwe might have fucking controlled his account. The reason why they didn't even have to fucking find this is because they already had five Bro, points right, of evidence right, that right, was right, so right, damning right, hold on, hold on. in a situation right, where it was right, right, Tory Lane right, right, versus right, Megan the Stallion. Why are you being stupid? You cover all type of shit, even if you're covering like the search warrants that was like executed in Mar-a-Lago. Come on, you know if you're gonna use someone's social media writings and presence, nigga, at least motherfucking execute a warrant. Instagram is gonna show you exactly where it came from. They took a screenshot from the shady room. Is that what you want the fucking government to be putting people in jail for? That's all okay. I'm trying to say. They found well, a screenshot. Again, of it's the reason why they didn't conduct that level of investigation on that regard was because, again, it wasn't, there was no like Kelsey is the actual shooter theory. There was no evidence that Kelsey was the actual shooter. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was also Kelsey's own that's fucking that's text that's message saying 911 Tory shot Meg. If the police haven't done it. It's kind of weird after years of Hassan attacking the judicial system and how unfair it is. It's so weird seeing him do that switch up. It's, it reminds me of Lib switching and uh, shilling for Big Pharma. It's one of those like, is this a like parody world? Where are we right now? Their due diligence and done their fucking job. You want us to consider some shit off Instagram? At least fucking run a warrant, okay? At least get the information in a right format that the jury could have some validation to the shit. Where was this us on during Kyle Rittenhouse? Yeah, true, but you don't want my opinion for Kyle Rittenhouse. Cause there's something about me where if I don't like someone's face, they're guilty. So I think I'm the most hated right-wing channel when I talk about Kyle. I have issues, dude. I have straight-up issues. You're presenting. You're presenting shit like a block. Unfortunately, <laughs> academics has no, like, you know, I have no, there's no, like, fucking, well, oh, you have to meet this academics, ball. Academics, you understand, they didn't need to do that because it was, they you know. They didn't, but you know that they didn't need to do that. 
You, you know the, what I mean? Like, they didn't need to. You understand why I'm saying they you didn't need saying, to, right? you're, you're actually relying on it to make your point. So if they didn't need to do it while you were like... You think Carl Rittenhouse was racist? No, I don't. It's just, like, it's so hard for me to get behind a soy icon. Like, it's, it reminds me of when Crowder says stuff I agree with. I still hate him. Because <laughs> I know... That our the, our temperament is the movement. It's not really our policies. It's not, you know, like Mike Pence. You could like Mike Pence policies, but is Mike Pence really a part of our movement? No. I don't need to make the point. Oh, I'm, I'm bringing it up because I think that it's already in, there's already enough evidence, as I've shown time and time again, as to why I feel the way I do about the situation. I'm not getting right, emotional. Hassan, about this. here's the point. It seems like see, you are here's a the thing. Bit. Right, let me take this, bro. Let me take this. Hassan, you have a you do a great job of deflecting like, like, and doing ad hominem like, attacks, which is fantastic. But you know what? Let's go over each piece of evidence and actually talk about each piece of evidence with facts versus you making jokes ad hominem attacks. Number one, the jail call. He never actually admits to shooting at Meg. He's just profusely apologizing. The text message. Kelsey says, oh, Tory shot Meg. When they tried to bring in the witness to actually receive the text message so they can get some context, he didn't want to come in and testify. I wonder why. Also, the text messages between Meg and Tory, we don't necessarily know if he was apologizing for outing Meg the Stallion and her promiscuity in the past along with her friend, or if he was apologizing for Kelsey and Meg fist fighting because him, start, him giving that, starting that conversation initiated the fist fight. Or, why I can't take or Tory's, getting you know why I can't take Tory's side right away like everyone else? In my experience, you never defend a cokehead. I still remember in, I was coming back from Colombia and I got stuck at the airport and I started yelling at the people in Toronto and there was an old man being mistreated and he was surrounded by security. He's an old bearded, gray bearded guy, tattoos, and it was his first time flying and his brother died.
Kind of, case. Anna, this is unrelated. You can literally. I'm using it as an example. Fifth, regardless, it's okay. Just, you can plead the fifth regardless. It is. It is the law. Okay. It is. You can plead the fifth, right but there are going to be consequences. Right. You can be held. You can be held right. in contempt of court. You could be. You can be. Uh, you, there's issues that could arise from that if you don't actually. If there's no reasonable expectation, oh, those things can be used God. against you. That's what I'm trying to say, bro. <sighs> <laughs> I, I I know what you're trying to say, but you're wrong. And I I I told you that there is a Supreme Court case on this exact issue that you're talking about. It does. I also literally gave you the exact reason as to why it doesn't work that way. Because if it worked that way, then everyone would just assume you're guilty all the time, every single time you pled the fifth. that I, I no, I'm beginning. I'm beginning to like you. I'm, I'm my bad. I, I think, I think you're dope.
Nick, you are fucked I, up. I actually don't drink. I've been sober for like five months now. But I drank tonight. You're Unless we're talking about very unique instances where they're like, I don't even care, but like someone got to tell you to like.
like some random bullshit, okay? Because like you say, or at least academics said that it was random bullshit, like Tory Lanez would never is that she said, I did not have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez. Then she gets on a stand and she admits she did have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez. Wait, she lied. Yeah, that's like, that's, first of all, yeah, of course, that's fucking embarrassing for her to- But that's that, important. That doesn't make her that's inconsistent on, uh, in regards to whether or not she got shot, bro. What the fuck? It absolutely is an important fact. However, Wait, because- what? Yes. That's insane. All right, you yeah, this is a or private affair react that she probably felt fucking really embarrassed by because she fucked the dude who was like 5'2 and shot her. Okay, the point here, bro, is who that- wasn't even the argument, The argument- Stemmed if she from Tory Lanez. Lanez. She probably talk about it all the time, but she fucked Tory Lanez. Let me finish my point. The reason why that is material <laughs> is because when Tory Lanez exposed Meg for having sex with not only him but Kelsey, and he Bro, exposed that's the not fact an expose. That, what you're talking about is like TMZ shit. While you're talking about a fucking criminal. That's court the entire case. Like, the reason fuck? they fought, dude. I'm yeah. trying to explain that well, to you. That is an important Seems as though the victim is like the actual. Insane. That's insane that, that, that you think that you think this is a good case. Of course you fucking. Of course, Tory Lanez went to jail. Hassan, you're being emotional right you now. You think that that's a good enough uh, defense? Hassan, Holy you're being fuck. emotional right now. Let me finish my point before you go crazy.
there is no separate narrative. It's been documented several times where hip, male hip hop artists have been asked, would you provide information?
the fucking dumbest idiot on earth, even if he didn't do it. Mm. Bro, yeah. you're, you're, you're refusing to even concede on small points that we can't even go forward, my nigga. Like, here's how. Here's what I'd do, right? I would just message, make this down. Yo, why did you shoot yourself? <laughs> right? That's what I would have messaged, and then I would have met up in person and be like, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shot you. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Like it's like you're like just what? I mean in a game, video game. But, but like but there's no there are there are inconsistencies with respect <laughs> to what uh Kelsey said afterwards, but we've addressed them, right? Like I already addressed them. I told but you. But the fact that there are inconsistencies well, address them. She addressed Hassan, them. Hassan, she said it. You're she missing the point. Said said. Whenever a witness has inconsistencies, that makes the witness less Incredible. Do you not understand that testimony needs to be uniform across all platforms? If you say one thing here, they get on the stand and give something here. That hurts your credibility. My argument the is simply is this. She, she gave Kelsey, nothing, though, on the Kelsey stand. Kelsey and Meg said that she has postpartum and also on top of that had a death in the family. That is not an excuse to lie. She's having a hard time recalling incidents. That is not and an excuse to lie. that in and of itself is an inconsistency, certainly, but it's a yes. one that has been addressed. And I think that it was enough for the jury to, to you know. Saying I Plot twist. The death in Megan's family was caused by Tori. He killed that family member as well, because believe all women. Take postpartum depression originally. is not a it does not absolve you of your duty to tell the truth as a witness. That hurts her credibility. So did Meg. I'm arguing simply this: Kelsey and Meg are not credible witnesses because they gave inconsistent stories pertaining to the shooting from the beginning. Between Meg getting on IG Live and giving different uh, uh, recounts of the event to her getting on a public interview on television saying she did not have a sexual relationship with Tori, the, and that was extremely material to the situation because a fight broke out, as said by Kelsey as well, due to Tori Lane having a sexual relationship with Kelsey. So what I'm saying is that Kelsey and Meg are not credible witnesses. And then you add in the factor that they were all drunk. Uh -huh. So Bro, that you hurts think, their testimony you think Megan more. is not a credible witness? No. Because, no, she, was, because she didn't want to admit that she fucked Tori Lane's. Like, that that's crazy. Come on. But that's a material fact. In, that's in, a TV, in a TV interview, like unrelated to the fucking court case. Come on. Everything dude. is that's related. Like, Everything that, is related. Bro, bro. Public statements I mean, can if, always if be that used. makes her unrelated, it's like, oh, you lied when you were 14 years old one time. So like, sorry. No, sorry but she, lied about, you're, you're, she lied about the you're investigation. She lied about the investigation. You're not a credible witness. Yes, <laughs> because, because she gave a differing story on a material fact in her own criminal <laughs> investigation case where she's no, a witness. That is not a material fact. Yes, it is. not a material fact. A material fact would be, if you want to talk about material fact, you could actually bring up no, the fact we're not that talking about she that. originally said she stepped on glass. No, no, no. That I'm talking about material fact her that is inconsistent. Out, having sex with Tori. That's very important. Lanes. That's important. Bro, that if that was important, then the court would have uh, argued that that was important. But luckily, they did argue the jury it. and the criminal justice system doesn't operate like a bunch of fucking Manosphere podcasters. Holy fuck. Come on, dude. Bro, the uh, fight between that. her like, and she Kelsey the whole team started. if she wants to. She still got she shot. She can do whatever she wants. It doesn't matter. But the, the shooting happened because she fucked Tory Lanez, which means it's important. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bro, there's good evidence that Kelsey could have been the shooter and they argued over Tory Lanez. You're telling me that wasn't relevant to the facts? I know a dick. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Bro, it is extremely relevant because Kelsey could have been the shooter. Why? Also, exactly just like yeah yeah mayweather's um daughter stabs a young boy's other baby mom or girlfriend or something like that i mean girls get jealous they that could be a that could be a thing the other the other part of this is that that's crazy to me is like everyone's fucking mad at megan the stallion who got shot and like no one's mad at fucking kelsey who apparently is the real shooter you know what i mean there's no good evidence that she was the shooter she did test positive for gunshot residue. Do okay. you know whether Sean Kelly also and said Tory he saw female shoot? failed the GSR test. They both failed it. That's true. The DNA evidence on the gun was inconclusive. That's also true. That doesn't mean that there was no DNA evidence for Tory Lanez. That does not mean that there was no DNA evidence for Kelsey. It was just simply that it was inconclusive. Okay. okay. And in the court Those of law, facts are correct. It's supposed to be correct correct beyond a reasonable doubt. What I'm saying is that there was doubt here. There was a significant amount of doubt. We got witnesses that aren't credible. We got DNA tests that aren't being conclusive. We got uh, witnesses saying it one thing. Matter. Yeah, of course, DNA can sometimes be inconclusive. That that's why you rely on the entire situation. That's why you rely on witness testimony. And guess what? Here's the reality. Witnesses okay? that aren't if credible. You shoot someone, if credible. you shoot someone, if they survive, you're kind of fucked. That's it. That's it. Like, ultimately, this is where the, the, the court case starts, and this is where the court case begins. You shoot someone, and they fucking survive. You are fucked. That's it. You can say, your honor, she fucked the whole squad, though. Your honor, she lied about fucking someone, but then said that she actually did fuck them. It doesn't matter. She got shot by the dude, and she said, this motherfucker shot me. That's it. But she's not credible. He it could have been Kelsey shooting her. Maybe could have been Kelsey shooting argue, her. Like, oh, well, that's inconclusive. Could have been Kelsey shooting her. Whatever. He didn't finish the job. Could could Kelsey. Kelsey. Do you know why people are mad at Meg? Because she lied multiple times. That's a big issue here, Bro, though. No, she lied I know why people are mad times. at Meg. Because you have built an entire career shitting on women. That's why, uh, no. you know. What does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? 
than anything else. Oh, my All God. you do is do ad hominem attacks. You don't argue the points. I'm saying she's not a credible witness because she lied on no, multiple occasions. Of course I argue the points. You're, dude, if we're talking about ad hominem, you literally keep bringing up the fact that Megan Thee Stallion in a TV interview says she didn't fuck Tory Lanez, but then openly admitted that she fucked Tory Lanez Because that goes like, to speak it. about it's her not, credibility. It shows and, that and she's a saying, liar. Like, the case should be thrown out or it's, something. It's as relevant as because that. she's that's a liar. Insane. It's relevant because she's a liar, bro. Are you missing the point that she lied and didn't give a consistent story? that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm kind of trying to moderate a little bit. I don't think he's saying... Yeah, I'm not too. I'm not too uh, fond of Myron's point here that she lies about the interview. Therefore, you know, I, I don't think Myron's point is that strong. I'm not even with Hassan, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's strange. It means the case should be thrown out, but it goes towards credibility, which yeah, no, 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 exactly. Oh, In that that's regard, what I've been no, saying. What are you arguing? Then, what are you arguing? That's what I've been saying. What are you arguing then? What are you arguing? Her credibility is hurts because she's lied and like what did she lie about on IG Live? Give me the link. Let me see this shit. Has it told the same story no, multiple times? It doesn't That's my matter. Point. It is a private affair that she fucking said on television versus when she was under oath. Of course. That does not mean anything about the, her credibility, okay? There are additional reasons as to why people sometimes feel conflicted about openly stating who they fucked, okay? That's understandable. It's the most understandable thing. If you were a little bit more charitable in this regard, you would also recognize that. Come on. Okay, let's talk about how she didn't want to admit that her and Kelsey got in a physical altercation. How about that? Let's also talk about how... That's huge. Why didn't he open with that? Why did it take so long to get here? That's huge. What the fuck? <laughs> Because then it could be Tori apologizing for introducing Kelsey and all that happening. Oh, she said that they left one time, but in reality, they really left twice. And they came back. And they came back for a sandal. Let's talk about her lying on a public interview. Let's talk about her IG stories and her IG lives where she gave oh. different conflicting accounts oh, you know, of the situation. You know, ultimately, you know, ultimately, when you're recalling shit, there's going to be instances where you're not 100% accurate, okay? This happens all the That's time. That's why you don't now, go on the internet and talk about it. Measure, measure, that, credibility. You have to measure that on how severe it is, right? You have to measure that on how severe that is. Recanting or recalling instances that even happened to you is oftentimes going to be murky. Now, if you are, let's say, a third-party person who claims you woke up the gunshots and then change your testimony to, oh, actually, I was watching them fight, so I saw every single thing that happened, that's pretty inconsistent, especially because of your proximity to the situation. Hey, if you're like Kelsey in that regard, your testimony, if it had changed dramatically, which it never did, right? Remember, it did she change. The fifth, dramatically. never dramatically changed her testimony. She uh -huh. never dramatically changed her testimony and was literally given the opportunity to address it with immunity in a court of law. Hassan, did, did you that. even see this trial? She gave a completely different account. Real quick, let's, let's go. Let me get a word. Um, so, remember I said this about credibility. And, and I think the way you even try... Oh my God, why is he in this? ...to describe certain things is probably the reason why we're having the problem even kind of like understanding how this this case even devolved, how it did. Like, when people are men mentioning her sexual history, it's not to shame her, this and third. It's about credibility, right? Also, for example... She has she has a habit about drinking. I drink a lot every day. Okay, this is not to shame her, but no, I know I've seen you. I've seen you fall asleep watching. Malik, what the fuck are you doing? You're burning your hair. Malik, are you actually burning your hair? Yeah. Do you want to watch? No, don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's so much fun. <laughs> what the fuck did you drink? I don't know, way too much. John, you should you should burn your hair too. It's actually really, really fun. With what? Like with a lighter. Don't do that. No, 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 but but you should. Like, look, look. No, All right. no, don't. How, say a number, say a number. Say a number. Don't do that. Say a number. Wait, show the lighter? Do you have a lighter? I do. Is she actually doing this? Yeah, I have been. Look. Yo, stop. Stop. Stop doing that. I'm banning you from my podcast for life. You're a fucking unstable retard. Yo, yo, yo. What are you doing? <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> Bitch, are you retarded? Yo, Malik. <laughs> yo, Malik. Turn the fucking stream off. You're done. No. Look. Yo, it's stop fun. doing that shit. Seriously. Yo, stop, Malik. You're my friend, yo. Listen to me. Wait. I'm not watching this shit. M Malik, stop that yeah. shit. Yeah. It's so cool. It just lights up. And then Malik, it's on fire. Malik, stop. Malik, stop, dude. Are we homies yeah. or not? Yeah. So come on, listen to me and stop. 
Don't burn my hair. Should I burn hair everywhere now? Here, Malik, mute your stream for a sec. Hold on. I'm muted. Are you muted? Yeah, yeah, I promise. Okay. I'm muted. Okay. Okay, text me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave call. They can hear us now. Text me right now. Text you what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna hang up and and text me and I'm gonna send you the stuff. Okay. On Discord. Yeah. Just send it right now. I will. Did you end? Yeah, you did. I I did end. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow, you'll be live around this time, right? 
I'm live every night, yeah. Okay. Stop drinking. Go drink some fucking water and uh, don't do anything stupid. Listen to the Drake. Yeah, I, it's I, one I, of my I, favorite clips. I, but here's the thing, though: if we if we mention her drinking, it's not to shame her habits or her possibly being an alcoholic. It's probably to say, well, she I was mean, in a state of mind that she could probably not remember these details accurately. For example, like what Myra said, when she stated the sequence of events, she did not recall leaving the party then returning. But her friend said that happened. Again, it's not trying to be like, oh, know, you're do, you think, do you think like <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the party and return is of the same vein as like being fucking shot in the foot? Like, come on. No, of no, course, no, no, small no. details like that. Can, small details like that oh, can escape you. Of, in a lot of instances, that's wait, why wait, witness testimony is oftentimes murky. There's a big difference between going, I got fucking shot in the foot by the, that five foot two man right there and saying, oh, I might have left the party. I might not have left the party. Oh, she never seen who pulled the trigger and everybody else test other testimony. That's not the, true. That's not true. She testified. That's not true. She finish. testified. She, that never she said turned she's around. Seen. Oh, no, no. She <laughs> never said she's seen who pulled the trigger. She said, right. She literally <laughs> turned around. She said, I turned my upper body around and saw no, she saw Tory Lane shooting. No. She never seen the trigger being pulled. She said she heard dance, bitch, dance. She looked over her shoulder. She seen Tori. Then she turned back around. I'll lock a thousand dollars. We can lock on it. She never actually seen. So, so obviously, by circumstantial evidence, you'd assume it is Tori. However, going back to her state of mind and not remembering, though, according to the GSR report, Tori, if, if the gunfire happened at that moment, Tori had to be right next to Kelsey. They asked her, did you see... When you turned your back and you heard that, did you see Kelsey anywhere near there? She said, I'd never seen Kelsey. Kelsey was yeah. nowhere in the vicinity. Who is Kelsey? Right? Can you tell me? By, by the way, by the way, by the way, uh, I, already, I already told you what happened in that regard. Megan Thee Stallion also said that she had turned around after, the, after hearing the voices. Uh, also, yeah. Kelsey said she, Kelsey said she turned around as well. But listen, listen, I have another, I have another question for you, but like... Um, so you're doing the thing. You, we, nah, bro. Frank, Frank, Frank no, bro. I, we Frank already, this is literally addressed in the court. Like, we're in a loop now. I'm trying to move the conversation along as best as possible. Let's move the conversation along as quickly as possible because there's one additional thing. This one, you, like, said, you said he made jail. Uh, you said he made phone calls from jail. Yo, you said something that was obviously false. I am holding you to the fire saying that is false. You know what you do? Let's move to another point. Exactly. Wait, right. wait, wait, wait. Okay, we can go back to that. What is it? Hey, here, go ahead. Uh, sorry. You're, you're right. I, I will. I will have this conversation again. She what testified under oath that she believes Tory shot her, right? Because she saw him with the gun. She didn't see when he pulled the trigger. She saw him with the gun before. So the she also there. she also did say she also did say that she turned around like she was walking away from them. But when she heard noises, she did turn her upper body around. She did say that. She said that in court. Hold on, hold on. in you're her testimony. To say the same thing I am, but you're trying to twist it in your way. Yes, she. Wait, what do you mean? No, no, she turned. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. we don't okay, care. We'll just, let's just find the quote. 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 Let's bitch dance. If she heard, listen, gallop, bitch, gallop. If she heard whatever, did she see the bullets coming out of that gun? Was her eyes locked with the shooter? No, she said she saw Tori with the gun. Bro, that's crazy. Okay, that's an insane. So what happened? Tori Lanes is a fucking acrobat, and like he grabbed the gun after. Kelsey's hand oh, in the on. fucking five seconds. Yeah, of course, oh, dude. Oh, you know how fast oh, bullets oh, travel. It's kind of the whole point. You, you, okay, so 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 you're actually you're now doing the the, the theatrics. Wait, no, too. of course, oh, because I'm a normal human being with a normal human being oh, brain. Obviously, oh, when she oh, says oh, I turned around as a Tory with a gun, that's that's immediately after. Okay, it, okay, immediately after she got shot. All right, so so let me give you why that's relevant. Are you gonna let me make this point? <laughs> okay, exactly. I want to hear this. Yes, I want to okay. hear why this is relevant. Once again, it goes back to her to intoxication and her not remembering what happened. According to her, there was no um. The uh, there was a witness that testified that she got out of the car and she walked towards the passenger side. I forget on which side, but that's also in line with Sean Kelly, who said there was a fight. She claims she doesn't remember that. She only remembers walking away, then hearing dance, bitch, dance. The reason why I'm saying that I'm not I'm not saying that she's just blatantly lied about that. I'm saying because her memory's now in question because of how inebriated she's at. Keep in mind they also said, well, if you turned around, yeah, but and that, but it's still, but it literally still like straight up fucking is, is corroborated by Kelsey's testimony originally. And you can't undermine it by claiming her original that, testimony. Uh, yo, Hassan, Hassan, her original testimony does not matter. You keep trying it's to go ahead off of the police interview. Of she admitted, matters. yo, Hassan, here are the facts, okay? She went in, she gave the police a statement in September of 2022, two years after the fact, and she went ahead and implicated Tori as the shooter. She went and corroborated a, a lot of Meg's story and said all this stuff to pin it on Tori. She gets on the stand, switches her story, says straight up, I lied. And then they ask, why did you lie? And she says, because to protect myself. And she kept no, repeating she said, like, to protect up, myself. I lied. When you say that, you're making it 
seemed like every part of her testimony was incorrect. Well, she, she said she lied in the interview and still refused to do so. No, so bro. She openly no, said, I lied in that interview earlier with the police. There were lies. And no, but there's then multiple facets they to that asked conversation. Her. Then She's they not asked directly her. pinpointing a singular piece of information that she said was incorrect. You know, okay? Do you realize how ridiculous you sound if someone is so saying that they lied? Because you know, okay, someone, if said someone says, you oh, know, uh, so apples are red, okay? Know. And then they say the sky is green in that interview, okay? And then they turn around and testify and say, actually, then, I lied about that interview. Does that mean apples are not red? Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. If 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 I said I lied about something, no matter what I lied about. And she didn't even say she lied about something. She said that it was inconsistent with. Uh, even if, if, okay, okay, let's go with that. You don't think that, you don't think your credibility is now in doubt, brother? You still think that that's a credible thing? You have she no. Said, she said she was not 100% truthful and was given immunity so she could clarify her statements, which she refused to do. Um, she did not do that. She also said she is currently under like a lot of pressure, which is understandable, and ultimately did not reveal any additional information. But she had the opportunity to say what she lied about and change her testimony, which she did not do. So, of course, ultimately, they used her original testimony. OK, which isn't credible because she said that she lied and it wasn't true. Like, bro, oh, you're missing, you're, you're, you don't well, understand. You can't use that. It doesn't work. And like then when that. they ask her like evidence that has been gathered, you know, you've built cases before. Right. Like this is evidence that's been gathered. You can't just be like, OK, well, I guess we just throw the whole case away. Like that, that's not how this works. Oh, man, bro. I mean, it, come on. That's not how this works. That's exactly you know how that. it works. You because know, a witness's credibility is everything. You know that that's not a witness's credibility is everything, Hassan. Okay. And the other thing, too, we could talk about the witnesses not being credible. We could talk about the lead detective being under investigation, having Giglio issues and being on admin leave. We could talk about how the police didn't properly secure the area and properly place evidence tags on all the bullet fragments and the blood. And they weren't able to get an actual trajectory, of, uh, excuse me, a path of how Megan walked. We, we could talk about how Kelsey was sitting in the back seat behind Megan. Megan was sitting in the front seat. Tori was sitting in the back left passenger seat behind the driver. How would he have had time to go ahead? run around the corner grab the gun say yeah dance bitch dance and then actually shoot her when she was only no, walking shot, for a few seconds from the open door he shot from the open door of the car she said he was standing see that's another no. that's what i'm trying to tell you bro there's no. there's holes all over the place yeah. where there's not necessarily a clear-cut situation also no. there's discrepancy Hassan, let me finish there's discrepancy between what the prosecution said in the opening statements and meg and i'll go ahead and i'll read it for you because i went ahead and took some notes on this one before because i covered. I have this. another i have another question let me finish this before you ask the question let me finish let me finish testimony goes when are you serious let me finish my point before you ask your question i'm saying that there's a discrepancy there's like because now that i want to hey 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 no we're we're gonna get this. I let you speak. Like, okay, go ahead. Go I ahead, actually go see ahead, the difference between me and you, Hassan, is that I listen to you speak and I understand it. That's why I'm able to refute okay, your go points. Ahead. You're right. You I'm, sorry. You're I'm sorry. Go ahead, please, please. So the discrepancy is this: prosecutor said that Kelsey went to Meg after being shot. Then when Tori ran up to try to attack her, Kelsey got in the middle, fought Tori off, and he grabbed her by the hair. That's why her nail broke and her pendant broke, right? That's what the prosecution yes. said in opening statements. Yes. However, Meg said when she got shot, Tori and Kelsey came at her at the same time, and she didn't make any mention of them actually fighting. So that's a huge discrepancy there, okay? No, that's not so, a dis no that is literally not a discrepancy. She not revealing that piece of information might be for any million different fucking reasons, given the adrenaline-packed circumstance <laughs> and the fact that she turned around and saw who had the gun. If you're getting shot at and you see who has the fucking gun, who shot you with, okay, who they, who you got shot with, the gun that you got shot with, then obviously, like, that's what you're hyper-focusing on, okay? I un That is totally understandable. That does not make her, like, a non-credible witness. This standard, if this standard was applied to every single court case, literally... No one would get jailed for murder. I but, hope you understand but, but, but that. But like, you're missing the point no here. Situation. Is that the only clear thing cut, that would be it's additional evidence cut. on this would be just video footage of Tory Lanez shooting Megan Thee Stallion going dance, bitch, dance. And even then, I feel like you'd probably still defend it. You're that missing the point here, Going back to what I was talking about. It's not conclusive. It's my point. Mentioned, including the text message that Tory Lanez sent to Megan Thee Stallion. That was not actually a phone conversation from jail. That was a text message that Tory Lanez actually sent to Megan Thee Stallion saying, I apologize. Yep. I'm so sorry how things happen. Uh, I can't remember. It was not on a jail phone. Yeah, it was right. not actually like a snitch situation. Yeah. And in that circumstance, you would absolutely fucking say, you would absolutely say something like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I can't believe that shit happened. Rather than saying, oh, I'm so sorry, Meg. I know you're probably never going to talk to me again, but I genuinely want you to know I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart, and I was just too drunk. Okay. Nonetheless, shit should have never happened, and I can't change what I did. I just feel horrible. You think after Megan Thee Stallion got shot, you okay. think that like that's a text message that you're sending to a human being? We're talking reason, okay, with okay. the bounds of reason. You think you're sending that text message to be like, oh man, it's so crazy. I like you know uh, uh, revealed your your information, or do you think you'd be like, how crazy was it that? Uh, you know, Kelsey fucking shot you because this is between two parties that are still trying to make amends. Okay, Hassan, I already addressed the sex message when I was going through the evidence. I told you that there's 
reasons why he could be apologizing. It could have been for him hitting on Kylie Jenner in front of her. It could have been on him getting a fight started between okay, her okay, and her but, best but friend. Megan, it's not it could have been him. You know what but, I mean? Okay, I, I understand that. Shot. I feel like that's something you would address okay, first, Okay, right? I get that. I get that. But there were so many things that occurred okay, that, that night okay, good. that he could be apologizing you that. for. You, you understand that. Okay, good. I just wanted to mention that because it, it's not even like completely relevant to the conversation. Like I said, because it's not evidence. You can't use this as evidence that like Tory Lane shot Megan Thee Stallion for sure. But the reason why um, I wanted to bring this up is because sure. like we're just having a conversation between two guys uh, within like common reason and reasonable boundaries would also, you know, reasonable boundaries would also dictate that you would most likely uh, talk about the main issue at hand, someone getting shot. I understand that, Hassan. But what I am saying is that there were so many things that happened negatively to Megan that night that he could have apologized for any of it. That's by your logic. That means if you tell someone my condolences or I'm sorry for your loss, that means that you were the murderer or the shooter of that person at deceased. I am saying he's sorry for what well, happened I mean, to if her. I, yeah. If I wait, what? I if I shot someone and then I and then they survived and I said I'm sorry for what I did that night. Yeah, it kind of seems like I shot that person. But we're having I'm saying, a conversation that's reasonable. He never admitted yes, to shooting her. If because, I said I can't change what I did, she he basically said everything but i'm sorry i shot you okay but, but you know what else he did that night going, no there's a million different reasons there's a million reasons he was sorry because he actually said a no-no word what if he was sorry because he actually revealed that he wanted to fuck kylie jenner that night like bro she got shot of course she's of course he's talking about how he shot her no <laughs> see on. that's what you're coming that's what you're coming to the conclusion of but what i'm saying is that a bunch of things happened to meg that night he could have apologized for a multitude of reasons i've outlined this before he hit on kylie <laughs> by the way like, like i said it's not even court it's just okay. like funny that to I get see that. you defend this no but what i'm saying is that, but that's the point bro the defense's job is to create reasonable doubt we don't know what he apologized for it could have been him hitting on kylie it could have been him getting uh, starting the fight between him and kelsey her and kelsey getting in a fist fight it could have been her getting shot it could have been kelsey shooting out real quick it could have been it could have been any I'm of these sorry reasons that we got into a fight on the night that like you're the girl that you were seeing let's say got shot by another girl that's what you're saying like you're actually texting that text message you're saying i'm sorry for how i conducted myself when you got shot is that that's a, that's you would say that you think, dude, what I would do versus what happened to Tori are two different things. I'm saying yeah. he could have apologized for a multitude of reasons. You're just saying he apologized because he shot her. No, there was a bunch of things that came out that night that no one knew about. For example, Kelsey but the did not know. Please stop for two Kyle seconds. At that point. Please stop like, for two seconds. Please stop for two seconds and listen, because the, the difference between me and you is I listen very closely to everything you say. You don't listen to anything that I say. You got to understand okay. that when Tori said, yo, Meg. Just so you know, you backstabbed your friend. You were fucking on me. You were fucking on the baby, etc. That was the first time that Kelsey heard that information. Okay, so she obviously felt some type of way. They're all drunk. Emotions are high. Then all three of them are arguing in the love triangle. Kelsey did not know that information until Tori exposed it, and she embar he embarrassed the fuck out of Meg. So that is what led to the physical altercation between Kelsey and Meg. They were best friends prior to the situation. So there's a multitude of reasons why Tori might be apologizing. It does not necessarily have to be just because he shot her. So if they had Allegedly. a physical altercation and Kelsey shot her, why did she blame Tori Lanes? Bro, that also can be explained. It could have been she was trying to take away some responsibility from herself. It could have been, oh, I need to pin this Wait, on somebody. You think, you think if she got reason. shot, she would have to de describe her position? No, she would have been like, I got fucking shot by this crazy Are bitch. Are you talking about Meg or Kelsey? Come on, Meg or Kelsey. You're crazy. You're talking about no, Kelsey? In your mind, that's how that works. But that's not how that works in the fucking court of law. If she got shot by Kelsey and they fought and they fucking hate one another, clearly she's going to be like, I got shot by this crazy bitch, Kelsey. Lock her up. No, she wouldn't because they were best friends prior. She was probably trying to protect Kelsey. Why would yeah. she not? She would not snitch on so her friends. So why is she not? But, but like, but like that's doesn't make any sense. That doesn't it make any sense. sense. Like, there was she can go ahead and where she blame on Tori. Turn around and be like, "Oh yeah, she, actually, Kelsey's the one who's responsible." You, you, like your own logical box that you have created doesn't make sense when you ask like three or four questions about motives uh, of people that you're not hyper focusing on. Uh, look, listen, this is common sense, bro. The video showing like why is Tori protecting Kelsey? Why is Megan protecting Kelsey when when Kelsey's the one who shot uh, uh, Megan in that circumstance? Like it makes no she sense. She didn't see, bro. Like she wouldn't even know. She just looked. All she heard was dance, bitch. If that was the case, then why did Kelsey say? Well, did you hear the words dance bitch? She said, now where'd you hear that from? That was her verbatim answer to that. If okay, you read the yeah, shooter. She didn't hear she didn't hear uh, the, the words dance bitch. Fine. Okay. That's fine. I mean that that the well, entire the you're prosecution not, you're opened not, with that. You're not responding to my question. Why would Megan Thee Stallion defend Kelsey despite being shot, even if they are no longer friends and they're no longer friends? You know what I mean? Because, because who's the bigger enemy? Like you think you think what Kelsey, Kelsey were best enemy friends is the at person the time. who shot her. Her okay? and Kelsey were like, best friends at the in time. A situation, in a situation, that's crazy that you think that like a person not, could not, literally not. be like, Oh Megan my god, I got shot by this woman, but I Hold fucking up. hate Tory Lanez more. Not, That's an not. insane inference, dude. Come not. on. Meg only, common sense. Meg only named Tory after Meg basically came out and said, I'm tired of sparing you. He said one more lie. I'm tired of sparing you. She tweeted this. This was basically her thinking that blogs and media were trying to um, portray her as either part of the melee that happened that night or making it seem like she, yeah, because she got was shot. Okay, no, I'm not. You're saying the obvious, my guy. But but I'm trying to shot. tell you when she named Tori. 
I'm trying to tell you when she named Tori and why she had a reason to name him. She had a reason to name him because she felt that the media was kind of painting her in a situation where she was lumping them with her and also making her seem to be the bad guy. So she then basically threatened. Then she said, she went alive. She said, Tori shot me. Okay. Criminal charges never came till then. So if you're wondering, oh, wait, wait, what you're talking about the IG live yes. where yes. Megan Thee Stallion says Tori Lanez shot her. Okay. Yes. She that was like her. that she was said, that was that was August twentieth though. You made it seem like it took her years to fucking uh, admit this. It was at least a month. Yeah, that's that's not all that much time. What do you mean? Oh, if on, she bro. got shot. Listen, her original in it, her, logic, logic, right? her original oh, reason in this situation was to like get away though. from the situation. If her original, yeah, okay, a month. Like, what's what your you logic? Mean? If someone shot you, would you wait a month to tell the police? What's your logic? I mean, she already well. Come on, actually, come as a matter of fact, I wouldn't. But Megan the Stallion explained why she did. She waited a month because of what? Because she talked to them four days later, too. Right? Tell us. Wait, she waited a fucking month because during that entire timeline, people were, as you already said, literally blaming her for fucking being shot and, and putting, her, uh, putting the responsibility on her after she got fucking shot. That's crazy. Oh, she did I, not originally want to fucking snitch. Maybe because she's a rapper. Like you guys also uh, said, you know, there's a rapper code. She didn't want to snitch. She didn't want to fucking snitch on Tory Lanez. But well, after after people fucking constantly push you to the goddamn brink and you're literally the victim in that circumstance. Yeah, of course you're going to fucking come out and say like, yeah, what the fuck is this shit? I got shot by Tory Lanez and you motherfuckers are claiming that I'm the responsible party when my feet got bullet holes in them. Well, again, I'm answering your your statement of why wouldn't she possibly say, let, let's say it was Kelsey. Why wouldn't she come out and just say Kelsey? Well, yeah. she didn't, hold on a second. You jumped the gun too much. Hold on. I'm telling you, she didn't come out to say Tory either. The reason why she came out to say Tory is because she felt Tory was playing games with the media. So yeah. it only, oh, so it's, it's fair to assume that her calling his name was a direct result of what she felt he was doing. Not that she came to some type of, oh, I'm ready to speak. So now when you say, well, why wouldn't she name Kelsey? Kelsey isn't a star. Kelsey has no type of power and control over the media or the narrative. Again, why, if you waited that long, even if it was Kelsey, why say anything? Kelsey can't affect your career, can't affect the narrative, but who can? Tory Lanez. I hope you understood that part. That's great. You think she got clout off of fucking, if she's going to get clout, she could have fucking jumped the gun from the start. Brother, you listen. Then she would have just said what happened that night. Hassan, your listen skills are so crazy, brother. You don't listen. You don't listen. That's the problem. Hold on, my dude. You said one thing. I'm going to repeat what you said. You said, well, if, 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 if it was Kelsey that shot her, why would she just say Kelsey? So I reminded you. Well, she didn't say Tory till at least over a month later. Then I reminded you. Well, why she was she, shot. Hold on, she was hold on. shot. So she can't lie about being oh, shot because she was. Brother, hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. She named someone a month later. It's important. Why did she name someone at that juncture? She because named everyone that- kept fucking blaming her for being shot. No, and that is why oh, she admitted why, who was actually the this, person who's responsible. This is she why also, this is she why also why, literally why. explained why she did not name Tory Lanez originally. Oh, well, Her friend about, was the one who named Tory that night, though. We're talking about why did she name him a month later? This is why you got to listen more and read more, my brother. Oh my god! <laughs> so I can tell you because it's 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 clear. I'll make a bet with you. You won't make it because you're not that informed. You just keep saying the obvious, but you were shot. Brother, we know this. You're going to say that for the 15,000th time. We know, know But your inferences are incorrect. You're you're making like, you're stretching. You're Bro, you're stretching harder than the fucking gymnastics team. That's why it's ridiculous to me. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going back to your trying point. to ground you with like, I keep trying to ground you with like actual facts. Back your, case. Go back to your point. You said if she got shot by Kelsey, why wouldn't she just say it? I'm I'm bringing you step by step why she said Tory and when she did, she oh, did not say Tory. Because Tory Lanez is what, what is it? Give me the steps again. So you're not listening. She, bro, she, <laughs> I am, but it bro. makes no fucking sense. I have to hear it a million times. Oh, go on. God. If you do, I responded to it, I responded to it, and you said that's not what I meant. So go on. on. Please clarify. She believed that Tory and his influence was playing games and making her look a certain way. Keep in mind that would not be the same for Kelsey, right? That's why she was incentivized to name Tori when she did. She put that out makes no sense. And here's why. Okay, are you ready? Here's what? Why. She says lie one more time, and I was, I was just saying. Here's why that makes no sense because Tori Lanes is like playing games with her or whatever. She could just easily turn around and be like, "Kelsey shot me," because there's only two people involved in the process. If she had come out and said, "Kelsey shot me," Tori Lanes would no longer, by your own logic, play games with her. What is Tori going to say? Turn around and be like, "Actually, no, it was me who shot Megan." Fuck no. That would have ended the conversation because. 
if Kelsey had shot her, she would have just fucking said that. But yo, Tori yo, shot I'm her. Not. And that's why she said Tori Lane shot me. This is an insane thing. Yo, it's yo, such a major stretch yo, that it literally I, could not filter I, through my brain. Yo, I, I, son, but you are literally using like a mental block or you're doing mental gymnastics not to understand this. What? I, what? She just, hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. You initially said, I'm only going off what you said. Why wouldn't she name Kelsey? Well, actually, she wasn't trying to name anyone. She wasn't trying to name anyone, okay? Even if you go back to her Gail King interview, which you... Okay, but, okay, but, okay, but like, you understand. What was on, what was Tory Lanez on, lying about? Hold on, what was Tory Lanez lying about at the time? Wait, hold on. You won't even let me finish. Not only did she reference it in her Gail King interview, she referenced it even when she got on live. She said, I wouldn't have even said nothing. I was going to let it go, okay? So, again, when you said, why wouldn't she name Kelsey, it seems like she was never going to name Kelsey, even if it was Kelsey, okay? Let, what? No, that you can't make that. You literally just leaped into that. Okay. No, if Kelsey shot her, if Kelsey shot her, her, the most logical thing for her to say is Kelsey fucking shot me. Tory Lanez is just lying for some weird reason. I don't know why. And what is Tory Lanez gonna do in that situation? Be like, no, actually, Kelsey didn't shoot her. Megan shot herself, or no, actually, Kelsey didn't shoot her. I shot her. No, that would have fucking destroyed any argument that anyone could have ever had. The reason why she came out and said Tory Lanez shot me is because fucking Tory Lanez shot her. That's it. And this is a wild, these are wild leaps to make. I'm, I'm serious. Like these are wild leaps to make. Like it, it's, it's, I'm trying as best as I possibly can to try to like comprehend where you're coming from with this. But like, there's so much motivated reasoning playing a role in your assertions here that like, it's hard to, it's hard to like, you know, get in there. It's hard to like women get through your armor a little bit. I'm yeah, because you think women saying. can't lie. That's the problem. That's why you can't no, understand women, this. of course lie. Women lie okay. all the time. Everyone lies. Okay. Human beings are liars. Yes. This is a fucking bullshit straw man that everyone's like, oh, you're SJW. Women can't lie. Of course women can lie. What the fuck do you mean? Okay, and Megan's lied plenty of times, and I'm saying that the whole case was based on her testimony. You're saying, I believe her, but she's bro, lied several times. Bro, she got shot, though. You're like, okay, okay. that's okay. Okay. She doesn't know who shot her. Went and said, but she doesn't know who shot her. You know what I mean? She doesn't know who shot her, she doesn't know who shot her. She really doesn't. She claims it's Tori, true. but she doesn't she know. She does know who shot her. And every single counter that you brought up about, like, why she didn't name Kelsey is ridiculous. It falls flat on its fucking feet. She lied in her testimony several times. She did not admit that they got into a physical altercation, which, again, is very important to the story. Right? She did not admit why? that her why Kelsey is it important in the story. You think it was self-defense? You think, like, uh, Tori Lanez was, uh, shot her because, like, it was self-defense? Because if she doesn't admit that her and Kelsey got into a physical altercation right before the shots were fired, guess what it does? It paints Tori as the probable shooter. And she admitted oh that from her testimony. God. Well, you're still, making, admitted the, that from you're her still testimony. making the argument that, like, she somehow has reason to defend Kelsey, even though Kelsey fucking shot her, which is insane, okay? Bro. Yo, you must like, be that's insane. Bro. Yo, yo, if you someone shoots bro. you, if someone shoots you, okay? If someone shoots you, I in, a, in that situation, I probably fucking tell the cops, okay? I you call that. me a snitch. Sure. There are many instances where I am a victim of shit, and I don't Stop. fucking, uh, Stop. I do not Stop. collaborate Stop. with the police, Stop. okay? Stop. This is one of those instances where I'd be like, okay, well, I got shot by this motherfucker. Bro, Stop. I'm trying to tell you that Megan's not a credible witness. She was drunk, yeah, and, and she said that for a shot. credibility, right? Now, granted, okay, like, I know you're going to say the same dumb three things that we're, like, we're kind of agreeing with, but just listen to my train of thought. Just think you're a juror for one second. You're, you're trying to make shit make sense. I, I think there's a reason why both Kelsey and Meg both conveniently forgot when they may have fought each other, even though an eyewitness said they were fighting for several minutes. They both do not, they both misremember that exact part. Okay. Now, granted, I think in the um, defense side, that part is very important if you're trying to cast doubt, right? If it seems like a woman's just walking away and you shoot her, you seem very malicious, malicious and it just seems like there's, it's open and shut. But okay. if there was a fight, that was happening for minutes. That well, one this okay, I, that makes sense, but here's what doesn't make sense, okay? For this to work, Megan the Stallion would have to hate Tory Lanes more than the fucking person that she fought who shot her. Okay, so and that me, is insane. So let me ask a okay? point here. That's my point. Okay, so it, it's, I got you. I got, I got, I got you. I got you. You cannot connect those two dots. No, I, I, I got okay? you. Bro. Like you're literally saying like she hates men so much that she wanted to blame no. a man or something. So there's a video, right? After the incident happened, the police showed up. You can hear Kelsey saying clearly, Meg, are you okay? Meg, are you okay? So they were still uh, friends at that point. So they, they, you know, they fought, they were not like enemies. So what's the best option here? You know what? As girls, let's talk. You know what? Mm, Tori's the one that's being left out here. We're still friends. Let's put it on Tori. Pretty much, bro. That's it. They're friends still at that point. So it's like, bro, your argument, I get it, but they're still friends at that point. Okay. I mean, I, I got no, you, you owned me, man. I, I, I got nothing on that. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, you got I think, you got I think Tori you has a very it. strong case for an appeal here. Tori has a very strong no. case for an appeal, and uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay. But. Well, good luck. Good luck to him. Look, I don't want to see. I, 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 look, I'm not. I'm not too fond of the criminal justice system in general. I do think that he did it. I do think that he deserves to go to prison for you know at least a extended period of time. He definitely. I think he fucked up. If I'm going to be as charitable as possible, um, ultimately though, 
you know, Megan D. Stallion did get shot. This team fucked um, up, raising reasonable doubt. Just talk I mean, me. No, I don't think so. I think like in order for there to be a little bit more clarity, a little bit more clarity in that circumstance, it would literally have to be, it would literally have to just straight up fucking be video evidence. Like at that point, that's it. Okay. Um. By the way, I was being sarcastic. I don't know if that dude uh, recognized that or not, but um, <laughs> you know, but it's fine. Love well, you guys. Thank you so much for this. Okay. Um, hey, listen, listen. No matter, I, I do say I accept the verdict. I, I thought there was a decent, a pretty decent job done with our raising. You know, um, you know, <laughs> a, a reasonable doubt. Clearly not to the jury, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, let's all you can for your content. You got, you got your content now. Hope you're happy. And uh, your trolling was hilarious, by the way. So thank you for the trolling, oh, bro. Okay, listen, listen. I'm you're the one who asked to be on this call. Okay, like I mean, I'm fine with having a conversation with you, debating you or whatever you want. But like, it's not like I was like, oh, please bring the fresh and fit boys in here. I can't no. know. Especially uh, Hassan, like, which one is fresh and which one's fit. Uh, with Hassan, one, we, we we I've been talking with academics about this for the better part of a week. We've been covering this case, so nice try on that yeah, one. No, no, no. I know, I know. I just I really wanted the the fucking uh, content from you guys. I was like, please, DJ, please, DJ, uh, please bring him. No, that's not what happened. You wanted to come on, which is fine. You're, you're like, we were going to come on. Regardless, doing a good we, job. Didn't, we didn't care you. if you're on it. You feel like it was doing a good job. It's fine. It's cool. I'm, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. Like I'm gonna troll a little bit. Come on. No, yeah, no, I mean, you're when you're taking L's on uh, arguments. You take ad hominem attacks. You're supposed to be a master debater. You couldn't keep it factual. I'm you were not, emotional I'm the not whole a time. Debater. I suck at debates. I don't know where that came from. No, you really from. do. You're very emotional. I don't like debates. <laughs> you're very I'm emotional. not very good at debates. Everybody keeps saying that I am, but I'm not. I don't think you're very emotional. Unless it's like Andrew Tate. He's just very bad at debates. So you think Charlie Kirk got you enough? No, no, absolutely not. And your argument about Absolutely. women being better drivers was also comical as well. <laughs> oh, here we fought. Okay, look, you use look, insurance rates for your argument. argument at a different time, but sure. you know, I can't, I can't spend, I can't spend six hours uh, uh, talking you to you guys. All right, I got, I got some other stuff that I need to. Cover. Yes, bro. Yes, you oh, are you very busy. Sure, them, you got to be ducking it. Been duck- Facts. I, I wait. What did you say, Hawk? You, you kind of been, kind of been ducking. Uh, every time I mentioned mine, like you, 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 you were like, oh, ah. it's because uh, the reason why I do debates when I end up doing them, I guess is often because I think like someone has uh, really damaging ideas and they're a- able to spread those damaging ideas to like a very large audience, right? Um, and it, it's more so, it's not even like to stop the spread of said ideas, right? It's not like I'm calling for deplatforming or anything, yeah. but it's more so to just like address them adequately so people have a better understanding of like what the other side's perspective is, right? And so the reason why I will like debate someone like Andrew Tate is because like, I mean, he's all over the place. People will turn around and say, oh, that's clout sharking or whatever the fuck. And to them, I say, well, you know, that is what matters in this circumstance. I want to tamp, I want to, temper someone's influence and at least like show that there's a different perspective on a large enough platform. Okay. And now why is it that when me and Andrew, that, like, me and Andrew challenged you and Ethan Klein to, to debate. Like, address that. Wait, hold on, hold on. Me, me, did, me and Andrew, me and Andrew literally said we would debate you two, you and Ethan, gladfully on intersexual dynamics. And you guys ducked and said, no, we're not going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. And other thing too, Hassan, you want to use that this whole thing about, I need people to have a big statement. audience or whatever. I don't know why you're saying that. Are, are you serious? Um, but as you can tell, I'm perfectly willing and able to hold a conversation with you. Um, Dude, I don't know. I don't know what around. happened with uh, I don't know what happened with the Ethan thing, but I'm. I mean, I was. I was always very much uh, down to have a conversation. And keep in mind, also, you side, you're the one that talks about us first, bro. We never mentioned you not one time. It was you making a bunch of hit pieces on us, dude. Yeah. Well, so, oh, well, when I first started, I mean, I don't know if you're talking about like me and Ethan together, but like when I first saw you guys, you guys were popping. I would have definitely debated you back then. I'm saying now, not so much. So I was like, Yo, you know, this it's not. That's not we're more popping than you are, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're more popping than you are. This thinker, bro. Okay, we're, I mean, we're, that's great. I'm, I'm happy for you guys' success. I haven't seen it, but if I do, I will, you know, I'll, I'll That's because you you're on Twitch, we're on YouTube. We've been on YouTube two years, bro, and we're almost as many subscribers as you. What are you talking about? We're definitely popping. Dude. No, I mean, um, uh, congratulations to you guys. Uh, so, like I said, when when you guys have, like, nice a, like a big enough uh, influence, or again. Even, like a big enough audience, like Andrew Tate did at the time, <laughs> Then that's a cat because I told you, you know us I mean? and Andrew would debate y'all and you guys still ran. So what, what, what is this excuse, bro? <laughs> y'all still ran because when it comes to intersexual okay. dynamics, okay, my, my friend, I'm, I'm your ideology you the is flawed. Are. I don't want to debate you on like why I already told you I was not interested. You know what I mean? That's like kind of, yeah, you make hippies on us. We've never once talked shit about you until you started talking shit about us. You came at us first. Make so you want to start it? I'll finish it. Let's yeah, go. because you, go. because you had, you had a lot of fucking videos that were popping at the time. A lot of people were spreading it and going, oh my God, what is this fresh and fit guy is doing? It doesn't happen anymore. That's part of the reason. You know what I mean? Okay. That, so that's cloud literally cloud the main reason. Cloud matter cool. You're not really here to, uh, you know, argue topics or ideas. You're here to just, well, I just don't think it's cool. like damaging enough. Like I don't which, think you're doing you enough wanna, damage you talk to about, discourse that I'm like, there are plenty of people who are much better debaters than myself. I would say Dude, Destiny is I one of those showed people. the DMs. Like I'm sure you guys can it out all day every day, you know, do that. I showed the DMs between us and H3. Y'all ran, bro. Y'all ran. And Andrew was the most popping guy I'm not the time in the world. I don't know why you keep saying uh, us in H3. I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever gotten a DM from you. Okay. All right, man. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure oh my God. we've definitely communicated that we could have this discussion. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i here right now. We can no, talk about I, Like I said, I'm down. Whatever. Get your cloud up. 
if, if there's like enough, the clock. Uh, oh, enough you're not as popular Discord, as you think you are. I'm having a conversation with you guys directly. How about that? I, I can't compliment though. Bro, Come you on, are bro. not as popping as you think you are. You are delusional if you think so, bro. We've been on YouTube two I'm years. Not, I'm not You've been on here for I'm how not. long? If that's what you're saying. I don't think I'm a competent debater anyway. There's better debaters than me out there. You're not just a cloud farmer because I've seen you like, you know, talk about situations and ideas that are from very small creators. Well, I think, it, yeah, because it's not about cloud. It's about the damage being done. No, it's about fear. That's what general. it's about. It's about fear. You are scared right now because you understand that when it comes to intersexual dynamics, you are incompetent. Just like talking about this trial, you are incompetent. You don't know all the details, yet you're still speaking. The difference between me and you is I don't speak on something unless I know it. It's, That's the difference between me and you. Crazy. It's pretty crazy because you were, you were very confidently talking about the fifth amendment which you definitely did not understand <laughs> so I, I, it seems to me like you are talking about things you don't know anything about you also, cannot the assert talks the about women amendment. all the time i feel like i feel like he has no idea <laughs> like if i were to ask if i wanted to learn about how women are uh -huh. i think you guys are the last people i would go to to get advice <laughs> really really it's funny you need it the most <laughs> yes, <dude. laughs> yeah. uh, okay um that, anyway uh, look, sure. look there are bigger there are bigger and more successful misogynists that i'm willing to debate it's all the same shit anyway, but when you guys get the cloud- Your off, arguments like, are we'll, weak, bro. We'll, you literally said women are better drivers because they have cheaper insurance rates to Andrew, which is a ridiculous oh, argument. Uh, <laughs> ridiculous. Right, look, look, we'll, do this, we'll do this at a later date. All right, man, guys, just take the Allen run. Said, just take the Allen run, bro. I have, I we are more relevant long, than you are. We are way more relevant than you are. things I got to talk about. I gave you guys like six hours, man. All right, dude, it's fine. You can run, but we are way more relevant than you are. And you talked about us first. I believe you. And you talked about us first. We never talked about you. All right, you started it. I'll be happy to finish it. So, it is what are you doing? You're like a grown ass man. You're about to cry on this fucking phone. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. At all. I'm not yeah, crying at all. Jesus Christ! I'm keeping it factual. Holy I'm shit! Did you like lock up Muslim people and shit back in the day? You should be a little bit more ruthless than this. Yeah, you're. God, I'm keeping it factual. You're the one that's Holy emotional. Fuck. I'm keeping it factual, bro. Very emotional, bro. Yeah, yeah, you are not. keeping it factual. <laughs> He's holding look. back tears over here because I don't want to fucking talk to you guys any longer. Then the fucking get on the stream. Then get on the stream, dude. Then get on the stream. You don't know about the Fifth Amendment. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not. This is out of your wheelhouse. I literally explained the Fifth Amendment. You cannot assert the Fifth Amendment unless you reasonably believe that you will be prosecuted for said crime. Kelsey does not it, it, get the same it's not, it's not. Fifth Amendment girl privilege me hard. The conversation would have been over. I'm a, I guess I am sexist for giving you this much time. Asana, you did do the same thing to Tate. You kind of bulldozed the conversation. Hey, listen, let it happen. Oh, dude. Yeah, don't even get me started about Tate. Kind of, Motherfucker's like lying, saying I'm like running from him and shit. He was like, oh, I won that debate. And he won't debate me again. It's like, that's not true. I will fucking gladly debate him oh, again. Oh, he was over tall people. Not the what are you talking about? But most, most of the part. And it's funny because, dude, you run from us many times. You and What is this guy saying? Oh, my Literally, God, bro. Hey, hold on. You would debate Andrew Tate again? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'd do it. Stop the cap. Bro, yeah. <laughs> on one end, you say you're not a cloud chaser, guys, but you are a cloud fucking, chaser. Why, why would I run away from this dude? He literally, like... He had to get out of the conversation. He's like, these people are not intimidating, okay? Well, they're not. Andrew, their ideas are not great. And their, their rhetoric is not great either. How are we misogynists, Hassan? Please tell me that. How are we misogynists? Guys, tell me how we're misogynists. Boys, 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 boys. I have to pee, okay? This is this is very real. Right, okay? pee. I've, I've held it in for far right. too long. Go sit down go and pee like you normally do. Go sit down and pee like you normally do. I don't have the peanut gallery like the Fed and the other dude had. Go sit down and pee, Go sit down and pee, man. I don't know why you're still here, then. Go sit down and pee. Put a blanket down, too, buddy. Like, I find you amazing. Adult, come I on, find it amazing like, how you've been talking shit. Uh -huh, you you've been talking like, shit. Bro, I got for long over hair, a so year. Like, Girls, is that what you're gonna say? Dude, you, no, I'm not gonna say that. I'm just saying, you've been talking shit come for on. over a year. I'm here, come right here, on. right now. Bro, 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 and you're bro, running. Bro, 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 Go bro. sit down and pee, bro. Go, go sit down and pee. Dude, that it. <laughs> <laughs> or we can have a discussion either or but you've been talking shit for a year i'm here now i'm here now you've you been talking shit for a year bro. you gotta you have to you have to have you've like, been talking shit for a year thing. you I'm talk not, for a living you talk on a podcast for a living i really i, I feel bad it's great. i feel like it's i'm getting like secondhand embarrassment from a person yeah. who talks for a living mm -hmm. only only being able to retaliate with like literal 12 year old insults like you're like a playground bully. Like, oh, you sit down and pee. Come on. You can be a little bit more creative. Not your co-host. I mean, he's gone. I don't think he's got anything in him. But you at least could be a little bit more creative. You know what I mean? My point is this, dude. You've been talking shit about us for over a year. I'm here right here right now. You made a nonsensical argument with Andrew as far as insurance rates are what make women, uh, female drivers better, which is a ridiculous argument to make in the first place. It doesn't make sense. You call us massages, et cetera. I'm here. We can have this discussion. But you want to say, I got to go pee. Then fine. Go sit down and pee. Go leave the stream. And it's fine. It's no big deal. Okay. Us and I can talk about the All case. Right. But you've been wrong on a multitude well, of things listen, on this listen, discussion. Listen, listen, we'll 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 bring this back up in a later date when That's I'm fine, like man. running out of content or something. Because cool, it is entertaining. Cool. No you guys problem. are very entertaining. That's cool, man. But again, okay. like I said before, you it's make a bunch of arguments. You still want to talk to me? It is it is very I don't know nice. Why you're still I, here. I know you might you get separated, but I really gotta go. You okay? been safe for a million times. Thank you, these academics. Thank you so much. Go go it is kind of fair that if, if you call them massage, that's like a heavy like fucking. Bro, stop. I know what you're doing. I I know what you're doing. Stop trying to pull me back in. Stand on what you said. 
If you're gonna talk shit, like I said before, we're here now. You started it. I will be glad to finish it. But you want to run and piss? Go ahead, man. He can't do it. It's fine. He can't do it. It's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead and piss. But again, yes, unlike I'm, you, I'm, I talk I'm about ter- topics I know. Right. When I'm, it comes I'm to court, terrified. trials, criminal saw, investigations, like this, girls. Go out like this, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. I, I got to go. Thank you, guys. We'll, do, right. this, we'll do this at a later time. You're running. I, you know what? It doesn't matter. It <laughs> doesn't matter. I will, I will have a conversation with you guys again. Okay, I promise. And that's I've fine, said man. it on. Look, clip it. Clip it. Okay? I've said it in front of You're thousands running. of people. Okay? Will you it can hold it against me if I don't talk to you again. Okay? I promise. All this time that you were saying that you're going to leave and you're going to pee, we could have had a discussion already. eventually be a moment. Where I you don't, don't have enough fucking content and it's like kind of boring you're and slow. Now. And you're I will talk to you you could have left. You, 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 you could have had a discussion by now. Peter Pass, big boy. You keep you keep talking about <laughs> oh I got to pee, but you're still here, bro. You can leave. You're, you're more than welcome uh, to leave at any time. I clipped it. Okay, in good faith. I'm just letting you know stop, stop, stop. that uh, you know I will have this conversation. Again. I ain't gonna laugh, Bye, guys. Sure. I won't let him talk to me like that, bro. I'm gonna just be honest. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, I might not. I might not have Mr. 35 year old hairline yet, but I, I am an adult. So. Nice try. Go back though. Nice try. I'm just saying. You know, we can't take this type of conversation, bro. I'm just saying, bro. You run it. You run it. Turn into Goku instant transmission, which is fine. It's fine. Bro. But if I talk shit about someone for a year and then they're like, "Hey, let's have that discussion," you sound crazy. That's all it is. I, mean, I definitely like Hassan's content. You know, even though sometimes he's talking shit about me too. But like, you know, I, I kind of wear in good faith. Um, I definitely think he is kind of ducking you guys, and, 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 no, and I don't know why because. I think the whole thing about clout is BS because I'm telling you, I've watched his content a bunch of times and I've seen him really get into it, kind of debate ideas and ideology that a lot of people would definitely less a clout have. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you're picking and choosing now. You know what I mean? Yeah, the thing, okay. here's the thing. If he wants to use a clout route, again, I, I literally have the DMs I showed them. We I told them, yo. It's kind of weird because they Myron was calm. Hassan kept making personal attacks. And I think the first personal attack Myron made was the sit down and pee at the ending. Like, I don't know how anyone can watch this and think that Myron was, like, the playground bully or whatever. I don't know how. A wheel debate H3 in person in California. Me and Andrew will go. And this one, Andrew was the most Googled man on earth. I was on the phone talking with Andrew on WhatsApp while we were having that discussion, and they ran. I showed the DMs to H3. So Hassan could sit here and say all these things, blah, blah, blah. But then when confronted, he does. he's out of his element. He knows it's going to be an L, so it's fine. And also, here's a big difference, right? He Googles stuff from the Internet. He doesn't have experience. We have experience in the field. He does not. So him debating us will be kind of slow because he doesn't understand what we go through. And, and he made a ridiculous argument saying that Kelsey's the fact that Kelsey took the Fifth Amendment can't be used by the jury. And th- that is ridiculous. I literally just got off texting my lawyer friend. It absolutely can be used by the jury to disqualify her as a witness because she took the Fifth, which contradicted the prior statement she gave to the police in September. But Hassan saying that, no, she gets that Fifth Amendment. There's this law of Hassan where whatever he says, the opposite happens in the universe. Like he said, they're never going to invade. Russia will never invade Ukraine. He said a lot, you know, like, this is how I go about my life, is I watch a song and I do the opposite, and uh, it's worked out great so far, you know. There's been so many times where people are like, Zerka, you predicted another thing, and I'm like, I ain't predicting shit, bro, I'm fucking steering the opposite direction of that fucking retard, <laughs> I'm not even using this, I don't know what the fuck this is anymore, I don't use my brain, I just go to the opposite of his privilege and they can't judge her they absolutely can the only person that gets that protection is toy Lance because he is the actual accused that's on trial not kelsey kelsey was a prosecutorial witness but of course again as usual hassan talks out of his ass and doesn't necessarily talk with facts but um yeah man i mean as far as like this reaction to this trial now that this guy's gone uh yeah bro it, it's um i think tory definitely needs to file an appeal i think he would have good grounds for one um i think there was a strong amount of reasonable doubt in this investigation and i'm shocked that they actually were able to convict him so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how how quickly the appeals process is going to work for him. Mm. Clearly, he's supposed to be um he's going to be sentenced in January, I believe January 27th. Um, he's going to be incarcerated till then. Um, I know in a lot of cases, but I'm not sure if, if, if yeah, this one's not really like the Amber Heard one. Would you guys say Andrew Tate and who did you want? Um, woman. It was some woman's podcast. What up, guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel. This woman is like, uh, like the biggest pick me, right? No, I yeah. want to know. I want to learn from you, sir. You want to learn from me? Well, yes, I wanna, sir. well, I wanted to answer. I feel like it goes for. These are like all the. Th- these are like the the anti fem Yeah, you know, I might be the only red pill guy that doesn't enjoy red pill content. You know, I like laughing at the blue side more. I like watching blue and being like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I'm in his women's squad with Andrew Tate, right? Both. It's. Not- they talk for three hours. God, dude. I, I don't know what this is. Should we should we look at this a little bit? Uh, Any money? Find a nine to five. Work regular. Save your money. Learn to cook. Oh my God! There's British women in this too. I really don't want to listen to this. There's British people in this. No shot. 
period of time without devaluing herself because she's people she shouldn't be. Also, what happened to Brittany Renner? Like, she's now alpha dog, brain pilled, red pilled. Is that what she, was happening with her? There was a time and place where we were supposed to have her on the broadcast, like where she ripped into the fresh and fit fools. And now, and now she's over here. I don't know, but she's a baddie. I mean, yes, we all know that. that it's a woman. They just go with trends, right? Oh, MAGA's back. I guess I'll go a little MAGA this year. It's just like ride waves. They're like, how, whose side am I on? I don't know. It's like universal truth. I want to like, no I basically want to like catch like a good one in here. You know what I mean? Like the women don't need men. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So are any of these women like actually feminists or what? Andrew Tate destroys feminists. So she's the feminist. Is that what it is? Obviously, back then for survival, women needed a man. Otherwise, when they were pregnant, they could die and all of these things, they would perish. In today's society, given evolution, given the fact that as women, we can you go still and get. Need men. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying that. Isn't there a glitch between what is actually happening and the nature of what we have in our bodies? I think that's probably the conflict that we're having right now. Glitch in what way? In the sense that women don't feel like they need men in the most physical sense, we, perhaps yeah, like right. naturally. It's, it's very interesting. Women don't feel like they need men in a physical sense because life is soft. But it's, mm. but it's, but it's, and it's because you still need men by proxy, one, and two. Dude, that's so funny. These takes are awesome. It's like, it's because society is soft now. It's like, first of all, you have the tightest jeans I've ever seen on, okay? I don't want to hear from you wearing literally the tightest athleisure looking fake khaki, not really khaki, actually sweatpants jeans, okay? This is the sluttiest thing you could wear while still not actually looking good, okay? And they're capris too. So shut the up. That's number one. Number two, yeah, 4% spandex Andy. Number two, the idea that, like, society is soft now and, like, we got to go back to hard body society. Very weird. The f*** do you mean? It's like, oh, man, I hate the I hate the technological improvements that I take advantage of on a daily basis because it's made women not reliant on uh, men. But get better, dude. Find a way to be, uh, find a way to be better in this modern day and age, okay? How about that? Instead of complaining that society has made it so that, like, uh, you know, you can't uh, defend females from uh, the, the apex predators when they walk out of the cave. I love the cute little orange slices that he's been munching on. Those are mandarins, my friend. Even I know that. Two, the second life gets difficult. You very quickly you very quickly learn how much you need men. But women will go, I'm independent. I don't need no man because I have an OnlyFans and men bay my OnlyFans. And if anyone comes up to me, I'll call a male police officer. I don't need men. Shut up. Shit. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. You just named your whole life is based on men. The road you're driving on was paved by a man. The house you're living in was built by a man. The car you're driving was, was designed. This is so odd. It's like, it's like taking the hyper individualist take under capitalism and and turning it into men versus women. Like I've heard this so many times, right? Like I've heard it so many times. It's true. Like these roads were paved by people, the workers in general. But like he takes that and flips it on its head and says, like, you know, it's it's men that made all of this. And it's like, okay, well, women played a role in all of that societal development, you know? I don't know if you know this, but like you you didn't get birthed from a cock. Someone didn't just a man didn't just shit you out. Designed by a man. Your whole life depends on men. And the second anything bad were to happen to you, the second you were physically threatened, or times were to get hard, or war were to start, or famine, or riots, the first thing... Like, all bad things. Again. All, just... It's like, oh, if all these bad things were to happen, you'd be eating men real hard. It's like, yeah, but, like, we should probably avoid that. You know what I mean? Those are bad things. This is the liberal elementary teacher that is faced with the problem of evil, and then she goes... Like someone, let's say I'm the parent and I go to the teacher, what are you doing about bullying in this school? Right? Because you can't, you know, evil exists in the world. People are bullies. And she goes, well, it'd be better if it just bullying didn't exist. What? I'm teaching kids to not exist with bullying. Like we're, we're teaching them to like, we're not going to teach people to stand up for themselves. We're going to teach them, hey, everyone can be pure. Right? It's just like, and it's linked to the gun argument. It's linked to every single argument where it's like, this take is my most hated take. Or it's like, hey, what do we do about war, man? We got to teach people to defend themselves and use guns. And, you know, we got to protect our homes. Yeah, but it would be better if people just didn't kill each other, John. Okay. <laughs> but I'm coming to you with the problem of evil. As in, we're assuming it exists. <laughs> how can you? How can you do the whole? I'm gonna change the fucking OS of reality. You can't fucking do that. <laughs> what the hell is the point of that? Like, why do they do that? Why do libs think this is a smart take? Why is it that like men are only useful in in moments where there's like really awful shit happening? You're not making a good ass argument for men right now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, only men can protect you from other men doing awful things that men regularly do.
But those are good things now because, you know, men are doing it. And men are infallible. What you do is find a big, strong man, shit yourself, and throw the feminism out the window. Mm. Feminism goes out the fucking window the second that the snow needs shoveling or there's a broken down car or the tire needs changing. And all that crap vanishes. It's garbage. And this is the actual very interesting thing. I'll make a point here, which is going to get me canceled again. But, I don't give <laughs> but, but this is the point. Feminism in and of itself can't. Yeah, bro. Chirping this much? Not very manly. I'm just going to say it. Chirping this much while wearing the tightest capri jeans I've ever seen in my entire life, dude. Sorry. It's cool, though. It's yet another example of, like, people, people often very dumb people, will override the aesthetics when they are hyper-focusing on the words that are coming out of his mouth. He's, like, already, he's already basically presented himself as, like, the alpha dog. So people don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Common shaming and bullying for his looks. Bro, come on. He's, like, the biggest bully. We, we, need, to, we need to have fun with this a little bit. You can't be like, I'm an alpha dog, dude. I love Andrew Tate. And then cry in a corner because I made fun of his, like, incredibly tight pants. I mean, these are guys who are literally like, Hassan, you are the biggest homosexual man on the planet. You wore a dress one time. You paint your fingernails. You're literally gayer than a dude that is currently sucking multiple p Like, I can't, I can't give that bag a little bit. Also, I don't even give a shit about what you wear. I wear tight pants, too. Like I said, my point is more so about people being like, oh, well, when Andrew Tate does it, it's actually manly. Okay, but when someone else does it, it's not manly, it's, it's gay. His homies were telling you to sit down to pee the other day. Yeah, exactly. Can't be defended. Any idea, the point of an idea is that it can be defended by the people who believe in it. This has been the whole point of war since the dawn of time. It doesn't matter if it was the Christians against the Hindus. It doesn't matter if it was the Germans against the French. There were people who had ideas and ideologies, and they were prepared to fight each other to defend their ideology. Feminism is an ideology which cannot be defended by feminists. Wait, that's so funny. It's like, you're giving, like, the worst examples. Like, these are all, we are now, we have overcome that. Like, we're, we're in 2022. No one is thinking that, like, all those prior wars were actually really good. Why are you making... Why are you making the worst argument for men? Like, you could have just gone with, like, men uh, have worked really hard to build civilization, you know what I mean? Build the roads and stuff. That was fine. But now you're like, men are constantly shit up. They're constantly fighting against one another. It's like the reverse. You know, I don't even like Andrew Tate. I don't like anyone because no one will say it how it is, all right? And it really bothers me. Here's, here's what the re real red pill is. Men did everything, period everything men throughout history have done everything not 99 percent, 100 percent, everything there's nothing left to argue about there's no well but she wants it no nothing men did everything that's it it's not this whole oh i mean like you need a woman to uh be emotionally charged so you can build a bridge no you'll do it even without a fucking woman okay there's no gray area to any of this this is just stupid First side of like the feminist radlib, uh, radlibs where they're like, if a woman was president, there would be no war. It's like, no, there still would be war. The only people who can defend feminism are the men who subscribe to the garbage. If, you, if all the feminists were to get in a, in, a, in a line and say, we want feminism, and the conservative men were to get in a line, you would learn very quickly it's bullshit. I had a friend in Afghanistan. I mean, this is literally, this, this is literally might is right over and over again. Might is right, might is right. Meanwhile, Hassan will always duck you in a debate. Well, I have debated him on the Raj show, and I won the vote, and I kicked him off the show, and... He had a mental breakdown, and uh, it was funny. And, and the debate was about censorship, which now, in hindsight, I wasn't just right. I'm mega right. You're not, like, you're not a caveman, dog. Like, it's so stupid. Let's hear the buddy of mine in Afghanistan. Then when Taliban kicked America out, and he told me the Americans were, tell were telling the girls they could go to school. So they built all these girls' schools, and they split the Afghanistani defense forces there, and they get funded the Afghanistani defense forces to... to, to to protect these schools. You had American satellites, you had night vision goggles. <laughs> my twin brother is so funny, he ruined, before Christmas dinner started, my older brother, he's military, with my dad, ex-military, all that, they're watching a USA versus Afghanistan, one of those Western propaganda type, Zero Dark Thirty type movies, right? They love those movies together. And my twin brother is just making a sandwich, and I'm just chilling like this, and I'm not watching the movie, I'm on the other side of the house. And as they're watching the movie, my twin brother says, uh, they're, they're getting ready to go fucking to Afghanistan and fuck shit up, the Americans. And my, my older brother and my dad, who are like very patriotic, they're like, oh, they're getting into the movie. And they're very quiet. They're just watching. And then my twin brother goes, as he's buttering his toast, he goes like this. I know how that movie ends. The Afghanistan wins. Afghanistan wins. And it turned into the biggest fucking argument i've ever seen my family have in years like it was the funniest shit he's ever said but my dad turns around 
And then my older brother pauses the movie and says, enough, you fucking make everything political, you're a fucking bitch, you fucking, we're trying to watch a movie. And I've never seen my family pop off like that over one comment. And my twin brother knows he's just like made an innocent joke, but since he feels attacked, he just doubles down and goes crazy. And then I freak out and I start defending my twin brother. I'm like, you fucking liberal fucking pussies. You guys are nothing. You guys don't believe in freedom of speech in this house. He's not even at work. He gets to make that fucking joke. You're cowards. And my dad's freaking out. And my mom's just like, what the? Because we haven't done this in years. But really, it's the anxiety of our family coming over to eat with us. You know that anxiety Albanians have? Like, oh my God, peop- immigrants get this. Like, where people are coming over and your mom starts freaking out and she starts like opening the fucking trash can, trash bag like this and making all this sound and vacuum clean, vacuuming next to your ear as you're napping, right? And then telling you, hey, you got to wear better clothes. You got to look. You know, it was one of those things. It, was, it wasn't like over the comment. But uh, that's the most angry I ever got. And uh, then my twin brother, who's so mature, he's like, all right, shake truce. And he did shake, shake, he tried to shake my dad's hand and my older brother's hand, as in truce. And I smacked my twin brother's hand away. I'm like, they're fucking cowards. And my dad's like, and Trim's like, and they're just like shook. And I'm like, don't fucking shake their hand. These are two cowards. Because they know how political I am. And yeah, my dad and my older brother's like, okay, you know, John's here. We got to chill out because, you know, John does this for a living. He'll never stop talking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then we had fun. And then, uh, and then we had a lot of fun. Like we became friends again. It was a weird Christmas, dude. That was after Pinocchio. (laughs) Taliban were afraid to attack. America leaves. Now you have Afghani defense forces. They're basically blind. They don't have satellites anymore. Don't don't have a night vision, whatever. So now it's a real. There ain't no way this. He's about to say that the, what the Taliban is doing is wrong. Nothing's more awkward than swearing in front of my nephew because my older brother will be like, bro, you're swearing in front of my son. And I'll be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, always mess it up every time. It's like he thinks I'm doing it like on purpose right now. When they're just doing more of the things that he's advocating for. There ain't no way he's about to just say that the Taliban is wrong for not letting women go to school when he simultaneously is like basically advocating for that. Hold up. <laughs> the man is standing next to this girl's school. The Taliban are coming. You're some dude. You're standing there. And you're looking at this girl's school going, I don't really give a fuck if girls go to school. Bounce. And you just and you didn't fight. So that's why they all gave up and Taliban took over so quickly. And when I said this, the girl's like, yeah, they could have fought for us, feminism. Why don't the women fight? Can I ask- oh, wait, the women can't defend their own idea. You need men to defend feminism. So that's why the whole thing is stupid. <laughs> so- wait, I don't get it. Why does he, why does he even want? I guess he didn't really... To be fair, he didn't really give a take on whether or not it's good or bad that the women can no longer go to school. So I think maybe we can infer that he thinks it is a good thing that the Taliban are not allowing little girls to go to school no more. Second men don't defend it. It it just fails as an ideology. It's garbage. May I tell you something now? So this is the thing. This is when we assume that women perhaps don't have the physical or even mental ability to go to a war. Wait, wait, wait. Because this is the thing. For example, in Ukraine, a lot of women took up arms. And in fact, I'm Angolan. Wait, wait. I'm Angolan. No, they didn't, bro. Wait, wait, I'm Angolan. Don't lie. Listen, the people at home. wait, don't worry. I'll talk about yeah, my personal you story. Go to war? You no, fight wait, let line? me tell you. Let me tell you something. This is the thing. Bro, if I was a Ukrainian soldier, I would rather have Russians in my squad than Ukrainian women. <laughs> I, I'm not even joking, dude. Like, I'm half joking, but. Thing. I think it's also really like silly to assume that, for example, a woman, because she didn't go to school, she'll not be as intelligent. That's why Andrew Tate is an anti communist, because you saw all those female snipers from the USSR and was like, they were killing the, the, the Nazis. All these women would get rifles and they'd be sharpshoot. You know what's the worst joke I ever made? I got this family friend, oh, I guess family, who would call me a Nazi because I'm a Trump supporter, right? And he called me a Nazi for so long that I eventually just played up to the meme, you know, offline behavior. And uh, the funniest is when, uh, this is like in the summertime, when he asked my opinion in, on the uh, on the war, Ukraine and <laughs> Russia. <laughs> and I said, man, I'm really not with Ukraine, but it turns out they're the Nazis. <laughs> I let go of the Wagner group. I'm done with that. And this guy actually thinks I'm a Nazi because I keep joking like that. And now, you know, my mom said, you have to stop now. <laughs> Oh my god. Because at first I'm like Wagner versus Azov Battalion. 
you know, which is the Nazi team, bro? There's fucking two Nazi groups. Like, we're the real Nazis. No, we're the real. Right? And then Kanye comes out of nowhere. He goes, actually. Shooters, and they'd be killing the Nazis. And I don't like that. Like, there are plenty of instances where women have also uh, played a fundamental role in both, like, supportive roles, but also, like, in the, in the, uh, uh. Yeah, Hassan is just, I can't, dude, I try and, because I grew up with him on Twitch, I try and be kind, but he does things to actually make me hate him. He just does too much, man. He's pushing bug agenda now. Dude, after that COVID shit, aren't you embarrassed to be spoon-fed news? That's scary, dude. You know, in the front lines as well. I mean, look at the the uh, the, the Kurdish uh, militias all around the Middle East. Like, there, you know, there's there's plenty of instances where women are also taking up arms and shit. Original women were added to the U.S. Army as a joke, but they were more courageous than the men when they hold their own. Obviously, yeah. No one told me about the night witches that had Germany shooting bricks in their bombing sprees. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the North Vietnamese uh, uh, army, there were women that were working. Women have always participated. Bro, their side has to share their women and eat bugs. It's like a no-brainer politically. It's never... I don't even get how people... Um, oh, on the fence. Um, you know, I like Elon, but... How... I don't even get it anymore. Like, how does he have so many followers? In, ...in war. I don't... It's not like it's a, it's a good thing. War is not a good thing in general, but, like, there are certainly a shitload of examples of women, you know, in the front lines. ...intelligent as a man. Therefore, naturally, a woman is not intelligent. No, it doesn't make sense. If we're now starting to normalize equality and we want to put everybody in the forefront, give a woman a Who's gun. Who's normalizing equality? Well, that's what, what people are wanting. Then that, that's people the case. Like who? Let me tell you, Who wants to normalize Let equality? People like who? Feminists? Who no, wants to... I want... Well, actually, no equality. I want respect. That's really... No, like what's stopping you from getting respect? Exactly. No, no, I get respect. I, I get respect. respect. I get respect. So, that's what I want. That's what I like. What I think is... You don't know what you want. I'll tell you what I want. You want equality? As a woman, I carry myself respect. differently. I actually hold the things I have done. The f dude, the funniest shit is one of my family members who was a part of the Kosovo Liberation Army. He's telling me why a woman in the military isn't the worst thing in the world. He's like, well, there's one who had very delicate hands for disarming, a, you know, an explode, an IED, whatever the fuck, right? In explosive device. And he's like, and they're good at that. And I still remember, he didn't get mad when I said this, but I said, I'd rather eat the bomb. And my dad flipped shit, you know, because, like, my dad found it, like, a joke in bad taste. He's just like, who the fuck do you think you are? And I'm like, dude, there's so many examples where I'm, like, ruin ruining family relations relations for a joke, you know? and the fights that I fought, I hold it. That's why when you speak to me, I don't move different. I move different to many of the girls. That's why when you talk to me and you argue with me, I, I don't, don't take it. You. you do sometimes. I tell you. And I'll I tell don't you argue. something. A lot of women may have the accolades to be somebody, but they're uncomfortable to own that. And the reason why, then I would like to ask you, for example, um, I do need a, woman, a man, for example, to, you know... Per Wait, she's not... I thought she was maybe like... She doesn't seem weird. She seems kind of normal. Is what, Are one of these ladies like a feminist? Is she a feminist? Or I guess what is portrayed as a feminist here? Even though she is kind of like saying that, you know, I deserve... Uh, I mean, I, I earn my respect or something, which is like you know you should just still but she's like as a woman i i earn the praise for my behavior but it's like still kind of weird no you like everyone should get that you know, like men get it they don't have to f for it let's be real if we're gonna if we're gonna think about it from the same like dynamic between like men and women and get a level of respect across the board or a, a level of amenities across the board for being men that women have to like earn Agreed. no men do not get respect for being men men get respect for being men because being a man means you suffer more you suffer from multiple angles and the magnitude of your suffering is more severe meaning like if a woman goes through a traumatic event and a man goes through a traumatic event there is no cushion like i've said this three years ago you could be a poor woman you could be a poor average woman and that comes with free lobster and yacht parties but being a poor man means you leave earth with zero notifications no friends no nothing really you know it's it's like a no-brainer we respect men because of the angles of their suffering right they have multiple angles of suffering at the same time and no cushions there's no cushions to it
But I don't know if we respect men for just being men. I hate simps more than women. <gasps> But other than that, I'm quite strong, and I would find things. I would find a way to present myself differently. It, with that mentality, Denada, what would be Denada, the man that'll be for me then? Denada, Denada, what would you do if one of these security guards broke into your door? What would I do? <laughs> okay, you, I'll tell what you. What would you do? What would one, you do? No, seriously, there's she's, no guns she's, here. She's a I'll tell you. No, I'm not. This is so weird. It's like man has supposedly, I think, evolved away or tries to evolve away from the might is right type violence, right? In this day and age, especially when we have weapons, it's kind of like. Britney Renner is just not attractive. I'm sorry, dude. Like, if you showed me her, I'd be like, yeah, she's an attractive girl. But if you said to me, yeah, she has like 20 million followers, I'd be like, why? You know what I mean by that? It's like, if you showed me her at a bus stop, I'd be like, yeah, she's really cute. But if you told me she has 20 million followers, I'd be like, what? What do you mean? Why? Or whatever, 1 million, whatever she got. Instagram followers. Like a, like a stupid point. On this planet, if your only argument is like, very, I'm a man, and I will protect you from like other men that want to like kill you or whatever, you kind of got nothing. It's, it's dumb. It's dumb as feminist. I'm, saying I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a feminist. I'm, I'm a bit smarter. Okay, Either okay. I play These dead, one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they see you're not dead. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> no, I'd be breathing. like this. And then if not, maybe I would kind of like be very gentle and comply to find a way to get out okay, of it. So if they want to come and kill me, there's not much that many people but can do. But let's make do. an important point. You're talking about equality equaling respect. The way you get respect is- Okay, what if the guy has a gun? Like, this is so- These hypotheticals are so dumb. You know what I mean? Like, this hypothetical is not how you operate your life. Like, you can't operate your life on that. Oh, in a self-defense style situation, you need a man there. It's like, okay, well, what if the woman is Ronda Rousey, okay? What if the woman is like uh, that side- If the woman is Ronda Rousey, she will still get her face broken by a fully grown man. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. That's just reality. Like, any hockey bro, any- most guys at the bar, I'd say 80% of- chads at the bar would kill ronda rousey if they broke into her house and she tried to arm bar them remember she tries to arm bar people who are women she's not going to arm bar no matter how good her technique is she's not going to compete with a man's level of strength like a fully grown aggressive male's strength level at all iborg woman who everybody uh, was was uh, talking about, like how she was cheating or some shit. Like, oh yeah, cyborg had to be injected by a shit ton of testosterone to replicate being a man. Here's a hypothetical situation that I'm using to draw your attention away from an overarching argument. Here's a hypothetical. In my hypothetical situation, I win. Okay, well, what about what? Are, what are you supposed to do? Craft a counter hypothetical where you a 16 year old boy can beat up any woman, any full grown woman on the street. There's, there's like nowhere you can argue here. You can grab any 16-year-old football-playing athlete and they can just beat up any full-grown woman. Do you win? As a woman is by being feminine. There's nothing... Uh, we can be equal and very, very different. I'm not saying that there's not equality, but you've confused equality with the same. You can be equal equity. with completely different things. You can have a bishop and a knight on a chessboard. They're equal in terms of points, but they do different things, right? Mm -hmm. A woman can have equal respect to a man if she's very good at being a woman, and a man gets respect for being very good at being a man. When a woman decides she wants to act like a man, or a man wants to act like a woman, that's where all gets f***ed up. We try to pretend yes. it's the same. It's not the same. Men and women are good at different things. We have different strengths, different weaknesses. There's nothing wrong with accepting that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm a woman, I'm good at X, he's a man, he's good at Y. Then we work together as a team, we have a beautiful family, we're happy forever. It's only confused where you have women who sit and go, yeah, I don't think he's seeing that. I don't think that's happening for him. Yeah, the question the person has is beyond stupid. Anyone in this situation is either going to act on it or not act on it. Gender is irrelevant. Exactly. That's why I said entirely dependent. It is entirely dependent on the circumstances. How is he wrong? Please explain. Dude, your name is Kant Osman, okay? You said commentate W. If you're the type of- That guy's always in my chat. What the hell? It's Kantos. Dude that spams commentate W in a chat. I'm pretty sure in a self-defense style situation, you're, you're going to get asked, okay? Depending on what the guy wants to do with you, you are that person's pet now. Okay, this is not a man or woman thing. It's just what is within the bounds of reason, okay? What do you have? Can you actually defend yourself? This has nothing to do with being a woman. That's why I gave you the hypothetical where it's like, okay, well, what if it's fucking Ronda Rousey? The idea that, like, all girls are weak and dumb and all men are strong and powerful is stupid.
it, there, there is truth to this, right? Like, that's why, uh, you know, women are more likely to be assaulted by a man. And, and therefore, like, that kind of, you know, the whole parking lot situation that we've talked about before, where it's like a literally threatening scenario. Making inferences off of that is really stupid. Like, larger gender role inferences. Assuming that every woman, regardless of their, assuming that every woman, regardless of their skill set, is going to be bad at a particular task, and every man, regardless of their skill set, is going to be good at a particular task, is stupid. That's it. That's my point. But it's also at the heart of, like, conservative thinking. Don't think about things in a nuanced way and try to go into, you know, previously thought out, well-defined. There's nothing nuanced about saying 99% of women are not Ronda Rousey, and if they were, they'd still get beaten up by some fat, beer-drinking, Homer Simpson-type dude. The problem with the right wing is they love to say, well, not all women are Ronda Rousey, when really they should say, even if they are, they're losing. That's the truth. The red pill is much more red than you think. It's just these fucking conservatives water it down to try and like, I don't know what it is to like farm more followers. I don't know why they always have to water it down. Men are just better. Find narrow boxes and think about the world through that lens. It'll make it easier for you. That's literally what he's trying to do. This is what he always does. And a lot of people fall for it. Oh, no, because in the name of equality, we can fight and war. There's no women on the front line in Ukraine. That is psyop bullshit. They put some chick there dancing around doing Pokemon dances to try and convince men to go <laughs> die in a ditch. It's garbage. If you go to the front line of Ukraine right now, you do not see women in their makeup and their manicures. You see men in the freezing cold dying. Wait, what? I mean, also not true. I mean, there are plenty of women that are dying in the front lines of Ukraine too. Okay, let's find these women in Ukraine real quick. Ah, oh, here's one. Ah, oh, I saved it. Because I knew this would come up. Honestly, if I if I saw this, right, the first thing that would come to my mind is, we are so fucked. We're so fucked, and even especially the person filming. Who is filming this? We're so fucked. Like we're being shelled right now, and, I mean, it's kind of cute, right? I feel. I guess I feel more confident that you're dancing, right? You hey, you took the edge off. <laughs> Right? Any violent Russians come up out of the fucking out of the fucking hill? I want to feel ready. I want to feel ready for this. Like you know, before a fight, UFC boxing, the coach will slap them, yell at them, get them angry. Imagine if the coach started doing a TikTok dance before your UFC fight. The bitch is going hard though. <laughs> See, as a Russian, imagine seeing this in your sniper scope. You'd be like, what are they doing? What is her rank? I believe it's human shield rank. I don't know. I don't I don't even know what the fuck she's doing, bro. I, she needs to be discharged. That's ridiculous. Where the fuck did it go? Did I take it off? Really? 
Give me the timestamp. I can't catch a break, dude. <sighs> what up, guys? Welcome to the Just Curly Things YouTube channel. This woman is like, uh, like the biggest pick me, right? No, I want to know. That's so funny. It's like you're giving like the worst examples. Like these are all we are now. We have overcome that. Like we're in 2022. No one is thinking that like all, uh, in the North Vietnamese uh, uh, army, there were women that were working. Women have always participated in, in war. I don't, it's not like it's a, it's a good thing. War is not yeah, a good it thing. It should be illegal for women to see combat, right? Actually, they shouldn't just not be in the military at all. Unless they're nurses. And even then it's like, to be honest, I don't know if I want a nurse that cannot carry a grown man. I'd rather have a male nurse. <laughs> yeah good thing in general but like there are certainly a shitload of examples of women you know in the front lines intelligent as a man therefore naturally a woman is not intelligent no it doesn't make sense if we're not starting to normalize equality and we want to put everybody in the forefront give a woman a Who's gun normalizing equality well that's what what people are wanting then that, that's people the case. Like who? let me tell you who wants to normalize let equality people like who feminists who no. Wants no the last people on earth who want equality are women this has been proven a million times <clears throat> Do they really want equality with, let's say, in, in the construction work site and, and shit removal and bridge building type jobs, STEM? Do they, like, 99% of these fucking male jobs they don't even want? I want, well, actually, no equality. I want respect. That's really no, my What's stopping you from getting respect? Exactly. No, no, I get respect. I, I, I get, respect. get respect. I get respect. So, that's what I want. That's what, want I like. what I think is. You don't even know what you want. I'll tell you what I you want. Know what you want. You want I, equality, as a woman, I carry myself respect. differently. I actually hold the things that I have done in the fights that I fought. I hold it. That's why when you speak to me, I don't move different. I move different to many of the girls. That's why when you talk to me and you argue with me, I, I don't, don't take it. You. you do sometimes. You. And I'll tell you something. A lot of women may have the accolades to be somebody, but they're uncomfortable to own that. And the reason why. That means they don't have it. I would like to ask you, for example, I do need a woman. For example, to you know, per wait, she's not. I thought she was maybe like she doesn't seem weird, she seems kind of normal. Is what are one of these ladies like a feminist? Is she a feminist, or I guess what is portrayed as a feminist here? Yeah, Even a, a feminist just means I have an OnlyFans now. Quality equaling respect the way you get respect. Is okay, what if the f guy has a gun? Like, this is so st these hypotheticals are so dumb, you know what I mean? Like, this hypothetical is not how you operate your life, like, you can't operate your life on that. Oh, in a self defense style situation, you need a man there. It's like, okay, well, what if the woman is Ronda Rousey? Okay, what if the woman is like uh, that cyborg woman? who everybody uh, was was uh, talking about like how she was cheating or some shit. Like, oh, here's a hypothetical situation. I don't think Hassan realizes that as weak as he is, he can beat up Ronda Rousey very easily. You, I feel like he'd be shocked if he ever fought Ronda Rousey. He'd be like, wow, that was fucking easy. I should, I should compete in MMA. Situation that I'm using to draw your attention away from an overarching argument. Here's a hypothetical. In my hypothetical situation, I win. Okay, well, what about, what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Craft a counter hypothetical where you win? As a woman is by being feminine. There's nothing, uh, we can be equal and very, very different. I'm not saying that where there's not equality, but you've confused equality with the same. You can be equal equity. with completely different things. You can have a bishop and a knight on a chessboard. They're equal in terms of points, but they do different things, right? Mm -hmm. A woman can have equal respect to a man if she is very good at being a woman, and a man gets respect for being very good at being a man. When a woman decides she wants to act like a man or a man wants to act like a woman, that's where all gets up. We try to pretend yes. it's all the same. It's not the same. Men and women are good at different things. We have different strengths, different weaknesses. There's nothing wrong with accepting that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm a woman, I'm good at X, he's a man, he's good at Y. Then we work together as a team, we have a beautiful family, we're happy forever. It's only confused where you have women who sit and go, yeah, I don't think you've seen like why is this an argument if this progressive experiment farmed the worst mental health like people are depressed people got the highest levels of depression anxiety grief and then they're still wondering hey man you want to keep going with this liberal shit <laughs> maybe no Maybe you don't want that anymore or blame capitalism and, and push that progressive wheel nine more notches, bro. No, I don't think that's happening for him. Yeah, the question the person has is beyond stupid. Anyone in this situation is either going to act on it or not act on it. Gender is irrelevant. Exactly. That's why I said entirely dependent. It is entirely dependent on the circumstances. How is he wrong? Please explain. Dude, your name is Kant Osman, okay? You said commentate W. If you're the type of dude that spams commentate W in a chat, I'm pretty sure in a self-defense style situation, you're, you're going to get asked, okay? Depending on what the guy wants to do with you, you are that person's pet now, okay? This is not a man or woman thing. It's just what is within the bounds of reason, okay? What do you have? Can you actually defend yourself?
This has nothing to do with being a woman. That's why I gave you the hypothetical where it's like, okay, well, what if it's fucking Ronda Rousey? The idea that like all girls are weak and dumb and all men are strong and powerful is stupid. It, there, there is truth to this, right? Like that's why, uh, you know, women are more likely to be assaulted by a man and, and therefore like that kind of, you know, the whole parking lot situation that we've talked about before where it's like a literally threatening scenario. Yeah, but every time a woman's been assaulted by a man, it's a man that was raised by a single mom. Unless programming doesn't count anymore. I thought we'd care about that. Mario, thinking inferences off of that is really stupid. Like larger gender role inferences. Assuming that every woman, regardless of their, assuming that every woman, regardless. Could you KO Hassan? That would be animal abuse. Regardless of their skill set is going to be bad at a particular task. And every man, regardless of their skill set is going to be good at a particular task is Stupid. That's it. That's my point. But it's also at the heart of like conservative thinking. Don't think about things in a nuanced way and try to go into, you know, pre conservative thinking is just your mind before the TV. <laughs> I don't know why this guy acts like there's b a billions of dollars in trying to make people conservative. No, if that was the case, Jordan Peterson would actually sound like me. He wouldn't sound like a fucking centrist cook. Previously thought out well-defined narrow boxes and think about the world through that lens. It'll make it easier for you. That's literally what he's trying to do. This is what he always does, and a lot of people fall for it. Oh, no, because in the name of equality, we can fight in war. There's no women on the front line in Ukraine. That is psyop bullshit. They put some chick there dancing around doing Pokemon dances to try and convince men to go <laughs> die. It's garbage. If you go to the front line in Ukraine right now, you do not see women in their makeup and their manicures. You see men in the freezing cold dying. Wait, what? I mean, also not true. I mean, there are plenty of women that are dying in the front lines of Ukraine too. You know where the women are? Dubai. Chilling. That's where the what? women are. So mm. to sit and pretend yeah. that... Women got to leave Ukraine, Hassan. Men are not allowed to leave Ukraine. It's like, this is, how's... Humans can argue about anything. Women are just as capable physically as men. is a <laughs> lie. It's delusion. The sending you're as strong as men is delusion. You are good no at way. other things. You're better than men at a lot of things, but it's not the physical world. And the unfortunate reality about life, this is what we're saying when I was saying earlier that feminism goes out the window when things get hard. The harder the world gets, it, the, it, the closer it gets to the baseline of humanity, the unfortunate baseline of, re of, re of humanity is violence. Yeah. That's what happens. when if, if all the electricity were to go out and all the police were to quit, this would become a violent place very quickly and there would be zero feminists left. Zero. You would all need <laughs> men. That's the bottom line of reality. That's the Men, I mean, women don't need men just for physical protection. They die if they don't get male attention. So even the attention they need, it's not just like to protect them. They literally die if they don't get male attention. Like they start doing really fucked up self-harm type shit. Bottom line. So you have to yes. understand as a woman and say, okay, no I need a man who's good at being a man. But no but one's saying that we don't need men in society. Of course we do. We're talking about relationships. This is so dumb. Society's already violent, okay? Incredibly violent. But if the power grid went out, we're f anyway. What do you mean? This Society's only violent because of single moms. That's the truth. All my friends who are single moms, they don't like this opinion, but they'll never argue it. Right? And they're good moms, but they would never argue it. They know what's up. Everyone knows what's up. ...is so ride or die for his little theories that he's like... This is what he's going to be doing when power, when the power is out. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of men who would very easily turn this into mincemeat, okay, as well, if the power went out. Like, what do you mean? That's an awful- He's a fucking kickboxing champ. That's like the worst thing you could say about someone who's like a champion at fighting. <laughs> ...situation. It's done. It's like, yeah, okay, well, you know, if a nuclear holocaust were to happen tomorrow, then- you know, you would rely on all the men then. It's like, bro, what are you saying right now? Yeah, you're strong. You know, nothing I hate more than when people do that. I don't mind when people alpha check. Like, yo, you're not an alpha and stuff. But th that word should be reserved for fighters. Like, if someone fights with their fucking hands, you're not going to take the alpha from that guy. Take it from anyone else. Take it from any Chad, any sports player, football player, whatever the fuck. But don't take it from the fighters. This is, like, going a little too far, dude. But the thing is, I can live my life as a woman and not need a man. What's a woman? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pearl, stop like, it. Like, in my day-to-day -day life, I don't need a man to fix my car. I'll just go to the mechanic. But listen, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is the mechanic a man or a... One of the main issues for the kid being raised by a single mom, um, she instills the resentment she has towards men in the boy. And sometimes it's, like, subconscious. Sometimes it's deliberate. And, well, it's a mixture of both. 
and the boy becomes very angry at the world. Single dads don't do that bad at all, right? But single moms raise murderers, right? Every single murderer came from a single parent household, excuse me, single mom household, every single time. Like the studies are so overwhelming, it's terrifying. A woman. No, no, I'm saying yes, we need men in society, but in relationships, the only reason I actually need you is because I want you. I don't actually need you. Do you know what? I, have babies. Well. I, need, I need you to procreate, yes, I. Yeah, it's so funny, it's like, she's right though. Yeah, not every man knows how to fix a car. It, again, you're relying on tropes. I'm almost certain that that bitch-ass Andrew Tate does not know how to fix an engine. If he did... It's not about fixing, knowing how to fix a car. It's dealing with the pressure that the fucking car broke down. Right? When we, oh my God, I can't deal with it. <laughs> Good on him. That doesn't make him more manly. That just makes him someone who has interests, okay? It's so stupid. It is so incredibly stupid to be like, Oh, you need a man when you need to fix your engine. It's like, yo, what are you talking about? Division of labor is very feminine. You're a man. You need to learn everything about every part of the world, about every part of the assembly line. No, not all single moms resent like that. Well, I didn't say all. Like, I have many aunts who are good moms and they raise good boys and stuff. But I'm saying, like, majority. When when people say I'm, I'm talking about, like, all, you're talking about, like, every single human on earth. <laughs> The exception will never make the rule, and that's the liberals' argument. You know, if the liberal couldn't get the exception to make the rule, they'd never talk again. <laughs> men are stronger than women. Not all men. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe four men on earth. <laughs> Not all. Men, uh, men do better at uh, extremely intensive and intellectual subjects than women. Well, not all men, John. <laughs> like, not all. Well. That's what men are for. I, Andrew Tate, know how to make this Bugatti by myself with my bare hands because I'm a man. I agree, but the thing is, I don't need you in my day-to-day -day life. What if someone, but wait, what, wait, what if someone breaks? Well, the truth about Andrew Tate is that, like, he got the Bugatti unplugging a keyboard of a hoe and t t flirting with men who were nutting they were like touching themselves because the girls couldn't flirt he had to do the girl's job if you want to attack tate i'll give you material bro but hassan you go through every single like you do a you every time you try and attack someone you go through all the wrong steps right he's got a huge blind spot dude it's into your house i'll just call the police Okay, what if they don't come? What if it, the average Play in, the US, in the U.S. it takes like 15 <laughs> minutes in, 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 in the U.S. it takes like 15 that minutes is, for them to get there. But that's not realistic. What, that okay, doesn't okay, happen no, on okay, a day-to-day okay, okay. day life. These well, two guys in your, your is that what you're looking for in a man? Is that what it is? I don't get it. Like your goal. What's your biggest critique of Tate? My biggest critique is that he's not hardcore enough. You know, at that level of clout, money, influence, you can be more honest. You don't have to. Like I really get annoyed when he says stuff like women are good at some things i hate when he says stuff like that it just feels so regressive it feels like what is the point of you leading the charge if you're going to take steps back we're trying to take every single hill in this war and you're doing this whole appeasing shit if you appease the smaller channels got appeased not fucking you you're supposed to lead the, you're supposed to hold the flag and go to the top right and let us do the it's so backwards man Goal in a successful, healthy relationship with a man in 2022 is like how well they can defend you in a self-defense style situation. Like this is so stupid. Who the fuck is factoring that in? Just get a dog, dude. Just get a dog. Okay. What could possibly be happening in your life that you are constantly under threat of like assault, like under under threat of like uh you know death squads breaking through your door like you're John Wick. It's also funny because like men die when you know breaking and entering situations happen. Men can die too just as easily as women. It's not like men are bulletproof dude in your house what are you doing but that's not realistic I'm not i remember first falling in love with tate and it was when he said i wouldn't give cpr to a man because that's gay <laughs> i didn't even hear him say it someone else said that he said that i'm like if he said that this is my guy dude i will ride with this guy <laughs> this guy is so fucking base <laughs> any man break into my house on a day-to-day no, -day. No, it doesn't happen point, the point is so let's be realistic I know, I know now i know what you're saying but the, the point is this the yeah, point is the gayest thing was when he apologized for that joke look if you're apologizing for jokes and like off the cuff comments you got to ask yourself who are you apologizing to you know
Not to make you sound like a little bitch, but we're at war, man. You know, we're not apologizing to them ever. Is when we're talking about feminism as a whole, feminism as a whole demonizes men. And you just said, you just sat and said, besides procreation, I don't need a man in my life. I can go to a male mechanic or call a male police officer. They're men. So it's it, in it's, society, it's, so, you yeah, are society, needed. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. Of so, course, so, we need you. Of course. So you're talking about being with a man because you want to. So my, yeah. my question to you is, why would you want? Yeah, he says something about. Of course he would give CPR to a man. Like, it, then he t talked about his brother and... Yeah, it's just not what Trump would do, you know? Trump would not do that, you know? It, the, the effective part of Trump was that he just hold his chin up high and triple down on his take, you know? That's why I fell in love with Trump, because he said... I'm not really here to fucking appease retards. I'm here for my group. I'm a populist. Let's go. But Tate is thinking of it through like some kind of like, I can make more money appeasing them. I think that's what he thinks of. To be with a man. Why would a man want to be with you? Because they're sexy. Oh, like, I feel like because of the family. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 guys, can we talk about men? Do you kiss your brothers on the cheek or forehead because you're Southern Europeans like that shit? Yeah, no, anytime my twin brother or my brothers are asleep, I'll go kiss their forehead. Uh, I look for reasons to hug them, and then usually they'll push me off, but sometimes they'll give me a hug. No, dude, I don't mind that. That's like my bro that's my blood, dude. I would fucking kill for them. I would, I would fight and kill 100 million people on earth for my brothers. I would do a thousand years in prison. I would do an infinity in hell for my brothers. I love them to death. I've never felt more love for anything in my life than my brothers, especially twin. And it's like an aching love where it like hurts. It's like, it's such a strong love that I can't really get romantic with a woman because she can feel my heart is elsewhere, you know? Oh, dude, any reason I have, any chance I get to squish their face and kiss them, especially my twin brother. Oh my God, dude, I'm telling you. You have no idea what I've been through, man. But I don't think it's gay or incestuous, you know? Only when we're sucking each other up. I love men. No, I love dick. Don't okay. say like it, but it's not all about dick. What I'm trying to say is no, that uh, in a good relationship, right, one that works, there's blue jobs and there's pink jobs, <laughs> right? And that's the problem that women have got. Oh, geez, they don't want to be doing no pink jobs. But that's not you what, what we're talking, I mean? about. We're talking, talking about. about. We're talking about relationships. Why do you need a man in a relationship? Because you want a partner. Pause. Bro, if you don't kiss and hug your brothers, what the fuck is wrong with you? That's so scary. You guys don't kiss your siblings? You don't fucking squish them, hug them, kiss their forehead, and do like put a blanket over them when they're sleeping? And you don't do none of that? The fuck is wrong with some of you, man? No kiss on the lip? Yeah. Would you really do infinity and hell for them? Hell yeah, man. Of course I would. Um, I wouldn't do infinity and hell for my wife, though. Because honestly, living with her is like the first, pe <laughs> you know, chapter one of hell. And then infinity, get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> what's the worst thing you've said to your brother whoa you first me was mm. oh recently my twin brother told me this he was getting distracted when he was finishing school and I was at like $300,000 almost in my bank account. And I said, you're a broke fucking loser who spent all that time getting a master's degree and you're a fucking nobody and you're in debt. I've done lapped you a thousand fold and I'm not even trying. I'm not even warmed up. And he got so fucking angry at this that he quit all of his other activities, everything else he was studying and went to work. And now he caught up to me in a year. He, he caught up to me. I think he's at like 200 something. 
And I was like, what the fuck? And I thought he was bullshitting me. And then he started pulling out the receipts and showing bank account and this and crypto. And I was like, holy shit. And then he's like, I want to thank you, man. He's like, you snapped me out of that whole time wasting part where I'm like doing too much education and not enough. And and now all, now he's buying a house in like four months. And he is just doing so good for himself. Highest paid in his uh, firm or whatever it's called. And... Yeah, bullying is so effective, dude. You know, that was unreal. And my my twin brother is the highest paid dude I know in my high school, right now. He's un he is so high paid right now, and he works his ass off. Actual genius. And which was so cool because right when I leaned back, he's like, "You better pop off on YouTube now because I'm about to lap you," and I panicked. I'm I just picked up my shit and moved to Texas. I was like, oh, fuck, now the game is on. That's why I loved A twin brother is that Naruto Sasuke energy. It's so good, dude. That rivalry is so good. But, and he's the one. He, now I go a lot easier on people who uh, get master's degrees. Because I didn't know you could get paid. Usually I make fun of the school guys. But, dude, you guys get paid a lot when you're actually doing the work. I didn't know that. I thought it was all cope. So he proved me wrong. But I asked him, I'm like, do the other therapists make as much as you? And apparently not. Like, he's just very, I guess his clients just love him. They go back. He's always booked up and shit. Nah. What's companionship, friendship, you romantic love, things that you can't get yes. by yourself. Take, like, you want to go on dates with him? It's not about, I need someone to fix my car. Like, go to a mechanic. <laughs> You're not safe? Call the police. Not like, cool. it's not oh, that wait, 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 what about a father to your kids? You don't think your kids exactly. need a dad? You can be around. I, I, I definitely want that. These are the stuff. This is the reason wait, no, you need a man. That. Like, I, I, I agree. Not, wait, wait, wait. It's not, it's not that you want it. You need it. I agree. And these are the stuff that I need in a man. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's not like I completely need you. But the whole point is if the lights went out tomorrow, you would need a man in the society no, agree she's cooked bro because <laughs> ain't nobody locking her up <laughs> if that's the case then just pearly things is f dude <laughs> why do we have like women are so no, 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 useless I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, i can change a no, tire no, i'm saying i'm saying if if the lights went out tomorrow you would need someone to protect you you yes, would. of course can in I society not my boyfriend go on can the ground. Like, half of my exes can't even do anything can I, yo, that's choice, actually another problem choice. a lot of men can't do much do you know what i mean not everybody's strong dude this is you know what's the best thing I've done for my twin brother? I guess I can say it now it's been years. Is Aura Nightclub. I found out one of the bouncers kicked out my brother and hit him. Uh, pushed him or something like that. And I found that out like a week later. And it was like my dream job. And I got so sad. Because I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not working at that place. And I, they're like, I guess they didn't know it was him. But I was so tight about it. And then I went to the door at the ropes. And fucking screamed at the top of my lungs at in every bouncer's face looking for the one who kicked them out because they wouldn't say who and they all shit their pants the old guys the 45 year old guys the 30 the 20 year olds and none of them left through the front door that night and uh like i didn't resign but everyone knew i'm done working there but that was the most violent i ever got and it was like Dude, they could see in my eyes. I was like, it was bittersweet because I like lost my favorite job, one of my favorite jobs. And my dumbass asked for that job back a year later. I was like, you guys hiring? And then the head doorman's like, well, we'll call you. But they knew I'm like psychotic back then. So. And my brother felt so bad because he knew I had to do it. Like, he's not going to talk me out of it. But he knew. He's like, oh, this guy's poor. He has no job. And now he lost this job. Yeah, I almost went to prison for that. I imagine if that shit popped off. That would have been so bad. Oh, I'm blessed. Nothing happened, bro. So f stupid. Like, that motherfucker doesn't know how to do 90% of the shit that he's promoting that men are doing, okay? He is pampered as a dude the only difference between me and Andrew Tate is like I admit it okay and I think it's bro Hassan's brother builds capsules for NASA he's he leaked this the other day <laughs> stupid to be like oh my god the lights went out like what the fuck is he gonna do when the lights go out bro if he can't refuel his Bugatti what's he gonna do nothing but he doesn't know the first thing about electricity bro okay is he an electrical engineer how is he gonna fix the grid how is he gonna actually 
power his home. How is he going to brave the elements? Is that what he's going to do? No. In this damn age, guys can't even Listen, fit a tire. You cannot. You <laughs> cannot. No, no, no. Can cook. Hey, not you, my sister. Well, I can cook. I can cook. I can cook. Brothers. I don't know. I'm Speak to your brothers. Listen, they don't know how to do it. It doesn't matter if you can cook. If you're loud and annoying like that, it's fucking useless. Every girl who can cook is some loud, obnoxious idiot. And I'm like, dude, what's the point of you, like, mastering food if we don't want to be around you? What the fuck is the point of that? When people say, can you cook, they're thinking of, like, this feminine, beautiful, nice-ass chick. They're thinking of not someone fucking belligerent. Can I just say something? Guys, 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 guys. Can I just say something? We have to do one at a time. Can I just say something? This is why you can't blame all men for your poor choices. You can't say, I'm talking to both of you because you're saying, yeah, my man can't do this, my man can't do that. What, and you want to settle down. Why would you go and choose a man that can't do these things that you wanted them to do? Because my man could do all the blue I jobs. Need a man Because most men go up with a PlayStation instead. Most men go up with a PlayStation it's a man and that you're porn and things like that. No, that's the truth. It's not. It's speak, not. For, speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. That's the man you I'm sorry. What, I don't need, you need a mechanic, not my boyfriend. I need a father to my children. I don't need something. Bro, no roughneck, blue collar is sitting around at the oil rig listening to a three-hour podcast where, like, a bunch of British ladies are chirping about how men ain't shit, okay? What fantasy are you living in? It's all the PlayStation weirdos and console weirdos like ourselves sitting around listening to it, and the one side is LARPing as though they are the, you know, the rough-and-tumble trade guys, okay? When they're not, they're literally just pasty incels on, uh, that, that LARP on the internet about being master race. And then on the other side, you have a bunch of queer-coded uh, uh, children who are watching this as well going, hey, you know, this is kind of stupid and dumb. At least one side is honest, though. And I, let me tell you, it's not the side LARPing as a bunch of, you know, rough-and-tumble oil rig guys, okay? Like, nobody who's like... Every single podcast that talks about problems they're facing, you know, it's like you keep hearing about these problems and stuff, and nobody knows the angle of attack they're like how, how do we want to face these problems i need a father i need this i just want a guy like this i want a woman like this and nobody will just just point at the elephant in the room you want christianity that's what you want that's what's going to solve everything you've already had that society before you did this progressive shit, went away from it, and now you're like, I don't know, man, I want this, I, but the world is going to shit. All your problems used to be solved, you fucking retards. You used to have different problems. Yeah, they don't want it, they need it. I'm wrong, you're right. Like, actually, we're going to... Great job or whatever. Right. She, needs a a father, a minute, she needs a father for her children, right? Yeah. So she's going to go out there, right? And you're going to buy your child an electric car. You're going to go and buy your child a bicycle. Who the hell is going to buy the bicycle and fix the electric car? Who right. the fuck is this? Do it. You got YouTube. I know how to do these things. Bro, I, I fixed the battery before. I fixed the battery. And you can do everything yourself. Go and get some sperm donor or something because you obviously don't need a man. Because, That's the future, uh, I think. And the thing you know? is, no, no future for who? No, of That's society. That's the problem. Because at the end of the day, what year are you living in? The year that you're living in. Because I. Let me finish talking. Let me finish talking, right? <laughs> now you can, you got a man, right? And you've been busy all day, right? And you're in your bed at one o'clock in the morning, and your man comes in with all of his friends, and said, "Oh, babes, all the friends are here. They're hungry. What are you gonna do?" Yeah, I'll cook for my man. I, I'm, I'm a traditional woman in that aspect. Uh, yeah, I love aspect. to cook Why for my man. Why is it that when people start <laughs> cooking, they <laughs> think that cooking is traditional? It's, it's everything. It's not just about cooking. But they always say, oh, I cook for my man, so I'm traditional. Why are they mad about, like, I, I don't even understand. I, I, it seems like they're in agreement. I, I don't even get it. What are they, I don't even get what they're mad about. Like, if you told me break this down, I don't get what's happening. With one another, but they're yelling at each other for some weird reason, and I don't know what's going on there. No, 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 no. I have a question. Wait, 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 wait. I have a question. Are you a virgin? You're traditional, you're virgin. Are you a virgin? I, no, no, I said, I said, I said in that aspect. There's like such chaotic thinking patterns here. I'm not gonna comment on me being a virgin or not, but what I'm gonna say is, Every every human being should be able to cook. She's a Man she's a hybrid woman. of tradition and modernization. I'm a person that survives. You know, I need to cook to, to right. survive. Can, can I can I ask Mister Take something? Right, right. I'm gonna ask you something. Sure. <laughs> right, because I, I I can't I don't like bullshit. Right, and like, there's certain people that I can't even bear talking to. Right, so I'm gonna talk to him because so far he's talking sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's giving pick me. Right. Uh -uh. No, Who said no. pick me? 
Listen, who said it? Who just said pick me? They want me. Don't look no, at me. I said, I said, I said it. Give him, give him, pick me. 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 Give him, I'm not sure you don't want to hear me shout. Anyway, Mr. Tate, like I was saying before we got rudely interrupted, right? Now, if you, is this your idea of a woman that you think deserves a man? I'm here, single, but I'm, I'm looking. I'm here, I'm, I'm like taking, you know, if you want to hook. Why does anybody care about Mr. Tate? I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think he's interested in women. Everything I've seen of Andrew Tate, like, in the way he talks about women, I'm pretty sure he's not into women, okay? I've seen Andrew Tate and the way that he looks at women, and I've seen Andrew Tate and the way that he looks at Aiden Ross. Hook me up, let me know, and I just want any and anybody, but choose. How does that make you feel? Uh, what is that kind of woman that you think deserves a man? Well, he's a top G. You can't be asking him this question. But you're not top G, isn't it? We're mere mortals, Andy. Speak for yourself. I'm no mere mortal. I'm a mere mortal in his presence. Because nobody, nobody Come on now. This kind of question be that all. I'm a mere mortal. We have options. I'm a mere mortal. I'm a mere mortal. We have options, Andy. Even this 8.5. That is a most stupid thing. Where is your ring? That is a most stupid thing. Because I actually can choose. I have not found a man that I want to be with. Okay, that's fine. I know your reality. I know your reality. Pause. I know it's cruel to come. I know it's cruel to admit this, right? But you gotta admit this to yourself. You're not single from choice. You're not single because you can choose a man. You're single because nobody wants you. Let's stop pretending like everyone in your city is compatible with you. There's like a handful of people, and none of them want you. There's like a handful of people you had a, you had a options with. You fucked it up with one and the rest don't want you. And that's the truth. Single people are just not chosen. They, well, actually, it's because I'm focusing on career. I'm focusing on this, on this. No. Nobody wants you. That's the truth. Men, women who are single, nobody wants you. That's the truth. Just get over it. Is this a psyop to make it seem like women podcasters are garbo? What's happening here? Wait, are they so misogynistic that they're like, we're going to actually prove a point? Because, like, Andrew Tate proves that point for men on a regular basis, right? Why the f*** are you guys overperforming right now? What, what is this? They're, like, so into the trad cat lifestyle, they're literally like, don't watch this podcast because it's made by women. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You said, unlike you, yeah. I have options. We have options, yeah. You're out here looking for a man. You're out here saying that you're looking well, for a man. I said I was looking for Damn, she was ruthless to her. Except, ironically in a feminist planet and if this was a feminist uh, world okay if there was like global homo global feminism then she would have options because like she would not be worth her worth would not be directly tied to just the way she looks that's how you always lose as a woman if you're dick riding the patriarchy you're always gonna lose because you have a shelf life under the patriarchy you hit 27 and it's over you know what i mean yeah but let's say you deny the patriarchy that doesn't mean you spawn men who don't care about beauty. <laughs> choom, choom, choom. They just so, like shadow clones just pop up out of nowhere. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Nothing would change. <laughs> it's not actually in real life. It's not luckily. Okay. But like in the eyes of these motherfuckers, like it's done. You're done. It's crazy. It's weird. How are you as a woman going to dick ride patriarchy that hard? My gosh, she was at the advertising when we done the introductions. I That's what you said. I said I was doing it. That is what you said. I didn't say I was going oh out looking for a man. I said I'm doing it. Hang on a minute. You come to me. I'm about to decide if I want you. Mr. Tate, listen to, listen to this insult, right? Listen to the insult. I'm not insulting listen. you. Hang on. Listen. Oh, what do you call it? Sign you. language. Oh, what, I'm learning. Sign language. <laughs> right? Listen to what she just said. Guys, I'm not saying as a woman, you're done. Your shelf life is 27. I'm saying that as a woman, if you're dick riding the patriarchy, you are literally trying to reinforce attitudes that claim that your shelf life is 25 or 27. That is what's really stupid. You are unironically def defending your own demise. Men are right to cheat. Oh, what? something. What about what does it? Look, cheating's bad. It's degenerate, but it's not the same when men do it versus when women do it. Okay. And I'll bring my halo argument. Halo, easy mode, legendary.
I, uh, okay, is it the same if men cheat versus if women cheat? It's actually different because if I had two eggs and I still was tempted to cheat, that shows that you're just a dog. You're a dog of a human. But if you have a million serpents telling you to cheat, now you're in a real fight. Now you're, now you're in legendary mode. So if you're loyal here, you're going to heaven, bro. But if you have an oopsie daisy, it's fine. It's not as bad. If this person on easy mode is failing the game, that's just pathetic. The, the woman one in your eyes. What are you thinking? What's the game you get for the boys? I'm, I'm going to tell you, but before that, I need another Clementine, and I need to give half to our friend here because <laughs> she just rolled her eyes at me. And I'm perspicacious. I know it's everything. She doesn't realize that I'm a ninja. I detect these things. Even when I'm looking directly at I can detect. He's trying to Brittany Renner. So That's I'm going to give her some of my Clementine, and she's going to feel better. So I'm going to get a Clementine. <clears throat> would you like some Clementine, my dear? I'm uh, sure. Do you want some I, Clementine? I just, I think for me, it's like. This I, I asked you a question. Would you yeah, want some I would love some. Yeah. You want some Clementine? Yeah. We're going to hook it up. Okay. Clementine's coming. All right. Go on. Continue. Okay. What? No, I mean, I just feel like this is definitely a different conversation. Oh, God. He's not very good, in my opinion. But she might still be into it. Who knows? We'll see. And for me, because I, I'm very open-minded. I love hearing different <laughs> perspective. And I do feel like... Um, no, you're not. You're a bot. You've proven that before with pressure and fit. You're like high-level programmed zombie. This is a newer idea. Like like you said, within the last 30, 40 years, this is a new concept. We don't know how it's going to end. I just know from, from like my experience, other women that I've met as well, it's like the reason for even like relationships, why they're not lasting is because people don't want to put up with the disrespect. And like, even when you were talking about like, oh, it's okay for me to cheat, but not for you. My thing is, is like, why not? You ladies put up with disrespect at your workplace from your boss for $10 an hour for 10 years fucking straight. Just cope better with your husband. Have transparency and have it be polygamous, poly, uh, polyamorous, whatever works for you. That's like to me where it loses me with the traditional stuff. I get it. There are people who subscribe to hyper expressions of masculinity and femininity, but conforming to either involves denying aspects of your identity. For men, it's a denial of any traits that are deemed emotional because they're too feminine, but the hyper forms of masculinity and femininity are both toxic and result in somewhat underdeveloped or half formed individuals who need to have to live a normal life. It's all like, right. why can't we have so, transparency okay. if I sign up for that? Cool. So how does it, no, 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 man, no man in a million years, let's all be realistic, right? No man in a million years is gonna meet a girl he likes and go, I wanna be polyamorous. Like, come on, that's gay. Let's cut this bullshit. So let's, let's be realistic. How does a man show love to a What? Tell Exclusivity. Me. Wrong. That is how- Time, it, resources, wrong. and something else. Time, resources. So yeah. that's, a good, that's a good way to start. So sexual exclusivity is how a female shows primarily, primarily that she's interested in a man. He's mm. the only man who has sexual access to me because I can get pregnant and, I, I, and this man is the only man who can do it. That's how it's done. A man, yes, I'm not saying all men can cheat. I'm not saying all men should cheat. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if I truly love a woman, she won't sit there and go, he shows me his love because he doesn't fuck anyone else. She'll sit there and go, he shows me his love because my bills are paid. I'm in a Bentley. I drive fly private. I go to Dubai anytime I want. I have a Chanel bag. Yeah, this is like, this is so incredibly fucking insecure. It's true. It's true, Hassan. It's just true. Dude, hey, uh, if you have misophonia, you should yourself. Okay, what's your view of Pearly? I think she is awful. But honestly, listen, basic bitches need a lane, okay? If you can't make it on like, if you can't make it in like other lanes that, that are available, this is as old as time itself. It's as old as a tale as old as time itself. If you're like, you can't make it in the big leagues like Tommy Lauren and shit, you know, you have no personality. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to like go ham on the trad cat shit with hopes that like men will- I love when he shits on Tommy. I hate Tommy so much. I hate her more than Libs. Overlook how awful your personality is. And also, ironically, I guess overlook the world where you are tested on the middle of how good you look, how like how well of an object of desire you are as a woman. It's the it's the same dichotomy as like turfs looking bricked the f up. It's like what is wrong with you that you literally think like if I'm as turfy as possible, if I like create these like uh, rigid standards of femininity and beauty, like maybe uh, men are gonna think that you're a woman. No, they they'll literally think they will always think. That if you are a turf, most men are going to look at you and go, oh, that's like a trans woman. They're going to think you're a man half the time. They like literally misgender turfs. So why are you trying to live in a society where men are going to keep 
clocking you when you're not trans. It's so weird. It's the same as just partly things. It's like, I'm sure you have certain qualities. You hate Tommy, but you're friends with Lauren Southern. Yeah, I mean, Lauren never went on a rant about men like Tommy. Tommy's rant was just, I don't know if we have time for this, man. But this rant was everything wrong with the world. This, yo, get ready to be more turned off than you've ever been in your life. She sounds like someone you date for a year straight and they get too co cozy with you, you know? And they just start running their fucking mouth. And you're like, hey, be careful, man. I'm not the guy. I will literally cheat out of, out of, out of some vengeance shit. <laughs> What's up? This is terrifying. Someone said too clingy. No, listen. Clingy is not a bad thing. The bitchy is a bad thing. You're about to see bitchy. You guys need to delete it from your head that clingy is bad. Okay? Anyone, any guy, first of all, you're lying. Think of a clingy girl, you're turned off. Think of a really hot clingy girl. It's the greatest fucking shit ever. There's nothing great. Anyone I date, I go, if you're not clingy, I'm out. You Fake it till you become it. I don't give a fuck. Be clingy or I'm gone. I don't DM back. I don't do shit. I forget to call. If you're not clingy, I'm not into it. Don't want to play. Don't want to role play. Don't want to don't want to kiss. None of that. And then usually that works great. Like they start doing more. I'm going to let you guys trickle in before I start talking because this is important. It's okay. Good. For all the men out there and all the boys who think they're men, but they're actually boys. This is going to be the summer of canceling boys. Now, from my own personal experiences... And you got ran through. We get it. This is like that ran through confession. Like women do a confession where they're like, I didn't actually confess. Yes, you are confessing. The experiences of all of my friends, which range in age from 24 to 36. All got ran through. We all got issues. Now, I will also... There's the leak. ...to say this. All of my friends are attractive. All of my friends are successful. All That's why they got ran through, because they're attractive. All of my friends have something going on. They got uh ran through because they're attractive and successful, meaning they're high-functioning people, and nobody wants that. We'd rather have a cute McDonald's worker than these high-functioning women. Almost every single one of them have an issue with men. They got ran through. And you have to start looking you at know, the It's funny, because a bombshell, beautiful woman who has a good mindset... She's never bitching about shit like this. She got men, she got her, her man wrapped around her finger. Like, she's good. She knows what she's doing. But the ones who, I don't know how to keep him around. They start doing this fucking shit. It's like, dude, why don't you go look at that very popular girl that does very good with her hubby? Why don't you act like that one? That and thinking, if an age range of that many people, including myself, living really all over the country. That's a dude. And being... Blonde, brunette, short hair, long hair. I mean, tan, super white, super pale. I mean, these women range in every body type and every everything. They're ran all through. They're all liberals pretending to be conservatives, and you're getting ran through. And you think your little MAGA hat's going to save you, okay? Thoughts are not conservative. Actions are, okay? You don't want to play the game correct. Get ran through. Shut the fuck up. They're all successful, they're all intelligent, they're all good people. But if all of these women, including myself, are having issues, then I have to think, it might not be us. It might be you. It might be men. It might be <laughs> men. Now, I've often talked about the pussification of America and how men are no longer men. I talked to my mom about this a lot, and she says, well, maybe it's just the guys in Texas. Maybe it's just the guys in Los Angeles. Maybe it's just the guys... Just the guys... Um, it is not just the guys in Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas, and it's not. they're not any better in the Midwest. Dude, you're getting ran through all over USA. You're leaking too hard, Tommy. They, quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country and the age range of- You've been ran through all over the country. We got you. About 20 to, I think, about 55, maybe even 60. A lot 60 dudes ran through this one. Look at all the Freudian leaks. A lot of men are trash. A lot of men don't know how to treat women. A lot of men don't know at how- At least one of them had to have been a diamond. They, 60 dudes? What kind of study shows 60 dudes and they're all trash? One had to have been a star player, dude. Get the fuck out of here. How to really, quite frankly, pull their heads out of the sand and pay attention. So I am going to help you. And these are some of the things that I've experienced. And these are some of the things my friends have experienced. I, again, I'm just going to lay a few things out. They haven't all happened to me. Some of them have just happened to my friends. A lot of them have happened to me. So the first thing, and I've made notes, by the way. I've made notes. This is how invested I am in this because I've been thinking about this for about two weeks solid now. First. <laughs> 
And you fucking get mad that I hate this girl. Question for men. If you like a girl, if you're even somewhat interested in a girl, you need to ask yourself this question. You, you know what's the most attractive thing you could do when your girl starts acting up like this? Right? Just slowly grab, look at her notes, and she'll be like, oh, he's getting it. He's calmed down. He's getting it. And read the notes, and she's like waiting for your response, and just grab it and crumple it up and put it in your mouth and spit it out and be like, the fuck is this shit? And let her be scarred with that fucking whatever you just did that she tells all her friends. For the rest of her life, she'll be single telling people about you. Like, you'll be the carnivore in her life that she always dreams about, right? That's what you got to do. My twin brother says something so funny to me. He's like, it's so funny how you crush hopes and dreams. Where our liberal friends, we'll have like one or two liberal friends who go, Guys, I, I don't know if we should meet up because, like, it's COVID and we got to be, like, six feet apart. And it's just really not a safe idea to meet up right now. And everyone in the group chat kind of appeases this one friend. And they get so excited when I'm in chat once in a blue moon where he says that to me. And I go, actually, I'm coughing on people, bro. And, you know, I'm, like, joking, but I'm doing it with a straight face. And the guy's about to cry. And all my buddies are like, hold Zerka back. Hold Zerka back. He's going too far. And then when this guy t t caused so many problems in the group, everyone's like, I wish I started my friendship with that guy like Zerka. Because Zerka's good friends with him, but he don't fuck around with Zerka. Because Zerka will just immediately go for his feelings. I'll start making him cry. And no, everyone else appeased him, and now they have to live a life of going to the movies and appeasing him and babying him. He doesn't act like a baby when I'm there, though. When I'm there, hey, John. Like, he knows what's up. Like, I will never, ever let him get away with that shit. Are you single? No, I don't mean are you kind of single, seeing five people, dating somebody, still kind of in a relationship, kind of broken up, kind of on again, off again, kind of married, kind of divorced. Are you actually single, single? That means single. You have nobody. You have no complications. You have no attachments. You are actually single. That yeah, there doesn't exist for a successful guy, okay? That doesn't exist. Successful, good-looking chads are always taken. Work harder so we delete the other girls and take you. The fuck is wrong with you? Think I'm gonna fucking? I'm just gonna be fucking. I'm just gonna be right here. Are you fucking high? If you do that, I'll do that. How about that? But you won't. You need the attention. Guess what? I'm feeling a little feminine. I'm in my feelings. I need attention too, bitch. That is the first question, believe it or not, that needs to be asked. And ladies, you should be asking it because in 2020, it's not a given anymore that a guy that's actively pursuing you is actually single. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing. You got ran through and was always second to third option. That's why you're mad. Thing. <laughs> that I think is very important, that men don't seem to understand. Thank there are very few women out there, and I'm speaking from personal experience as well as from all of my friends and all the women, quite frankly, that I talk to. There is not a woman out there that wants to be your pen pal. She doesn't want to get your texts, your good morning texts, your good night texts, your random through the day texts, if they don't follow up with a plan to actually, here's the kicker, in person, hang out. Now, I know what you're saying. If the guy's not making a plan, it's because you are really bad at texting and you're turning him off. That you are literally plan Z in his book. When when the fat ugly bitch says I can't chill, that then it's you, Tommy. That's that's the that's what's happening. If he's just texting, he's not making a plan or calling or you know, he doesn't want to see you. He's dragging his feet. He's hoping you're having a playful day where he can smash, but he knows you're uptight, you're wound up, and you're just not it saying, oh, it's COVID, people can't hang out in person. This has not been a four-month problem. This has been a five-year problem that I've experienced with men. And my She's like those girls at those parties who do coke and then talk about really serious shit. I'm like, bitch, you're wasting the blow, you know? Where she just starts getting hyper-political at a party, and I'm like, yo, you know, I'm on your side and shit, but she calm the fuck down. You're like wasting this night. Like, everyone's turned off. My friends have experienced with men. Women do not want a pen pal. We don't want a texting pal. We quite frankly don't care if you text us all day or if you don't text us at all. If you're not going to make a plan to actually see us in person, not interested. And if you do have a woman out there that does- This is such a bad, this is such an unplanned B leak. This is such a bad leak she's doing. She wants to be your pen pal. It's probably because she has a boyfriend or a husband or a wife or whatever. We don't want a pen pal. But that also leads me to my second point. This is me backwards for you guys. Make plans. Make a plan. Yikes, this is so attractive. This is me backwards for you guys. Make plans. Make a plan. It's like your mom when you're late for school and it's 9.45.
or a husband right. or a wife. This is exactly your mom when you're brushing your teeth and you're brushing slow, too slow for your mom. Or whatever. We don't want a pen pal. But that also leads me to my second point. This is me backwards for you guys. Make plans. Make a plan. Do not assume that you can text somebody randomly in the middle of the day, what are you doing? Or text them at midnight or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or even just within hours of when you actually want to see them and think that they're going to be available. If someone texts you at midnight or at the end of the day, it means you are their last, last priority. Not his last thought before bed because he's so sweet. You're literally not three priorities and you're third. 1,000 priorities and you're like last, dude. You're like after his fucking chicken sandwich before bed. You're the last of the last. Available. I personally, once I get home and I take my makeup off and I'm watching TV, I'm no longer interested. So if you didn't make a plan earlier in the day or better yet, a day or two or three in advance, I'm not interested. I don't want to hang out anymore. Yeah, we don't want to hang out when it's daytime. It's gay. Any guy who goes on a daytime date is a fucking weirdo. Right? If the sun's not setting, I'm not even coming. I will never see someone during the day ever. I've never done it once. Didn't do it when I was 21 years old, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 7. I didn't even go out of my house because of COVID. But Because that ship has sailed. Make a plan. I want to hang out with you at this time. It doesn't have to even be a date. I want to see you at this time. Are you free at this time? What? It's either a date or fuck off. Why would you ever chill with someone? This time. Or when are you free? I will accommodate my schedule to see you. When are you free? I want to see you. I know it's not rocket science, but men of 2020, it seems like it's pretty difficult for you to figure out. And I'm not a feminist. You're getting played. They are the rocket scientists. So please don't take this as a feminist rant. I you're worse than a feminist. You're, you're like behind the trenches on our side, ruining everything. I love men. I think men are great. I think men have failed themselves and they failed us. And I'm just trying to help you out because I think there are a lot of really great guys out there who need a little help. And I don't think that there are a lot of women that are stepping up and saying these things and not FaceTime me, I swear to God. Do you have like anxiety? Quite frankly, I don't think that there are a lot of women that aren't raging feminists that don't look like Lena Dunham. They're saying these things to you. So I'm going to go ahead and say them because you're an op. I need to be said. I'm really so sick of my friends having to deal with trash men. I'm tired of dealing with trash men. So I'm going to help you out. Make plans. So let's go through these lists again because I know y'all love lists. Number one, are you single? Here's the game plan, you fucking retard. Go look at your happy, married, cute, feminine, hot, popular friend and be like her. Just be like her. What's up chilling with your friends who are getting ran through and single and hate men? <laughs> Try and be like the winner. Like, it's like if I saw a homeless guy kicking a soccer ball. I don't fucking go, I'm going to study him. I'll watch Ronaldo. Like, I'll watch who's winning. Why the fuck are you hanging out with your loser friends thinking, why am I a loser? Number two, make a plan. Nobody wants a pen pal. We want to actually see you. If not, don't text us because it's a waste of our time and we don't want to see it on our phones. Got it? All right. Next. Got it? All right. What the fuck? Thing. Value. Value. Okay? Value, value. Take that in. Just for Here's the problem. The average guy would still pipe this jig, but a successful Chad will be turned off because he's, he's not hypnotized by women like a regular guy he's a chad he's used to women so this is actually a zero zero turn on zero percent repeat it to yourself until it makes sense okay if you want to date a girl that has nothing going on then that's fine but please that's do not literally all we want that's my dream chick my dream chick my dream chick her only concern is if she took a shit that day she has nothing going on she walks around her house and goes what day of the week is it that's everyone's dream chick, okay? You high-functioning weirdo. You're like a freak. You're like, fuck it. You're like a rat. In, you're like the rats in the rat race that are freaking out. Like, where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? You know, you're scaring the fuck out of us. You're like a huge turnoff to us. Like, we want the rat that's like, should we turn left, John? And I can be like, no, the cheese is on the right. But we want a chill rat. We don't want to, hey, I'm a fucking, we need to get married. We need to, shut the fuck up. Not mix in people like me and my friends who have something going on with your other girls that have nothing going on. And by nothing. This is the type of girl to bite you when she's drunk. Like she's mad at you and she just. Arr. Nothing going on, I mean this. I don't, there is no job that is unimportant. There is no job that's not valuable or that's not worthy. It is. But if you want to mix in, People like me and people like my friends who are go-getters, who work really hard, who make- No, we don't want hardworking women. I don't know where you guys got this fucking myth from. The, we want a girl who her paycheck is finding fucking dollars in the, in the couch seats. 
She goes, I made $9 today, John. And I go, how? And she goes, Yo, I found these coins in the couch. And I go, babe, those are my coins. And she goes, oh. And she hands me them. And I pinch the bridge of my nose like, ah. Do better. And she goes, I know, John. Make their own money who are talented, skilled, ambitious. Please don't mix us in with the Tatianas. We don't want to be there. If that's what you want, find them. Please, for the love of God, do not mix us in with them because we don't want to be there. And quite frankly, we take it as an insult if we find out that you are also talking to five Tatianas who have nothing going on. People like me and my friends are going to be insulted by that. And there's almost really no coming back from it. So if you want that kind of girl, the kind of girl who's just kind of happy going through the motions of life, not really super ambitious, hasn't really found herself yet. That's exactly what men want. A beautiful zero ambition woman when you're ambitious as a woman you're kind of blocking our ambition sorry dude right we want a healer we want a cleric i'd like a priest i'd like a bishop but i don't want no dps warriors i don't want anything like me you fucking rat race freak that doesn't really have a whole lot going on other than she's pretty please just go after them and please do not mix us in we don't want to be there i promise you so value value there's a lot of women out there that I know that are my good friends who have amazing jobs, who work really hard, but who can't seem to find a decent guy, even if they go up in age, five to 10 to 15. Imagine this chick on blow, bro. She's the, probably the type that does blow and calms down. <laughs> she does blow and gets quiet and thinks about her future. <laughs> she goes, oh, fuck. 15 years, because those guys all want to be with 21 year olds who have nothing going on. It's very yeah, true unfortunate i don't think it's going to be fulfilling but i would say to the men out there try to maybe find a woman that you can talk to you communicate with might actually have her shit we don't want to talk to you nobody gets a gf to talk to them matter of fact if men were not physically attracted to women they'd never talk to them again they we would all go to a fucking island we would go to all man island we would never we would literally be like you know what maybe that fucking mars trip Maybe I want to sign up for that. If we weren't attracted, it would be game over. We'd be on a big Noah's Ark away from you guys. Together might actually be ambitious and have something going on or want to have something going on. I don't care what she does. She doesn't have to be on TV. She doesn't have to be a PhD. She doesn't have to be a television producer. She doesn't have to own her own company, but be ambitious and have something going on. Those women out there are- Just let Tucker Carlson hit it. That's all you got to do, right? I'm sure he'll take you. Right? Like, could you imagine Tucker smashing sarcastically? That's everyone's dream. That's every conservative woman's dream, right? Where he's just hitting it with pure sarcasm. So, you think this is good box, huh? Huh? Wouldn't say it's that bad. But what do I know? are going to be a lot more fulfilling to you. You're actually going to enjoy your time. And if you actually might want a sustainable and healthy and stable relationship, that's probably the kind of girl you're going to need to find. Not the Tatianas who just want to look cute and post Instagram stories. Now, I love a good Instagram story. Y'all know I do. I love a good boomerang. I love a good whatever. But if that's... I hate when people say y'all, but it's not actually how they speak. They're just trying to sound like us. You don't say that. Shut the fuck up. It sounds weird when you say it. You sound cringe. A lot more fulfilling to you. You're actually going to enjoy your time. And if you actually might want a sustainable and healthy and stable relationship, that's probably the kind of girl you're going to need to find. Not the Tatianas who just want to look cute and post Instagram stories. Now, I love a good Instagram story. Y'all know I do. I love a good boomerang. I love a good whatever. But if that's all you do, men, if that's all she does, probably Houston, we have a problem. I'm just going to let you in on a little. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. We found someone better than you, Tommy. And she's got nothing going on. Like, all she does is powder her face. She's just gorgeous. She does nothing. She gets ready for me. That's it. Right? She gets ready for me and scrolls on TikTok. She does nothing all day. Tip. The next thing on my list is this. Consistency. 
it really does not help me or my friends or any woman in general if you are really cool and you're really interested when you first start talking to them and then give it three, four, five days and all of a sudden you're not consistent anymore. You don't make plans. You don't really care. You kind of fade in and out. You're talking to five other Tatianas. Consistency is important. Now, if you want to be inconsistent and you want to ghost and you want to fall off the radar, that's fine. But I'm going to give you a pro tip. People like me and people like my friend. Bro, job interviews are less intense than whatever the fuck this cyber date co date dating coach shit is. This is just... <laughs> We aren't gonna really give a shit after that. We don't really care. The F's have been given and we're kind of done. I'll tell you this from The only time you should ever see energy like this from a woman is if you like said something about her sister like yo your sister has been working out Right, that's the only time this is acceptable where you go oh, fuck I gotta bite the bullet and apologize But like if this is for like you do you guys are just supposed to meet up for the first time. This is scary personal experience. Once I'm turned off, I am turned off and I don't care anymore. Cause at one point I probably did care. At one point, my friends, they probably did care. They probably did like you cause you expressed interest and maybe you were cool. And maybe you were kind of fun to hang out with, but if you're not consistent, yeah, that's when we wanted to pipe. Now we're done with that. We're bored, right? Bye. We're done with you. You failed. You turn, it turns out you're a freak of nature, right? It turns out you took, you took my nut from me. You pretended to be sweet, but you're actually a freak of nature. And you stole my nut from me, and now I want to I want to piece it. You're not cool. You're not chill. You're weird as fuck. Consistent, and you fall off the radar. I give you maybe one to two chances to fix that because I'm a very direct communicator. Women, this is important. I will communicate to you. If your communication isn't great, I will let you know that. I will let you know that more effort is needed. But if you don't heed that warning, and I have to warn you twice, I'm done at that point because I don't really care anymore. Now I'm done. Now I don't care. And I know my friends who are watching this are thinking and saying the same thing. Chicks will do all this yapping all day. I'm communicating right now. Just pipe your man. That's the only communication. He goes nowhere and he's sweet. It's not fucking rocket science. Just blah, 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 blah. Oh, why doesn't he want to pipe now that I did the blah, blah? It's like, dude, your communication, 90%, it was a 99% of human communication is non-verbal. Go do your job. Stop doing this yapping shit. Ain't nobody got... The only person who would deal with her is me. I'd be like, oh, bitch, are we debating? Yeah, I don't even like piping. Let's fucking debate. But that's like one in a zillion men, right? I would stick around until she's fucking in jail. <laughs> I'd put her ass in jail. <laughs> I'd be like, at the end of this debate, you're getting locked up. Because we have these conversations on an almost daily basis. Once you turn us off, dude, I wish I recorded all those arguments with my ex before the police came. I feel like if I recorded the whole thing, you guys would say she's the funniest person on earth, bro. Like at one point, you know how I breathe funny when I'm sleeping? Should you breathe like a fucking bug, like the dog? And uh, I always know someone's funny if I actually get insecure. Like, I'm like, do I breathe like that? Your bitch got to me, man. Like, she fucking destroyed me. Right? Yeah. And you know why it all started? It wasn't even all that stupid shit. I was on my phone. She opened the door, walks in, stares at me, waiting for me to be like, hey, let's talk and apologize. And I just keep looking at my phone. I'm watching some YouTube video. And then she closes the door waits out in the lobby for 20 seconds and then opens it again to see if I'll turn my head and I don't turn my head. And then that's how it all started. That. If I just turned around and be like, hey, none of that $5,000, none of that would have happened. But I didn't want an argument. <sighs> yeah. Which is weird. Me, after seven months of arguing, didn't want an argument. I must have lost. I I lost, so I put her in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, don't ever type that in chat, bro. Off, we don't care anymore. So let that be a warning to you. You're probably not going to circle back. They always come back. They always come back. You don't just breathe like a dog. You act like one too. Oh, look, Tommy Lauren is on her alt in chat. Like, we know who you are, dude. But when you're ready to come back... I probably don't care anymore. So if you want to switch up, stay there. 
Protest. This, this is so cute. She's like, when you're back, I don't care anymore. I don't care that you broke your elbow. Oh, wow. You clearly do. You're fucking up. Th- you're like wound up, man. The scariest thing is when girls go, they'll give you like this whole speech for two hours and they'll be like, and I don't care about you anymore. It's like, wow, dude. You know who actually doesn't care about me? The person who just doesn't talk to me. You give me a two hour speech. You're clearly in deep, bro. My last thing on my list is also very important. Don't be, excuse my language, don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Holy, we're peak projection now. What the fuck? <laughs> wait, wait, this is scary, dude. This is like the lowest level of self-awareness we've achieved on this stream. Don't be a bitch. If you have then failed and you lost a woman of value like myself or my friends, and then we don't really care anymore. Don't- a woman of value would mean you don't have a job and you shut the fuck up. <laughs> like you're missing the two components, right? Don't be a bitch. Don't be butt hurt. You did it to yourself. Okay? And it's no longer my problem. Now it's become a personal problem of yours. So don't be a bitch. And by the way, if I- <laughs> It's so weird how God made the world where he said, women, you will have paradise. You have the greatest man and money. You'll have everything this world has to offer if you just shut the fuck up. And then women go like, I'm no longer interested because you're- <laughs> They just like, can't do it. They forfeit. They go with the devil instead. Effort is shitty. That's not me being a bitch. That's not me being difficult. That's me having a standard in oh. which I expect from people. I do have high standards and high expectations. My friends have high standards and high expectations. Do you want to know why? We've worked for those, okay? We work hard. We're successful. We take care of ourselves. We try to look cute. We are, have a, a desire to be something more each day. Every girl I've ever dated chases me around doing this to me when they're drunk, where they're in my face. And they're like, and this is why I care about you, but you're fucking up. And when I walk out that door, it's going to be over. And me, I'm so toxic that I don't say, shut the fuck up. This is what I do. I go... Tell me more. And then they think I actually want to hear more, right? And in my head, I'm just giggling. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, doesn't she know I'm like a caveman? Like, I'm just here to pipe and follow you around. Like, I don't actually want to communicate. I don't, I don't even know if we're the same species. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I'm just fucking, I'm just following my impulses, dude. <laughs> I didn't want the conversation. I'm kidding. Okay, that's why we have the ability to be somewhat what you call difficult. It's not difficult. We just have a baseline standard. Bro, this is way too difficult, bro. You exhausted me. You exhausted me. I don't even know who the fuck you are. And if you can't meet that standard, that's okay. Think about it. We can't handle you for 12 minutes. Imagine living with this person 12 hours a day. A lot of men cannot. But if you are one of those men out there, and I, I have them all over my DMs, sometimes I check them, and you guys are like, what would it take to be with someone like you? What would it take to be with your friends? What are girls like you? What are they looking for? I laid them out for you very simply there. In order to have a shot with a girl like me. She's just dangerous, right? Because if you have a conservative lifestyle with this girl, right? Conservatives carry guns, right? And as she's talking, you just like put the gun to your head and you go, it's finally time to end. I'm kidding or girls like my friends, girls that are worth a damn, you don't really have to be Brad Pitt. If don't ever kill yourself, just stop dating that. You don't have to be famous. You don't even really have to make a lot of money or have a really fantastic job. You just have to be determined. You have to be in some way successful in that you want to attain some certain kind of success for yourself. You're driven. You have goals. You can handle a woman with standards. That's not going to turn you off. And you're going to put in the effort to be with somebody like myself or my friends. But you guys don't even know what you want. Like girls always say, I want a guy with goals. And then they end up getting piped by a drug dealer. Have you noticed that? I knew this one drug dealer in my city who would be in like $30,000 in debt, living a nice lifestyle. And then I'm like, bro, you know, these girls you have are going to leave you when they find out you're in debt. And he's like, Zerka, you don't get how it works. They stay with me. This one stays with me. The other one flies out. They stay with me four months. I go into heavy debt. But when they find out that I'm broke, the bond's already there. And they just keep coming back for life. I'm like, what? He's like, once the bond is formed, you kind of won the game. And I'm like, oh, so it's like an investment? He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's in debt to this day, and he still has women. It's so weird. 
We deserve that. And we will not compromise our standards. I tell you this, it will be a cold day in hell when I chase a man. And I know that's the same thing for my friends as well. And if my friends are listening and they're thinking about chasing a man, please, for the love of God, do not. Because there is not, not one single man on planet Earth, okay, that is worth making any woman feel like she is not good enough. I don't care how hot a girl is, how smart, how successful, how rich. We have all dealt with men who treat us like we are not good enough. No, the problem is we are too enough and you can't handle it. So those are my checklists. Again, I will go. <laughs> we are too enough. <laughs> you're so enough that you're miserable. I'll go through them for you one more time in case you are just tuning in. Number one, are you single? No, really. Two, make plans. We don't want a pen pal. Three, value, value. Value someone who has value. Consistency, be consistent. Don't be great and then fade out. And then don't fade out and then think that you're going to fade back in. It's so weird that she doesn't understand male physiology at all, psychology at all, that everything she did here broadcasted the lowest levels of arousal. Right? Or excuse me. It kind of shows you that you're never going to have that play land with her, right? These men are just looking for play. They want to play house. They put you in the house. They live with you. And it's like when you're getting the lowest levels of arousal, then it's like, dude, you kind of killed 99% of the fun. I'm not really here for this part. This is kind of like masculine. Because it ain't going to work. And last but not least, if all else fails, don't be a bitch. Hope you guys have all enjoyed my PSA, my Instagram live. I love you all. Hope I gave you some valuable tips and advice. But hey, those are just my final thoughts from Nashville, Tennessee in my kitchen. God bless and take care. It's kind of cute. She was in the kitchen. <clears throat> she belongs in the, war, in the war zone, right? She's meant for masculine shit. Qualities, right? Like, I'm sure you have certain qualities that are uh, uh, great, I guess. I don't I haven't seen it. But what I find very... In life, you can either be a bald-based guy or Hassan strange about this is like you are building a world or you are reinforcing a world in which like men view you as simply just an object of desire and a good wife and nothing else this is the spectrum of cringe <laughs> you go too far on each side you become one of these caricatures but you don't even have those qualities you're chirping on the internet you don't know how to churn butter all you know how to do is yap 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 and you don't even look good so what the f are you doing you're not hot and all you know is how to do a podcast where you're chirping all the time so who the f is gonna choose you in the society that you have cultivated it's as if hasan Abi went buck wild and said that everyone above five seven had to shave their legs amputated while being a runner she's going against their own interests yeah exactly i love a side check very good question and this is a long and in-depth answer but it's a good question let me peel my clementine but um no but it's a good question where it's too far i think publicly disrespecting is too far so like you'll you'll notice let's take the moscow g right let's take an oligarch billionaire from moscow he has his wife he has the girls he's in the club with the girls he's in the club with wouldn't dare message his wife they wouldn't dare step out of line. Like, they know their place, right? So if there's a hierarchy and they know their place, that's one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Spending money on a girl, certainly, yeah, because men show love primarily through our through our hard work. Not just through our resource, but through our hard work. If you take a man who's not particularly rich, he... Bro, this is so fucking stupid. He, he is so... Oh, God. I love when he starts talking about, like, what men should do in relationships. Because he's such a f***ing uber. Listen, if you are an Andrew Tate fan still, like, and I myself am, you know, I'm a big fan of Andrew. If you think he's giving you the blueprint of how to behave in a relationship, your girlfriend, if you are ever even lucky enough or, you know, found someone who was dumb enough not to see how much of a fucking child you are, they're going to f*** someone else. They're going to cheat on you. One million percent. And it, it will be your fault. The only thing... I don't know if Tate gives you a blueprint for relationships, but he definitely gives you a blueprint on how to get laid. You know, like following Tate will get you m laid more. I'm not even... I'm not coping. Trust me chicks who just want to pipe are into that energy you've seen it you've seen it with everyone man but for relationships he can he can really mess you up you can offer a woman is material security or like supposed physical security and you treat them like they're not human beings or cattle and you try to cheat on them they're gonna cheat on you they're gonna fuck you over and you're gonna kind of deserve it let's be real relationships are supposed to be conducted on the basis of mutual respect and self-assurance if you do not have confidence, if you are just reeking with insecurity, you are not going to be able to actually respect your partner. And if you do not respect your partner, your partner's not going to respect you. To the people who are saying, lol, Tate has so much trouble finding a girl. Are you f joking? You think this m has been in a real relationship ever, dude? What are you talking about? It's the fresh and fit dichotomy. The only type of girls that you want to have on your show are girls with like, are girls that want to make uh, their Instagram cloud pop off. 
And of course, their perspective is going to be skewed. And then they make it seem like all women are that way. Okay. I don't believe that. I think before the clout, he did fine with women. And some of those women are fine, by the way. They're perfectly fine. Uh, the, the fresh and fit girls. But some of them aren't. Okay. There's a lot of dumb bitches out there. It's the same for men and women. The difference is when you see a dumb bitch who's a man, you don't think all men are dumb bitches like this. But when you see a dumb bitch who's a woman, you go, oh, this is how all women are. That's how it works. But you just assume they're all they're all this way. You just have a monolithic understanding of a marginalized group. He shows his wife love by getting up every day, going to work nine to five, working his ass off and paying those bills. Well, that's how he shows love. That's why he does it for his wife and his children. Most men are out here working bullshit jobs, carrying trash. They're doing that to show love. So show, giving money, yeah, that would be a far more scary indicator than just sex. Let me give you all an example. I don't know if you all know my history, but I used to run a webcam business a long time ago. Don't want to talk about it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I had a bunch there. of girls who... <sighs> Stop making fun of the trash man, Andrew. Okay? Stop. That's more noble than that fucking cam business. Just so sit online and talk to guys and they had laptops, right? This is a long time ago. And I used to sit and say to some of the webcam girls, I'd say, this man who is sitting in and logging in every night and sending you money every day and telling you he's obsessed with you from the other side of the world and missing out on time with his family to sit here and talk to you and send you money. That is more cheating than if he just went out and banged something. If he went out and banged something and came home, yeah, then yeah. done. But he's sitting here giving you his time, his money, his affection. That's cheating for a man. For a man to sit there and give money and time away, right? Yeah. So you have to stop this idea of sexual exclusivity. Yes, that's for females. That's how females show their love to men. It's not <laughs> how high status, at least, males show their love to females. And, and anyone who wants to disagree with me, call me wrong, call me misogynist, whatever bullshit. Yep. Look at a history book. Every king, every sultan, every conqueror, every emperor, every knight, mm. all of them. All of them had maidens, wives. All this is like the biggest retard take here. He has right and this goes off the assumption that everyone in society is a king some fucking liberal nonsense of like we're all just we're all we're all just building our own empire right i'm building my empire with my girlfriend we're busy building our empire and it's like ugh, just how you talk about hierarchies and then do this right and i know it's a sales tactic to say everyone can leave the matrix that's a sales tactic. He knows that's not true. Most people are never getting out. That's the that's the call it black pill. I call it I call that shit tasty because I'm out of it. Oh, that's that's history. What level of no. G do you have to be to be allowed to cheat? I'm not saying they can't get out of the matrix like most people. I'm saying they never will it. They will never will it into the universe. They won't. They don't have it. They don't want it. They just won't. The fact that they don't want it is way worse than the, than thinking they don't have the DNA to do it. You know, they ju it just won't happen. They will never will it. Most people will never will it. Right. That's why we're at war. Right. But most people are frozen and shell shocked, and that's really what the Matrix is. Is like shell shocked to leave it, fucking part time or full time minimum wage job and start a business and Tim was saying how he lives life transactional now with every girl and basically tells aunt to keep the girl out after he nuts no joke he said it on stream dude this is like unironically teaching an entire generation of boys to just be like the most awful humans dude you are never gonna have you are never gonna have like a genuine loving relationship well, oh, no, no. it's not about even being a you don't believe what I'm saying? Go watch Andrew Tate supporters IRL yelling top G, top G, and you'll know exactly what I mean by the hierarchy, right? Like this is a mountain and a lot of people are at the base level. Allowed to cheat. I'm not even saying that. He said, if you feel attacked by what he said, you might be part of the issue. Brother, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm a multimillionaire 31 year old who women thirst after publicly on the internet. Do you think I'm a part of the problem? Do you think I'm actually being uh, uh, like genuinely harmed here? Like, are you fucking stupid? Open your eyes, idiot. Like, Jesus Christ, 90% of the fucking criticism that I receive is because I have a nice car and I bought a house. All the shit that Andrew Tate unironically uses as, like, a talking point to make himself seem like a better person, I avoid talking about, and yet my haters constantly bring it up as a fucking own! Also, it depends on the partner you're with. I'm not trying to sit here and advocate for men to run around and fuck a bunch of women. I'm not saying that. That's I'm what you're doing, No, but I'm not. No, no, no. Let him explain. Let him land. Let him land. It's about to come. Now, what's this? Let him land, though. No, but I'm not. I'm not. What I'm actually trying to do is describe... This is a hard pivot that Tate took. It's almost like he... I guess he read his criticism, right? I guess he read his criticism, and this is the biggest pivot he took. And pivot doesn't mean bad thing. This is the best pivot he took. Try the baseline unfortunate realities of human dynamics. Mm. And, and I'm trying to explain now to the world that any woman can get a man who will not cheat on her. 
if she's prepared to sacrifice a bunch of other things, perhaps, right? In the olden days, it was different. The world was a different place. It was a completely different place, and it was better. Now it's all fucked up. It's fucked up on every level. And men, especially the high stakes... You can't go back to the olden days now that you have birth control and women are in the workforce. You need, like, a different game plan. And the game plan is stop bitching about going back to the old days if you're not actually turning society into sharia law or a christian society you got to pick one you can't do this whole talk about the old days but really don't want to do anything about it pick one and fucking turn the wheel bitch men most of them have struggled so hard to become high status they've been through so much shit to get where they are it's like telling him if you climb here's what's so scary about the red pill or the red movement the red movement doesn't realize that slut shaming comes from the church it doesn't come from just hey mom as a caveman my dna and my chemicals in my brain and no that's fucking retarded let go of the atheism bro you you got to know where you're trying to go like everyone paints this 1950s image in their head but they won't actually pull out the fucking cross and say i want this they'll say well i don't think we can do it without the cross john Okay, has it been done before? No, never, bro. It, you have to go to the... I don't even care if you're not religious. You have to be on my side for that. In this mountain, you go to a candy store. And he climbs to the top of the mountain. And the second he's in the candy store, after one piece of candy, that bitch is saying, no, no more candy. He's like, no, I just climbed this mountain. I just got rich. I just went through X, Y, Z. I finally got here. I'm finally in the candy store. And now you're telling me I can only have one piece of candy? The candy is really the apple from uh, the Garden of Eden, right? And I don't like this take where it's like, hey, you enjoy all the candy at the top. Well, Khabib doesn't do that, okay? It's, a, it's such a weird thing to motivate people with candy. Like, you got a lot of tits and ass at the top. No, you got a lot of respect and legacy at the top. That's what you want. That is everlasting. That's who goes to the top, right? People who go to the top for tits and ass, they don't stay there that long. Okay, what man's gonna agree with that shit? Do you think, do you think, do you... Bro, that's sad. That's literally sad. You are a child. This is how he's a... Nobody wants to be Khabib. Are you kidding? One in the chat, if you just want a fucking wife and kids. You don't want this Tate shit. You don't want this candy shit. Everyone wants this, dude. I'm a fucking Chad with billions of girls in my life. I want it. How the fuck do you not want it? You got no chicks. I think when I was 14, holy shit. You want to get so much power and so much money, specifically so you can fuck a bunch of women? Like, bro... There are so many broke boys out there that are, are that are already doing that. They just look wrong. Good. This is the biggest misconception ever. This is the greatest Chad lie I hear. Okay. Broke men get put. Broke chads get pussy, but it's temporary. They cannot actually sustain the, their new paradise of their hot chick and blah, blah, blah. They can't sustain the lifestyle. They lose her, which is probably is probably the saddest thing in the world to, to like have a bunch of fun with this like model ass chick and blah, blah, blah. And then you lose her because you can't sustain her because you're broke. That's horrible. That's like, you don't want to do that. This broke thing needs to be deleted from your head like being broke is not an option good they're a little bit more confident some of them are skaters okay that's what it is it's just like no one no one is this fucking insecure this publicly without having millions of dumb motherfuckers not recognize that he is so insecure overcompensating for said insecurity through material possessions i'm losing my fucking mind i feel like I, i'm watching a kid okay i'm watching a grown-ass man was still stuck being a fucking child so deeply and undesirably immature and he just basically hit the kid lottery and was able to get money okay by scamming other kids sometimes literal kids talking about sex all the time is sure a sign of sickness uh, kind of right yeah but wiseman donated five dollars never look for a wife only seek god and his right way and he will add everything else for you base nobody disagrees this guy who says talking about sex all the time is an illness it's a sickness it actually comes from loneliness yeah 
It's like losers do it. Most of the time, adults that have kid brains. And he just keeps reinforcing that same bullshit. Like, he's like, yes, when you have money, you can fuck a lot of bitches. It's like, oh, you can fuck a lot of bitches when you're, bro uh, when you're broke. You just can't be, you know, reeking, oozing with insecurity. That's one thing you can't do. And, uh, you know, maybe you'll be able to pay for it when you have money, okay? But again, they're not there for you. You're just a wallet with an ugly, weirdly shaped cock at that point, <laughs> okay? And if you don't look within and you don't actually change things about yourself, you are always going to be that person. And you're never going to be happy. If you think women are just like, you know, pussy holes that you've come inside of and not like an actual partner that you are looking for, like a life partner that you're looking for that supports you in your weak moments, in times of need, you know what I mean? That builds you up, that pushes you to the next step. If you think that it's just like, if that's not what a relationship is like, you're never going to be in a good relationship. You are going... Yeah, women aren't really there to support you in your times of need. They're there to support your kids. They're not even designed to support male problems. It's like, <laughs> you play Mario Kart with her when you're sad, but that's about it. You're going to be lonely for the rest of your life, constantly upset. You're going to die alone. Maybe you'll be lucky enough to, like, have grandchildren, okay? Maybe you're lucky enough to have children, but they're going to fucking despise you. It's sad. It's sad as and that's the scariest part about this is that, like, this is the type of shit that works really well on young kids, okay, who do not have the emotional maturity. Their growth is stunted. They don't see it. They look at the flashy things. They look at the color. They look at the fucking shapes, and they go, oh. Hassan, you believe in one million different genders. Oh, that's great. He has it. He has it. What he has is some level of wealth, and, and that's it. That's why that's the only thing he fucking promotes constantly. Look at my car. I have a Bugatti. Look at my private jet. I have a Bugatti. I have a Bugatti. I have nice clothes. I'm killing it. Half of that shit is fake anyway. But, like, that's the dumbest part about this is that, like, he hasn't even achieved the success in the field that he's talking about. Do you think that men owe a woman loyalty if she was there from the beginning? Absolutely. They absolutely owe that woman loyalty. Oh, sorry. Sexual loyalty. That's what I meant. Sexual, hey. sexual exclusivity yeah, yeah. is different. Men. It's not just women. Men, everyone in your life who's there from with you from the beginning, you owe them. It's not just a girl, right? It's your parents, your brothers. Hell, depending how, how good you do, it could even be cousins and extended cousins, right? Sorry, I mean, sexual exclusivity and loyalty are completely disconnected <laughs> from males. Nobody wants to talk about this, but it's the unfortunate reality is true. I'm telling you, you can get a man, he can go on a holiday, can fuck some stripper, can come home, and you can lie detector test him. Do you love your wife? Would you die for your wife? Would you take a bullet for your wife? That it, he'll pass the lie detector test. He loves- You don't understand. Let me respond to you by completely making up a situation. Like, what does that mean, bro? The only way to agree with this is if you already agree with the things that he's saying. It's hard to do anything for her. It's just, it's just pussy. It's not okay. a big deal. It's but different. I, I feel like, I guess my question would be then is like, how do you view sex? Because I, I like- Pause. Listen, Brittany. Here's something no chick will admit, right? I'm a loyal guy, but I'll still defend Tate's opinion here. Look at this. Here's the truth. That's female psychology. That if she knows you'll never leave her, like God came down and showed her images in her head, the cheating wouldn't even bother her that much. It would be like you went to the get some groceries. But it's against her biology to admit that. Sex at the end of the day is spiritual unification. I feel like I've gone through a lot of different stuff. I've had a lot of different experiences where I did not. Okay, you had a million spiritual unifications, bro. Like, look, I'm not going to lie, dude. If you've had many partners, God gave up on you. Okay, like there's only so many chances you get until God is like, okay, fuck this shit. Like, how many times are you going to spit in God's face? And think you're going to get away with it. At some point you sold your soul. To the fucking devil. Okay. I value myself. So I never had a man that valued me. So it's like yeah you rack. That's bro right there. Lover, hater, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. I don't give a shit. That point is unironically infinitely more adult than Andrew Tate. And anything he's ever said. Yes that is uh, Brittany Renner. No like that, that literally is. That is true. If you don't value yourself, then you will never get someone to value you, okay? A lot of men do this all the time, where they're like, 
constantly desperate for pity pussy or they're just like desperately fucking texting over and over again. Or um, I guess on the inverse universe, Andrew Tate would call this putting a pussy on a pedestal. Why are you doing that? If someone doesn't want to spend time with you, then why the f do you want to spend time with them? Find someone else. Uh, guys and guys, you shouldn't be texting back or whatever. But I feel like there, I understand that there is a difference with how men view sex. This woman, just like all women, cannot have God without a man. Without marriage, they will never, ever have the connection. They won't have the oversoul. They won't have the protection. Like, dude, it's it's such a clear-cut thing for you. Just get married. And how they move around in the world. But it's like... Sex is a sacred thing, no matter a male or female is doing it. So that's why for me, like my biggest, like the hardest for me to understand is like, this is such a, a, a sacred thing. And it's just being, it's like a, taking a piss for a guy. Can I, can I just say something? You sure you weren't making love to somebody who was having sex? I'm sorry? You weren't, you sure that you weren't making love to somebody with, that was just having sex? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's a nice, that's Have I the only reason why she said that is to break her down, by the way. That's so catty. She straight up fucking hit her with that. Just, it's not productive. It's not a productive reason to fucking bring it up. But she only wanted to say that to break her down. Like, oh, you thought you were having a spiritual unification, whereas he was just you. It's just like, it's just to make her feel bad. 100%. And also, not every interaction, not every inter sexual interaction has to be spiritual, okay? I you have to have that opinion because you're a degenerate who loves that shit. You know? When I make mistake mistakes and hook up, I repent. In 21, 23 years old, I was repenting. You have to have that opinion so you can keep piping. But deep down, you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Everyone knows what they're doing. I don't, I don't even agree with that take in t with its entirety. I just agree with the fact that like you have to value yourself first. Confidence comes from within. And if you are confident and if you value yourself. It's a life-creating ritual that if done wrong is just blood magic. That's what nut is, it's blood plasma. It's a blood magic ritual if you do it wrong. You're not supposed to do it with just anyone. You're supposed to start a fucking family, bro, hurry up. Then you can find a healthy and productive partner, okay? No, th that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like as women, they make love mm -hmm. to men that are just having sex. Right. That's but the that, difference. That's not the point. What, but my thing is, okay. I think, not all I the think, time. So I think when men hear that, though, it's like if it was sacred to you, you would have waited till you were married. But it's and like I, I get, right? No, I yeah, get, I get yeah. that. But the, the reality is, is that the world is not so black and white. So I understand that there are these things in place that worked and made sense, and now we're approaching an era that like we don't know what's going to happen. But there's gray area. You've had sex. I've had sex. She's had sex. We've had sex with different guys. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we're damaged goods. We're used goods. I understand status. It's yes, it does. That's why you have a podcast about being damaged. That's why this is the most reoccurring topic on your, on your show. The big part of that, I understand that sex is viewed differently, but I feel like you should not, if you're, if you're looking at face value, I can understand why you would be judged from your past. But if, if I'm a guy. This is why I can't wait to pop off. Cause when I'm on here, I'm not going to be quiet. Like Tate, I'll be like, Brittany, you're overdosing on cope. Right. Someone needs to tell her. Interested in you? I don't care about what you've done. But, but, no, but no, that's the thing. Is, like, like men, men do though. That, that's the thing. Like, like a, a virgin's more valuable to a man than a girl that's had sex. <laughs> Fuck this stream. Jewish labor bun. Fuck this stream. Gonna go hang out with my family or something. Listen. That's productive, okay? Uh, but uh, the modern man's solution even, is not even, a virgin. A modern man needs a partner, somebody that's actually smart it, and can it, survive in the world of it, today. But I'm the men with and the that's going to be a lift woman. Most, the men with the most choice are going to pick women that are more pure in general. The ones that are already like, self-made, I guess so. But that's the thing. The reality too, is, like. the reality is. Bro, I swear, I think she's saying that specifically. She's like, yeah, men really want virgins, right? You really want a virgin, right? Come on. Like a virgin that wears like a, like a bonnet that specific. No, it's not about them being a virgin. It's that, let's look at the alternative. High body count means they're demonically charged. That's why women with high body counts are single moms who raise murderers. Most of the time, they even know deep down what they're doing to their child. And they still allow that chaos into the world. If they're not aborting the child, you understand? They're demonically charged, meaning their whole frequency, their whole existence is for evil specifically went and bought that dress to look more like that meme the trad calf like meme right that's what men want right 
Like someone who definitely hasn't ever had sex. Come on, please. Like maybe a virgin who has a podcast. Listen, there's nothing wrong. If you want to preserve your virginity, go off, okay? Have fun. That there's a lot of men out there, especially in the world that we live in today, that need a partner. So it's time for those masses of men to start respecting women for the role they can play in their I lives. Don't think, I don't do, think average men expect women do you know to be what it virgins. Is? Do you know Look, women, if you want leverage and power over a guy and make sure he never goes anywhere, be a gorgeous bombshell who keeps their V-card till 25 years old. Since all these women, every single one of them are complaining about how their life sucks, why don't you do the opposite of what they do and see, just check out, check out the results. You know, one chick sold her, some degenerate sold her V card on eBay for like $2 million. I'm not saying do that, but I'm saying like, there's no way you're watching everyone fail. And then you're like, I'm going to do what everyone else is doing. It's like, what the fuck? Is. But it's this rhetoric that actually then is pumped into these minds and creates what people are not complaining about the misogynistic world. No, you know? That's what it is. Even in schools, it's, be, it's like permeated it, it through it all and perpetuated. Why is it misogynistic for men to prefer, prefer women that are more? It's pure? not that. It's but it's not. That's not the problem. The problem is now. Listen, the maths is very simple. You've got people like Andrew Tate talking about these things with such clarity. And it makes so much sense because it is true. Right. And then you have men that are in these situations where just average working an average job and they cannot fulfill whatever definition is called to be a man in these. Yes, they can. And that's no, what he said. He did no. say that. Yes, they can. No, uh, a nine to five man can do it. But then again. But wait, wait. This is the thing. What we're talking about as a man. And this is why I say it's very important for us to understand the person that we're speaking to. And I'm very glad. I just don't think Andrew wants to be around women. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I, I think legitimately, like we make the jokes and uh, we say like he's. But who does Hassan? Who? kind of zesty whatever he's a bit queer coded like all this stuff is whatever right like they're true but i just don't think he likes women in general there are a lot of misogynistic men who still like love the idea of a woman you know what i mean who like still want to uh, i don't even like women like men <laughs> to have like a partner but they never really quite understand why they can't get one because they just are like oozing with like undesirable traits that women know at least experienced women know to avoid andrew on the other hand doesn't strike me as the type of person who has any interest in women whatsoever it's like every single time you see him around women it just look it just feels like he's just disgusted that you clarified everything that you mean not every man is like andrew tate i don't think he's disgusted i think he's bored right <laughs> not every man is going to be able to even realistically demand like andrew tate's wondering how he went from being a misgif emote to algorithm daddy certain things from a woman so the same way, way women need to compromise if it comes to a man who is going to cheat on her because he's a top g is the same way men are going to have to compromise and stop no, blabbing about purity yeah, 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 when they can't you, know, right. no, you, you didn't no. get none of what you, you didn't get none of what you. dude it's like how can there be an argument like this where just pretty much every single person is in the wrong like they have different perspectives on a matter but they're all wrong i haven't heard like one good take so far it's wild it is kind of interesting to watch like a group of individuals who are seemingly arguing with one another but they're like all wrong in different ways. That's made my point. That was the whole point. Duh. That, what point? Well, duh. What? Because you just quoted him. You just said about his no. thing and you didn't. No, 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 you no, did no, I get I made my point. You I said the average man does not have what it takes to demand you know for what? a virtual you know, you know, award. You know, the he already said that. He already said and that. And I reiterated you know in my own words for my own. Yeah, no, you said, no, did you not hear what you said? No, I did. I think she's wrong. Oh, well, you know, men need to take an L because they're not all top Gs. So they can't like make demands out of women and or, or sorry uh women need to take an l and uh you know recognize she's basically saying everybody needs to hold an l and like date within their range or uh you know uh, temper their expectations to what their qualities are right like that's wrong if you are confident in yourself you can you can have certain expectations out of a relationship and you will inevitably find someone who also is fine with those expectations yes i do agree with like dating within your dating pool or whatever the fuck, right like uh, that, that sense of entitlement that a lot of boys have unironically creates this weird space literally are like saying oh well i want like the top you know i want i want a girlfriend i want to fuck someone but like no one wants to fuck me but they're like not really going after anybody that they potentially could in their immediate vicinity that they could talk to or whatever like they are also unaware that they're trying to hook up with like the hottest women you know what i mean because they feel entitled to that they just can't comprehend it but ultimately yes you are right the dating pool is pretty subjective and somewhat vague exactly you didn't content for my page and you so know what it is right uh -huh. is that too many women they see regular guys and they feel they're settling you're not settling you're getting what you deserve but you can't be asking right. for not a virgin, though. No, no, You're not saying it. You can't. But the difference is men know this. Like, most average men aren't demanding. The, oh, the average men know what they, 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 they want. But the difference is different. But the difference is different. Wait, wait, wait. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. She's lying. The idea of, like, hypergamy being an exclusive female trait is so fucking stupid. 
It's something that I talk about all the time. Hypergamy, the idea that like uh, red pillars always present, which is like, like women always want to date up. They want to find like the sexiest, most like financially stable partner, the most powerful partner they can. That's such an idiotic take because it's like, dude, men want that too. There is not a single guy out there who's like, nah, I want someone that's ugly. Why? That is- No, they don't. Men, men barely marry sevens. What man is trying to marry a nine? That never happens. Right? What are you talking about? inherently a false statement because beauty is subjective you are not going to look for someone who you don't find attractive to you it's very stupid nobody's like nah man i want specifically someone that i cannot stand to look at i just can't stand to look at them that's what i want that's what really turns me on no everybody 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 wants who they find desirable that's it wait, wait the difference is average men know they don't deserve a 10 they know they don't deserve an eight they know they don't even deserve a seven and they still and go the messaging them on the stores no, and no, do this dumb stuff not, it's just ugly. Like most men in history haven't even reproduced and so it's like men know but we the women are the ones that are delusional there's that's regular men Lizzo. out there there's regular Shooting men out there chris hemsworth there's chris hemsworth there's regular men out there that, <laughs> yeah, will, that will have you down this is a human trait okay that's it you're describing a human trait and saying that it's only women that do this okay the idea that, like, the idea that, uh, you know, women want Chris Hemsworth. Women only want Chris Hemsworth. It's like, women think that they deserve Chris Hemsworth. Like, that Lizzo is a two? Wait, what? Chris There's Hemsworth. There's regular Lizzo. men out there. There's regular Shooting men out there. Chris Why is she so generous with Lizzo? Hemsworth. Why is that a problem? Like, why is that a problem? Everyone should shot shoot or shoot you are the last person to be involved in ranking women's attractiveness man what are you doing you're opening up the door to people being ruthless to you how do you not understand this your entire audience is now built on top of like resenting women and only only caring about them as objects of desire what the f you're so stupid it's so dumb to just be like Lizzo is a two it's like bro but i saw you do that on your streams if it was a q and on woman you would be making fun of how ugly she is. You do it all the time, actually. It's like, what the fuck is the difference? Bro, what do you mean? Do you not see what's going on right now? You don't subscribe to traditional Western beauty standards either. It's worth. There's regular men out there that yeah, will, that will have you down. Two, two. Yeah, but can I just say, people are I watching Tate, I I not that. understanding that Tate is part of that 1% of the of And they but, think but, that they can demand the same thing. No, no, they, they can okay. demand well, purity. They, they, well, one, second, one second, one second. Sorry, sorry. I understand the point you're all making, but let's understand something. To the sexual marketplace, females have always been, and still to a degree, are the gatekeepers. It's men will, you can think about it in a very simplistic way. This is not the case, but let's simplify it for the sake of argument. Imagine men will run around and fuck anything, and women are the ones who say yes or no. You are the gatekeepers that have all the power. And this is what's actually truly interesting about the sexual marketplace, because whenever women go, there's not enough good men, nah, 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 then why are you fucking, them? of course, why would they be good if you don't make them be good? You're fucking losers. So, That's so, so, good point. so women, so you're talking about, I'm saying that, you know, the man at a certain level can't do certain things, da, da, da. If you were with Joe Schmo and he wasn't treating you the way you believe Joe Schmo should treat you, then why are you with leave. him? Leave. Like you women, women have the gatekeeping. So if you get Joe Schmo and he treats you like you're, you're his queen, treats you perfect, good. If you get a fucking guy at the absolute upper echelons of value and, and you still don't aren't happy with what he's giving you, then leave. Women are the gatekeepers. You women actually have all of the power. This is what's beautiful to, about the whole thing. Yeah. Women are constantly complaining. You have all the power. You're the ones who get to choose. Do you know who you should be mad at for all this shit? I'll tell you who you should be mad at. Do you know who threw away all the female power in the sexual marketplace? promiscuous females because now you got chicks who will bang anybody without trying so why should a dude get up and try no, do you, you have any no. idea how hard it is to actually be what a great take by tate that is great yeah he's uh, he's pulling britney on the spot he let me to make this clear dude there are promiscuous women out there and yet none of your followers are getting pussy okay so what's that your argument is just done like I, I, if i was an andrew tate fan no, it's not because these women only want these top guys. So his audience wouldn't be getting it. It would be people like Tate that is treating them bad. That, <laughs> yeah, you missed the whole point of the. And boy, and I'm like 14 years old. I'll be like, wait, where? Mr. Tate, where are they? On God. I've been rising. I've been rising so hard, Mr. Tate. On God, for real, for real. I've seen zero pussy on God. These bitches don't fuck me. Where? Where are they, bro? Where are they at? It's a mental breakdown. Men, day after day, especially if you're a high-level man. Let me make something clear from my life. I'll talk from personal experience. I'm not just looking- Zirka, that's such an incel take by you. Incels got it correct. Regular society is failing, right? Mainstream opinion is wrong. That's why you're even having this conversation. Incels have it correct. Looking after me. I'm not just looking after my chick. I'm the guy in about 300 people's phone books that they call when anything big goes wrong. You get arrested in Russia, you need extraction from Ukraine, you need a million dollars, whatever it is. 
Dude, Andrew Tate is literally the fucking the pathological liar in every friend group. I'm gonna lose my mind. It's like like I've heard I've heard takes like this, man. I've heard takes like this. Everybody's everybody's friend group has that guy. But like you're not supposed to fucking believe the guy, bro. You're supposed to make fun of him. What the f is wrong with so many of these? He said, I'm the guy you go for when you need to extract yourself out of Ukraine. It's like, no. How do incels have a crack? Dude, we're talking about attracting women. Nobody did better than me for years and years of TwitchCon on this platform. Every single e-girl, 100 VIPs in their chat, the most Riz, the most game, IRL pickup girls, the 20-second pickups. I've already shown what I can do, and I'm the greatest, biggest, fattest incel on the website. That's not a coincidence. They love incels. They're, they love incels. If you're just average and an incel, they love you, right? That incel energy gets me a lot of women. I don't think I want to switch to be like you. They, they love a Chad incel. It's crazy. And I'm not in... I'm not involuntary celibate as in like I can't get a girl. I mean, I can't choose. There's too many. Oh, this one, this one, this one. I'm like, I'm short circuiting, dude. There's too many to choose from. My life is strange. Oh, what? I don't think you are that guy. I don't think you're him. Kazakhstan abduction. They called me. I'm the first phone call. I'm fixing 400 different lives. I'm a problem solver. Chicks can't fix fucking any of this shit, right? This is how hard it is to be a man. And it's amazing. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think he's that guy. I, I'm, <laughs> I would go so far as to say, and I stake my reputation, and everything else on it, that there are, and I can't believe I'm defending the State Department here, kind of. John, you're not an insult. Dude, I lost it at 20 years old. Nobody wanted me. That's very late. Okay? I had serious anxiety. I've been an insult, dude. I didn't lose it at 16 like you guys. Or 14 or a number of women working for uh you know working as diplomats working for the state department that would be infinitely more valuable to know in this circumstance if you get into trouble overseas especially if you're an american citizen than this dumb bald fuck okay like this man is known for this man is known for like seducing men on the internet uh, instead of his the, the girls that were working for him under very shoddy and weird conditions is he gonna flirt with the fucking kazakhstan prison guard is that what he's gonna do he's gonna be like I am a woman, and I will fuck you really hard. Because society expects it of you, but so do women. If, if you had a man, be honest. You had a Don't talk about shady, bro. You went to a fucking hooker house that got closed down. Man, and you went to your man and said, Oh, I've got this problem. It's, I can't fix this. It's broken. The car tire's broken. And he went, I don't know. You would dry up. Like, you'd be like, well, fuck it. What the fucking point are you? That's the truth. You could sit here and go, oh, we call a mechanic. No, you wouldn't. You'd look at your man and go, what do you mean you can't fix it? And this, is what she, and, this, yeah, and this is what she's saying about your man will get up and go, and you know what's beautiful about masculinity? A bunch of times a man will go up and he doesn't have a clue how to fix it himself. Mm -hmm. But he'll go, don't worry, baby. Okay. And he'll stand up with no money and no clue. And he'll go out there and fucking try and find a way because as a man, you need to be useful. It is so difficult. Sheep it. Was good, bro. Was good in chat. Let's fucking go. Not only am I Albanian, but every bitch on this website DM to suck the skin off my dick. So uh, Albanians run this fucking website, right? I saw I needed 10 million followers to get one bitch, right? And I know all the bitches that left this guy. Difficult to be a man. You have no idea the amount of pressure that we're under from society and from the women we even want to associate mm. with. On a whole, it's difficult. So you have to keep all these things in mind. It's hard. But can I imagine? Yeah, you see right. what you just said about, yeah, the top G, that if they had money, you can fly planes and fly that. Drop it down to if you were earning, like, say, 50000 a year. Yep. Couldn't you be that same person amongst your peers? 100% you That's could. That's what I'm trying to say. 100% you could. And also, also, you have to... Uh, money uh, doesn't make you a top G. Uh, no, no, money's an amplifier. Greeks over Albanians. Weren't the Spartans, like, banging each other and little boys? And in some Greek pottery, you guys are, like, banging goats. I didn't see that in the movie, right? I don't remember Leonidas and a goat. So that's, that's the first thing about money. Money amplifies. Men can make money. Money does not make men. If you're a dork and you get rich, you're a rich dork. <laughs> yeah, like him. <laughs> Literally. No, that's him. You, you gotta... What makes a woman unattractive? Anytime she sounds like Zerka. Anything manly makes them unattractive. You gotta recognize you're talking about yourself at that point, right? Like, there's gotta be a little part of your brain that went, oh, fuck, maybe they're onto me here. He's right, yeah. You're a fucking dork ass loser and you make money. Now you're just a rich dork ass loser. Hot take. I genuinely do not believe Tate knows how to change a tire or use jumper cables. I mean, it depends on his proximity to wealth, right? Like, how long ago did he get a fucking Bugatti and became rich? Not the most skillful motherfucker, right? 
but even I know how to change a tire, and even I know how to fucking use. Don't ruin my opinion on Spartans. Here, let me save you, Greek boy. Samurai Two. Every single warrior class throughout history was a gay pedo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. It's like when you read history, like <laughs> it's kind of weird, dude. Even MMA fighters. Did you know eighty percent of MMA fighters are bi? Like when they're wrestling and rolling and doing jujitsu, they do it hard. And they just like, a lot of them don't get with men, but they're still enjoying the wrestling like that. I didn't even know that until late. I was like, holy shit. Like people would be, my friends used to be like, why'd you only do striking? How come you never did wrestling and jujitsu and stuff? I'm like, cause it's gay. And people would laugh at me. And it turns out I was right. Right? If I really wanted to get sued, I'd leak some professional MMA fighters right now. If I wanted to get sued right now, I would leak some stuff I know. I'd bring some receipts and ruin lives if I wanted, if I wanted to get sued hard. But it is strange how um, being straight is the most rare thing you can be on earth. Most dudes can pipe a chick with another dude in the room. That's not straight, dude. Being straight is the rarest, if you're straight, like truly straight, is the rarest thing you could be on earth. Everything in this world is designed to make you rainbow. It's strange. Most dudes would suck fucking dick for like a million dollars. That is not straight, dude. And they'll try and like justify it by saying Zerka is super straight and I'm just straight. Nah, bro, there's no such thing as super straight. Like you're just not. You're not it. These jumper cables. Why? Because my Toyota camera used to get fucked up all the goddamn time. Okay? So I learned. I had to. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money. So I had to figure it out on my own. All those hidden talents come from brokenness. Yeah, literally, you just have to like fix shit on your own. You can't pay someone to do it. I can change a tire as a woman. Should I leave my boyfriend? He doesn't even have a car. Get out of there, broke boy. That's it. Is that the whole podcast? That was kind of fun, actually. It's like four people being wrong at the same time. And we heard everyone's wrong opinion. You know what's so attractive about younger women? Because we, a lot of these dudes talk about fertility and, yeah. and looks and stuff. I don't actually think it's that. I think that in the modern world, in the, in the days of old, right, you meet a woman, you get married, you get together, whatever. In the modern world, if I meet a girl who's 33 and single, I know the amount of dick that's been through her before yeah. me is just simply unattractive. I don't care how nice you are. Yeah, yeah. If you're 33 years old, yeah. how many men have fun? If I get a 19-year-old girl, I might be your second or third man, right? I'm, I'm going to be dude number fucking 29. Yeah. And all the trauma and heartbreak and bullshit they put you through, you're going to try and bring to my door? Yeah. Like, well, my last man cheated. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, why is that my problem? So <laughs> you pick up older women, you have to accept. They've been on the carousel longer. They've had more fucking rides, more spins. Yeah. I don't want that shit. And when I see a beautiful young woman, I know that she has a very low body count. And that, and, and also, no, no, but the truth is, w women's mentality is absolutely connected to sex. If a woman sleeps with a bunch of men, it's harder to penetrate her mind and make her fall. It is unattractive, too. And it's unattractive. It's but if she's, like, if she's had 30 dudes inside of her, she, she really would think, you know what, this guy's so, so, so special. Or she would think, you know what, he talked to me real, he's gonna get me back. Whereas if a woman's only with a few guys, she's much more likely to fall in love with you. Be a Based. Partner. The likelihood of her falling completely in love with you and staying loyal to you and, and really believing you're the only man for her after being through so much trauma and so many men and sleeping with so many dudes and having her heart and having those memories of her ex and all that crap she's been through is far less likely than meeting a nice young beautiful girl who hasn't been with many men and she goes you know what this is the guy I, I like him every woman who knows this and every man watches to be honest women fall in love with the first lady virginity do or the second or third guy they really remember them they really love them better any woman who's stuck with 50 dudes she doesn't even remember who listens to Mars she doesn't care if a woman's stuck with a bunch of men before you she's less likely to stick it out through a difficult period of a relationship she's more likely to say you know what the new answer is new dick that's a pretty and, good and, answer and that's the truth let me make something clear if I meet a beautiful 30 year old woman I'm not saying I won't sleep with her that's pretty fucking old yeah, yeah. <laughs> 30 <laughs> oh, I, there's been times I was drunk have you guys give your reaction to it's actually correct. What he's saying is correct because believe it or not, this is where people get confused. Okay? A 19-year-old chick is actually not better looking than a 22 or 25-year-old. Usually these ones are way better looking. But this looks better to the guy because of the lower body count. That's the only reason. If this wasn't a variable... 
these ones in the moment look better. But a lot of people think it's for looks, like that every guy is just into a... It's not really the case. For that, go ahead. Um, I think he's actually so disgusting, and but I don't give a fuck because like that's not the type of man that I'm trying to go for. Yeah. And I would never, ever date someone like that, so I don't... She's in love with him. That She's even laughing, right? Um, I think he's actually so disgusting and but I don't give a fuck because like that's not the type of man that I'm trying to go for Yeah, and I would the, these are like final words before they pipe you. I don't know how many times I've heard I Would never be with a guy like Zerka. I hear that at a party and I go what I don't even Bro, I don't even have room to take you home with me. I got like my friends staying in my head I'm like holy shit. I won already the game's over. What the fuck? But if they ever say to me I could I could I'll give John a try. Like, we'd go on a date, whatever. That's when I go, oh, shit, this girl don't like me at all. Like, I'm, I fucked up. <laughs> what did I say, man? I shouldn't have made that fucking pedo joke. I never, ever date someone like that, so I don't even care what he thinks. Like, I don't care. Give, wait, more thoughts. We need a, a bit more thoughts on, on that no, from you. No, that's, like, 100% where I'm at, Literally, too. Literally, like, I just, like, it, like, disgusts me to hear his voice and the things that he says. Like, he's almost, like, pedophilic in a way and everything. And, like, the whole, like, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. But yeah. Literally offended because of words, but not just words, words that reminded her of her body count. That's where the offense comes in. Yeah, he, no, it's going for younger younger women because of that, and like it just doesn't like I don't know. It wait, is how he, how is he pedophilic? He, wait, wait, let, let her let her finish. He has talked about like multiple occasions how he goes for like 18 year old women. He's an old he's an older man, like okay. but and he doesn't even like run through less and everything, and I don't know, I don't know. I'm, let, let's but, let the girls give yeah. their take and then we'll come in. But I let, just to be clear, I think we shouldn't even use that word on YouTube, but Sorry. he is talking about adult. Just to clarify, he is talking about adult women. But uh really quick, let's uh let's continue on here. Uh, so what's your take on the video? Well, he's just really stupid. Like, he just talks like a really stupid person. And usually I don't even react to really stupid people. I'm just like, oh. Our attack the argument and then call him stupid. I don't mind when girls just attack the man and not the argument if they're good at attacking. If they're funny and they're roasting the shit out of him, hey, that's awesome. But you're not. You're kind of boring the shit out of us. All right, moving on with my life. No time to waste, but... But the purpose of this exercise, I would just be like, he's really insecure. Like, probably... Yeah, you shouldn't be wearing this backpack with the strap where it looks like you're Mrs. Universe. It's like, you're not. You should, Why did you buy that? Right? Has a really small dick, but some guys with small dicks are super fucking confident and awesome and cool. So yeah. She's trying to have it both ways. I don't want to offend the small... Yeah, it's just let's not insecurity. Let's not penis size shame here. Let's not shame... <laughs> He's, he's like, shaming women. Like, let's yeah, not he's shame. He's shaming oh, age shame. and whatever. Like, no, no, no. Shame as much as you want. Let's let's be nice to the gentleman with small penises <laughs> okay. here. He's just but, very insecure. He's like, oh, if like <sighs> this girl has slept with thirty men, then who am I to them? I'm like, oh, wow. So you must not be very good in bed. You can tell someone's got a small tool if they eat the box. You know, as soon as you like, someone says I eat the box, you go, I understand. I, I get where. It, I get the loadout. I get your situation. <laughs> Say no more. Just put your finger to the lips. Shh, 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 shh. I understand. As <laughs> soon as they say they eat the box, I go, I get it. Right? I get it. I understand you. Bed then, right? What if he's fantastic in bed? Then why would he care? <laughs> right. Wait. Why would he Come say? On. Dude, pause. This is the most mind-blowing take I have, you know? Like, I think I'm the only one to have the there's no straight people on earth take. And now people are getting what I'm saying. But this is the most base take I have. This is this is your present 100 gifted subs me. Damn, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, right. This take is insane. Let me know if this is wrong. This is going to blow your mind. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's like the saddest part of life. Like it took me 20 26 years to realize this. It's wild, dude. It is so wild. Like there's a, there's forums about I made her bust and she still ghosted me and blocked me and They like, okay. oh, like there's been 30 guys, therefore she wouldn't love me anymore. I'm like, oh, all right. So you can't only go up against five, not 30, right? Sure. All right. He literally said like, well, something's going to go wrong and she's going to just see herself out and find somebody better. Like 100%, she's going to see herself out and find somebody better. That's just, he wants girls who don't know that there's a way out. He wants girls that doesn't, that don't know that there are people that are going to respect them and treat them well. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how I was at 18 and 19 too. I thought that the guy that I was going to be with for the rest of my life was this motherfucker who absolutely treated me like shit. Like I thought that was it for me. And you know, luckily I figured out that it wasn't, you know? So it's like, that's very true. When you're that age, you think that that's all that there is. You have single, single, single. You have a very, very small view of guys in the world. And like, that's- By the way, being single as a guy is bad, but being single as an adult woman, dude, you're born with value. Everyone wants you. Everyone, it doesn't even matter if you're average, you get DMs and you're still single. Like that is high level loser. That's a high level loser, man. That's like, you're losing with training wheels on. Like how the fuck are you losing at life when it's made for you? What the fuck? It's absolutely terrible that he wants somebody that doesn't understand that they're, you could be treated better. Alex, did you have something else you wanted to add there? It looks like maybe you wanted to. No, I was just saying facts. So, <laughs> I did see like that video of him talking about how he could like imprint like a younger woman and everything, and it is like he is trying to like take advantage of younger women that don't know better. And, that's and so every girl can, every single girl can definitely admit that when we're 18, 19, we don't know, mm. we don't know a good relationship yet. Like we will not, unless you're very, very lucky and you get one that, that age. But a lot of people don't. Like I did not get a good relationship until I was like 23. Mm. So it's like. But so just really quick here, do you think that he's wrong for wanting to or having the preference? All adults who let their teenage daughters date should do minimum five years in prison. That's year one when I'm president. Five years, right? I was going to be more strict, but I really want, I want to see how the first year goes. And that's step one. Of dating younger women. I don't think that that exact preference is wrong, but I think that his motivation of them staying with him because he they will stay with him for no matter how he treats them. I think that is wrong. I don't think that's I what think, he's saying. I think he's I saying think he that's that's no serious boyfriends until you're thirty. <laughs> Osama's coke in chat, bro. Exactly what he, that's exactly what he said. Like he said, I think, like he, he, I said think he's saying he doesn't want. Pause. Look at this beautiful Chad in the middle. He still loses his girl to a fat slob zerka at the bar. That's how high level masculinity is in this law of attraction. Like this fucking Chad, because he's feminine, he'll always lose. They'll always go to Vegeta and never trunks. It's sad. Is wrong. I don't think that's I what think, he's saying. I think he's I saying think that's he exactly what he, that's he exactly said. what he said. I think, like he, he said I think he's saying he doesn't want women with a ton of baggage. He said he said exactly. If things go wrong, she'll gonna leave me for somebody else. <laughs> if things are hard, she's gonna leave me for somebody else. If things are that wrong, where you feel like you need to leave, I feel like every person in a relationship, but, no matter so, guy or woman, it, should want it. should feel like they can leave and feel like if it's bad enough to where you want to leave, you should be able to leave. That's fair. But but couldn't it be that someone that's been with. 50 people, 50 people, they're just so quick yeah. to just move on. So he wants someone that's going to that be more invested. I, I don't think that that's a true. He, like, he, no, if you've been with 50 people, you are demonically charged. Meaning you don't just walk around with one devil over your shoulder. You have 50. You have 50 mistakes following you, fucking with your psyche. Nobody wants your devils. Okay, fuck off. You were saying that out. earlier in the conversation. Sure. You were okay. literally saying it's that. easier to move on if I'm being treated like shit. If I'm being okay. treated so badly to where it's hurting my mental health and where it's not healthy for me to be in the relationship, yeah. I feel more confident in myself now because I know how to be treated well and I know what good relationships look like. Okay. I've left relationships not because they were bad, just because it was time for me to leave. It wasn't right for me in other parts of my life, but I know how to be treated well. So it was bad. I know that the, some relationships that I've been in, they've treated me great. There was other reasons why it needed to end. So like I've learned how to be treated well and I've noticed different ways where I can be treated well. I'm not gonna stay with somebody who's treating me badly because I think that's my only option. When I was 18, 19, 20, 
I thought that was my only option. So I've learned from being in different relationships what it's like to be treated well. Yeah, okay, that's, that's a good so, point. Really quick, um, we're gonna get to you, Jane. Okay. Just really quick, what is your kind of first impression or just your thoughts, not necessarily on what he just said, but just your thoughts on him? Disgusting. Can you say that again when the camera's on? Disgusting. <laughs> Stupid. I just think that it's just, it's predatory. It is, it's predatory. Not, I'm not saying to like younger people, I'm just saying to people who don't have experience, it's, it's definitely dangerous. So here's how I feel. I feel like what he's trying to say is the reason he likes to go for younger women is one, they have less baggage. Two, they have this innocence about them. But I Actually, don't- Actually, Jane, why don't we just move you over here now? Okay. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Bye. It's water over here now. Okay. Um, sorry. No, you're good, you're good. But where I'm trying to go with this is that a good man would support a younger girl, right? Not just financially, but emotionally and lead her well. That's technically what you would want in a relationship, right? If you're going towards a biblical setting. If you're not religious, then how you feel you want to be led is completely different. That is what you would ideally want. He does happen to say some semi-abusive things sometimes about women. I don't support those. No, I think he what he's trying to say is an old school method of, I would rather date a younger woman and support them and give them like that care and that mental strength and you know help them grow into a, this bright young person who, or who, whoever they're going to be. But in yeah, that's just lying. Every time you water down Andrew Tate, you're lying. Okay. This instance is how he talks about, you know, telling women to send him money, how he says like he can fuck anyone he wants and he can treat women however he feels. That's abusive. That's wrong. And that's toxic. That is not a loving man. That's not a leading man. That's not somebody I'd want to be with. You know, and that's, have that's, you have you seen some of his other clips? Oh, I've seen a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I when I first watched him, I watched like a reel or something on TikTok, and I was like, oh yeah, this guy's cool. And then I really watched his shit, and I was like, no, yeah, this is not what I envision for a very you know hyper masculine alpha male. I just feel like a, a real alpha male is someone that's going to lead a woman and support them and let them grow, not abuse them and make them feel like they're just a piece of ass, which is basically what society tries to do to us. You know, so it's facts. <laughs> so when did he? We're gonna have uh, Brandon give his take. Uh, just repeat one more time the question. I love how my first year on Twitch, someone would dro drop the abusive word on me on a podcast. Like the way you talk, Circa, is very abusive. And I would fight it. I'd be like, what do you mean? What was abusive? What? And then after, like, was it two years, I'd be called abusive. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> you watch my content and it's totally changed. Every time they say you're abusive, I go, yeah, you're probably right. I've been called that word so much by random libs that it's like, I'm so over defending it, you know? It's like when I'm called a racist or a misogynist or whatever, I go, yeah, yeah, true, true. I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> oh, just uh, your reaction to the video we just watched. Uh, you know, the guy's obviously found a pocket where he can voice certain things either calmly or boisterously, and people are going to listen and chime in for the most part. Yeah, what kind of fucking retard gets a face tattoo? He's playing to the ear of men, um, you know, a lot of guys are going to hear what he has to say, and if they don't agree with it, they're going to sound kind of maybe soft or a little, you know, sheltered. So, you know, for the sake of being a guy, they're going to agree with what he says. Um, he does well on YouTube, and he's, he's all about getting a reaction, and that's just about all I hear as far as the substance coming from that man is he wants a reaction. And he's touching on issues that are sensitive, and he's saying some things that are, are true, but to kind of generally just cast that as this is what it is, black and white, like, nah, man, he's just, he's getting a reaction, and people are reacting to it, and he's doing his job on YouTube. Dinner. Yeah, that guy has pillow talk with his girl. I, mean, I, I couldn't have said it better. Like, I'm, for me personally, like, you know, I, I date kind of like younger women, a few years younger than me. Um, just like my preference. Um, I guess it would come with like slightly less baggage, but I do think that a lot, I don't. I've never watched a lot of Andrew Tate's like you know like gone like watch his videos or anything like that. It's like very like small clips, but I think it's just it's, it's a social media algorithm. I mean, I'm sure you know that, Brian. Like all like the more like out there that you are. Oh, he's the more he's for sure intentionally yeah. being controversial. One hundred. But yeah. But I think he does believe. Look, he's fucking cucks. As if. I hate when fucking men do this shit where it's like, he's playing a character. There's no way there's John Zerkas who believe this shit. Yeah, we exist, bro. We're the majority, actually. All right? He's not playing a character. You want to see a character, right? What would you say if you saw Andrew Tate offline? Would you say that guy's a character, too? <laughs> like, you're seeing him restrained, you fucking idiot. These guys can't believe that there's like real men in the world. They cope, they scratch their fucking neck. Believe what he says, but he's obviously Look, he, he's in pain. He's in neck pain because the girls are staring at him. Get up a bit for the controversy for attention, you know. So yeah, definitely. It's gonna like his content is gonna like really, you know, spike a, a queue with um, like you know just younger men. So I feel like it's my duty to go up to these three guys when they're married and call them a bitch to their face in front of their wives. 
I feel like it's my since you guys do so much damage to me and let those fucking girls platform the abuse word against anyone who's traditional. I feel like since you're humiliating me, I'm gonna do it to you one day. I'm at war with you, soys, and you're winning. Want to gather and get everyone out, but I think he's very funny. It's funny. I like. Out, but, I, yeah. yeah, I don't. You're agree, unfiltered. Yeah. I don't agree with everything he, that he says, but he's for sure funny. I literally I agree with everything Andrew Tate says. Literally everything. How about that? You agree with him on? Look at the mount. Okay. Uh, what? I, I agree with him on some shit. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll say this. There's there's actually a lot. Why of would things. you admit that? There, I'll, I'll say this right now to back Ryan up. There's a lot of things that I agree with that he says. I mean, they're just. I, like I will also babe. say. I mean, I will also like, say. Like, Here, I wish I could just sit there and be like, guys, you know what's the difference from you guys and Andrew Tate? Is your opinions belong in the chat room? Because you guys aren't blowing up for your opinions because they're bought mainstream opinions that we see in chat and comment sections and everywhere and mainstream media and legacy media. Like you guys, your opinion is the norm. It's, you're not saying anything. You're not speaking truth to power. You're not doing nothing. I'm cooking scene or whatever. I'm chill with that. But like so much. Uh, Wait, just into the, into the microphone, please. I said, I mean, like, what do you agree with? Like, the girl that will cook and clean? Because I'm like, I'm I'll sure with that. I'll but, like, it. everything else that he said about the baggage and the young woman and all that shit, what do you was mean? Was 100% well, facts. Well, can I, let me ask you guys a question oh. real quick. Yes. It's okay. Like, they can, wait, I'm, I'm think differently. Like, I, so I, like, I want to hear what he's going to yeah, say. Yeah. Let, let me just ask <laughs> like, a, a yeah. quick clarifying question. So, do you, who do you think is more jaded? Someone who has less sexual and relationship experience or someone who's had more uh, relationship and sexual experience? I'm going to respect the person who has... It's like asking who's more jaded, a fucking innocent child or someone who's had his first girlfriend in high school. Like, no fucking shit. These people, they're asking you from biting from the fruit, right? Le leaving innocence again and again and again with multiple partners. It's not fucking rocket science. Answer the fucking question. Watch her get it wrong. More relationship experience because they know what they want. and Oh, like, my God. God. been through it they're not like i've dated guys who haven't had very many relationships yeah, relationship experience actually makes you worse at partnership if you're a woman and like less connections and they're just so lost like they don't know what they even think or what they want for the future but, but do you want a man to lead to lead I don't know. because i think men no i don't i, I don't really care about that okay, i am sure. fine with leading like i'm good with leading you'll lead you'll lead yeah in the bedroom want to, yeah Okay. I'll lead in any right. in any sense of the way. I will lead absolutely. Anybody that knows me knows. So that's would true. you would you get with the guy who's a virgin? Yikes. I guess it wouldn't be like a deal breaker, but I don't see myself talking to anybody that's like that because like we don't you have know, the same. Genuine question without canceling me, right? Or don't do it. How do you lead if you're the one getting piped? Actually, the woman can take charge and ride it better and do, and do the motions. And... Bro, you're getting piped, okay? Let's uh, let's call a spade a spade. The guy's not getting piped. You're getting piped. <laughs> and like social short girls and ideals, I feel like that would be a little bit weird. I'm... It's like a boxer saying, I'm going to lead with my chin. So put my chin out there and lead with my chin. It's like, I don't think you're leading the fight anymore, dude. I want to lead with my hands down. What? I'm 27. Like, I feel like I wouldn't meet a guy who's 27 and is a virgin, especially like the people that I know, those social circles that I'm in. Nobody's really like. No, like bro. That. If she ever tries to lead in the bedroom, just call her Ted, right? Be like, Ted, what are you doing? Right? Just call her a man's name. At this point, so probably not, but not because like that's like a huge deal breaker. For what me. about just a guy who's sexually inexperienced? And you had to basically... I've, I mean, I've dated like somebody who, who is kind of a little bit like that. And it just like it doesn't really work in the long term for what I'm looking for. Okay. Sorry, you, you want to come in here, Chase? Yeah, I just I want to make my point. Like, have you guys ever heard of the term alpha widowed? No. That's some red pill shit that it I don't is. think anyone's going to know unless they're familiar. But. All right. So, so basically, what, this is the idea that like... One of the things Tate said in that clip is that a guy can leave an imprint on a woman, right? Do you, do you guys kind of know what he means by that? What did you, what was it? That's what I hate about that video. Yeah. It's, it's true though. Yeah. This Every time you bang, you're scarring your mind for life. Okay? That's the truth. Every single banging experience, whether good or bad, is a traumatic event. Because a traumatic event, by definition, changes your worldview. Every... You hook up with a big biker dude, it changes your worldview. You hook up with a nerd, it changes your worldview. If 
it's changing your worldview, it's a traumatic experience. You don't want to farm trauma, don't do it. This is the thing. It's okay, true. what do you say? So, so I'll explain it to you. So like, if a girl ends up with a guy who she really loves and like he's like the best she's ever had and you know, he gives it to her really good in the bedroom and like she looks up to him so much. Like, I don't know if you guys have been deeply in love with a man who you really respect. Yeah, say, definitely. Say you're with I know that like Alex that. has too. Okay, so say, say you're with a guy like that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so, okay. So say, say you're with a guy like that and then he breaks up with you or whatever it is, maybe he wants another woman. Women very often, they will almost never forget about that man. And, and it, it depends on the woman. Like maybe you guys haven't been quote unquote imprinted in this way, but like, I don't say this from a place of conceit. Like I've had, I've had exes where I know like after me, they're going to be thinking of me when they're with their next guy. Do you think guy. that that's like specific to guys? Like that happens to guys too. It does, it like, does. It happens you're, to everybody, it's not gender right, specific. But, but I've, I've, I've found, I know a lot of dudes and I know a lot of women. It's extremely common among women and it's not it's as common among It's extremely common among Bro, I've never had an ex not call me crying. You don't even care about me. I'm like, what the fuck? Didn't we break up? And then I realized like, oh, you have to find a 6'5 guy who went viral with half a million views for being funny. And is really good looking and has every girl in the DMs. Oh, that's what you're dealing with. Oh, okay. Well, good luck on your journey. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Right, mine ain't that hard, right? There's, there's beautiful girls, but finding a zerk, good, good luck. You, she'd have to be with Z's, bro. She'd have to be with Z's to to forget about me. She'd have to be with like, she'd have to get a young Hodge twin. She'd have to, you know, she'd have to do something impossible. Like it's, it's I, I know a lot. Of, I know a lot of dudes who it doesn't happen to. And my point, yeah. my point is, my point. When, when you have a girl that's getting closer to her 30s, like you said, a lot of girls have a lot of baggage and like they've, they've got demands. They're like, I want a man who's gonna commit to me. And you know, they might have a lot of thoughts about their exes and stuff. And yeah. maybe it's distorted the way that they look at relationships. And it's different from a younger girl who right. hasn't had a ton of exes that have like affected her in that way. Baggage is real. Like, I just feel like baggage, baggage is, is the same. It's the same thing is, with is, men. Is that not true? It's, it's yeah, kind of, we're talking about as like the archetype like, of, of like the 35 year old like wine drinking dog mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, oh, like all women or all men are like this. Like, like everyone's like this. And I need like, like these. A dude never forgets a chick that gave the best head. That's not even true. I forgot everyone in my past. All those experiences are blurred. Like I am literally clean slate in my head. All of them forgotten. Right? It's like I have my V card again. That's how I live. No, I'm serious because every time I have like this experience, it's blurred in my head for some reason out of shame. So I don't really remember the experiences, you know, they'd have to be recent within like six months. Standards and it's like, okay, like if every single dude that you've, that you've ever been with ever had a relationship with, like they're 100% of the problem. Like they take zero accountability for all that. It's like, come on. I, I feel you like know? too. Yeah. Like, did you wanted to come in with something, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. all I was just going to say is that for me, I have been out, I was in a relationship two and a half years ago and I really love that person a lot. And I have not been able to be in a loving relationship to that extent because I took a, took away from what I had. Right? Yeah, men should never take responsibility because think about it. Chicks love assholes. So I'm only an asshole so I can get you. I'm in love with you, dude. I love you. I had to become an asshole just to get you. Right? Like I did a lot. I'm not taking responsibility for being an asshole when I transformed into this to get you. I went through such a spiritual journey just to obtain you I'm not apologizing for that good and the negative right yeah. from both sides and i realized really quickly i was like you know what it's going to be really difficult for me to like fully fall in love with someone again and that baggage is hard because yes. i've met i've That's met what i'm talking about and i've exactly. met and this is this is for everyone this yes. is how i feel on both gender and whatever your sexual you know orientation is of them both you know what i mean i feel that it's very difficult because i've met guys that i've you know casually dated for like maybe two or three months four months and they're like, they want to be committed to me. Yeah. They want to fucking mm -hmm. get an apartment together. They want to. No, they don't. Like get Every a dog time. together. Every and time. I'm, I'm not present. I'm not there. I yeah. don't have that same amount of love that I had two and a half years ago. Yeah. And totally it's very hard because you get so invested in another person and you know. Bro tip, never, ever be the one progressing the relationship. Wait for her. She should be spamming in your ear. What are we? What are we? What are we? Do we, are we dating? Like, what are we? The minute the dude says, hey, so what are we? Is the minute she goes, I got to leave. You're going to learn the hard way, bitch. You don't, don't listen to Uncle Zerka. You're going to learn the hard way. You won't listen to me. Trust me on that.
know, I understand. I went through that separation. I understand that person's that person now, and I'm who I am. But I have to realize, like, I can cause issues to other people without realizing it, and yeah. it's very frustrating, you know, yeah. sometimes. So yeah, one hundred percent. That's Let, that's the. I just the, the uh, really really quick. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can all scoot over. Who asked that? As a dude, are you kidding? Dudes jump the gun all the time, where they just, you know, I really care about you, and if I tell her again, maybe she'll get it, and then she'll be with me forever. And it's like, what are you talking about, dude? Any time she goes, do you care about me? I go, kind of. I'm thinking about it. And then she'll laugh. And then she'll keep asking it, keep asking it. And it's either I joke or I go, of course, bitch. Why the fuck are you offending me? I get angry about it. But I'll never be like, I really care about you, Stacy. You're everything I've ever wanted. You're actually not everything. I wanted Bionicle. I wanted a nice Lego Star Wars set. You're not really what I dreamt of when I was young. I had other aspirations and dreams, bitch. That's so we can get Brandon in this wait, shot now. Wait, what is the video title? Andrew Tate triggers purple hair feminists on body count. Yeah, this is the, this is clickbait. Brandon, are you, yeah, are you, can you try to just scoot over and we're gonna see if we can get, can we get, are you able to just get in a bit? Yeah, right there works. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> He's gonna see the timestamp on this. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so can I can I say one thing to what she said a few minutes ago? Uh, yeah, Still yeah, yeah. in van, yeah. So like one thing I totally agree with you on is that Andrew Tate is not at all a good role model from like a biblical sense. Like yeah. he, he definitely does. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's a he's a Christian man. Yeah, he's, he's a man of God. I'll, I'll believe he's a man of Andrew God. Andrew Tate is a man of I'll God. I'll believe he's a man of God when he repents of his rampant fornication and when he like <laughs> actually conforms to a biblical sexual standard and when he actually conforms to the like tries to conform to the image of Christ. Like I don't think people who just call themselves Christians That's kind of based as fuck. I like that. Like actually deserve that title sometimes. But that's beside the point. The point was I don't think he's an example of biblical masculinity. Yeah. I think he does to what you two were saying. I think he does take advantage of the fact that like Atta younger boy. women, like a guy in that position, if a guy's super powerful and he has like a lot of money and stuff, and like an eighteen year old girl ends up with him, really easy for her to get abused. And and like she's gonna think, Oh, he's the best I can get, so I have to put up with like verbal abuse or whatever it is. That's totally legit. I agree with that, and that's wrong. What the thing I like about him is that he's spitting a lot of hard truths that people need to hear. The thing I don't Unpopular take, verbal abuse doesn't exist. Like, it's words, bro. Put some headphones on. What I like about him is that there's young boys that are listening to the stuff mm -hmm. that he's, he's saying, and they're thinking, oh, this is 100% how I should treat women. And I, I don't, you know, this whole conversation <laughs> talking about the importance of marriage and stuff, like, I don't think he's contributing towards building like healthy marriages, no. is my point. I agree. Okay. I'm sorry, Wake, but it just doesn't exist, you know? And I'm fucking sick in the head. Like when I'm verbally abusing my loved one and she puts her headphones on and goes, I can't deal with you, John, and just listens to music, I start texting her so she can't change the song. And I start saying what I want to say through text message. <laughs> At the top of the algorithm, I'll be regretting these streams, man. Trust me. Like my biggest sponsors would be like, ah, we're going to pull out, John. JP Morgan's pulling out here. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what wake if it makes you feel better my last relationship the first dm was are you ready for an extremely toxic relationship and she's responded with it's such a hassle but yes oh god i'm ready you know and when you think about it you go like i got consent And I didn't do it so I can say it to clear my name. I did it because I knew I'm toxic. You know what I mean? I was being transparent. Being a man of God. Mm -hmm. But I don't really date women. Like, I date little girls. Like, not little girls, but I mean, like, you know, like emotionally not developed people. <laughs>
it is, here's what it is. It's not enough, ghosted. It's not enough. You gift to the whole community. And really, I'm the only one that's going to have a million subs by next year. Like, you invested in the wrong people, and I'm going to act so brand new. Think you chill with Kiana. Like, Kiana's going to be the next fucking Tate. You high? Invest in the right people. They'll host your channel. You want my host with 100,000 viewers when I'm at the top? Or do you want fucking Kiana's host? It's not enough, dude. I want to see 500 gifted subs. And then I kind of owe you. Then I fucking, then I owe you, bro. Because then if I don't make it, then I can't even, you know, look my chat in the eye. I'd be like, dude, I scammed that dude. That was, you know, that was a bad idea. Uh, I'm going to the top. I'm going to the top and nothing will stop me. Not even hating women. Mm -mm. Oh, she's farming crack, this girl. Da, 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 da. All right, is it Piers Morgan time? Life is an energy exchange. Yeah. If you look at a fight, right? You have to make sure the energy you spend punching him does more damage or takes away more energy than you've expended. If you, that's, why, that's why missing is a big problem. If you miss all the time and you've wasted energy with no net gain, right? So life's an energy exchange. This is how it works. If you're out here just fucking bitches who don't care about you, you are wasting enormous energy. And let's, yeah. talk, let's talk about this in length, right? We can mm -hmm. talk about it first financially. You're going out, you're spending money, you're taking her out, taking her dinner, you're spending money. That's the first thing. But the second thing is a lot of men, especially if they're insecure, really feel like they get a victory if they fuck a girl. And at a certain status of man, that disappears. And I'm gonna state this once again without arrogance. I go out to Dubai now. I pick up a girl in the club. I come back here. I fuck her. She doesn't care about me. I don't care about her. Hey, I fucked this hot girl. I've got a fucking $5.2 million Bugatti. We're coming back to a $48 million mansion. On the pond. <laughs> I'm the richest guy in the fucking club. I'm top G, whatever, whatever. I sleep with her. Wow. I put all the energy in all wow. night smashing her right. She yeah. just lays there chilling. That's the best night of her life. And I'm going to go there. Did I, <laughs> did I win? You know, I didn't, she you won. gave that shit up. I just gave it all up. Yeah, she what? used to talk about riding the Bugatti. She has a picture on the Instagram of my, in the Bugatti chair. She's here walking around doing Instagram stories here, pissing yeah. off her ex in my house. She Yo. gets fucking slammer. She doesn't do nothing for me. Nothing. The only thing a woman can give me back at my status uh, in life is absolute dope. devotion to protect my spirit. I need a woman who loves me completely and utterly. Honestly, Andrew Tate was abused. She took so much from him. He was clearly abused by that woman. That's the truth. And he's a victim. I don't expect her to have financial incentive to look after me. I don't expect her to be physically capable of doing, dealing with my problems. I don't expect her to be even, my problems are very complex. I don't expect her to be sitting there on a computer trying to work them out. I expect her to sit there and go, I love you so much. I'm just worried about you and I just care about you. Everything's about love. That, it's all about love. What yeah. if? Now, that's what I want because that's a fair exchange. I can take a woman all around the world, spend a bunch of money on her. I can be top G, spend all this money, give her a life she can never see. If she truly, if I am truly the center of her, her universe, she is giving me value back. And that's why I'm not going to go out here and fuck bitches who barely care about me or just for Moose a bitch in a club for a one night because she's winning. I'm just it's like throwing money down the drain. What if Kim Kardashian slides in your DMs and says, hey, Tate, I want a piece of that? How are you responding? I'm kind of careful about talking about celebrities. He's now trying to get the TikTok. I end right up there. meeting them all. A woman's job is, in, in my view, the women who mean the most to me are the women who truly protect my spirit by just loving me and caring about me and using their intuition to truly want the absolute best this. for me. He's that is go. so I important. Fucking love this. I, know. I fucking true, love this. I fucking love this. It's true. Yeah, you're like, so we got it. It's important. And, and that's why if I meet a girl and she's half into me or some frivolous shit, that, uh, or if I had a girl, she had her own life, I had my own life, but she was hot, sometimes we smashed, I would see that as a net loss of energy for me. I would say, no, it's a net loss. I'm the one doing the work, I'm the one doing all the fucking work. Like, I always will be. I don't know. Maybe some of these other dudes Even get pegged like and that? shit. I'm the one doing all the fucking work. So it's just, why am I doing it? Sounds boring, John Zerka. I want a crazy bitch. I feel you, man. Crazy bitch is literally the best life you can have, dude. Until it becomes too much. But, like, with a crazy bitch, literally, you'll be there on your day off. Let's say it's a Monday and you're not working that day. And you're thinking too much. You're like, man, I'm so wound up. I just can't relax and da da and then she walks in and goes, you left your fucking socks here, you dumb cunt bitch. And you go, oh, finally. I finally got attacked by her. It's my turn to retaliate, right? And then you go, dude, you just like your fucking mother. And then she st starts freaking out and shit. And you go, oh, so that, now I'm rocket man. Now I have the nuclear arsenal. I go, so that one hurt her, okay? And then she talks about my hairline. I go, okay, so this one hurts me. Okay, so she's got some firepower. Let's see what I got next, right? 
And that's when I go to the sister. I go, your sister robbed the gene pool. And she goes, oh, really? Well, your brother has a bigger dick. And now the bitch has gone too far. Because now she's done traumatic shit to me and permanent damage forever. Where I, I'm ruining my relationship with my brother. And now I realized, maybe I don't want a crazy bitch. But I definitely learned a great, valuable lesson here. right? And the lesson is... You know, take that Cialis so you can be bigger than your brother. She's winning. I don't want that. I want it to be a mutual exchange. And that's why a woman who truly cares about me, it's amazing. I'll tell you how this is true in case anyone doubts me at home. Anyone thinks I'm talking shit. Next time you are sick. No, no. Next time you are seriously sick. Next time you are genuinely sick and you're ill in bed, you don't call your boys. Who do you call? You call oh a chick. God, that's a fact. You call a chick. That's a fucking fact. <laughs> Holy they, shit. And they sit next to you and they'll sit and get sick with you and they'll hug oh, you sick. and they'll give you their energy and their love and you'll feel better. Yeah. It's a real thing. I when agree. you're sick, you notice it. I have that all the time. That's so true. Every, every When you're week. sick and a girl loves you, she will fucking come in bed. And, and she'll, and she'll, she'll make you better. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. Like no, when no, a girl's sick, her. I'm like, yo, like get back. I would do that for either of you. This is weak, bro. Don't talk to your buddies when you're sad. Don't talk to your girl. Go do a fat line of that fish scale blow like a real man. Go do a fat line and get something fucking productive done. Or get something that you think is productive. Like, hey, we should open up a business together. Like, talk to a homeless guy about that, right? Bring some hope in his eyes, ho hope in your eyes. Start a podcast with him, whatever. <laughs> What? If you guys need me when you're sick, I would fucking show up. Really? Yeah. No, I like do that. we but, don't want you to cuddle in bed though. No, you want to cuddle, but I'll be all fucking I'm close mates. Even if you're sick, you don't want your boys. You want a chick because they have a healing energy. Yes, they love bro. a sick, a sick blowy doesn't hurt too. <laughs> That's true. Fuck that. <laughs> There's, if you're, it's a healing energy. So my point is that okay. why only apply that when you're sick? Why not apply that to your entire life? Why not just every single woman yeah. who sees you? If I walk in the room and one of my chicks sees me walking the room, I can see in her eyes like, it's like Christmas. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want just some bitch who's hot and I just fuck. When you're sick, you got to be a drug addict. No, are you? If you're a base man, you can do a bunch of coke and never get addicted. Like that's what a that's what a base man is. They walk with God, dude. Great, that, that's a loss. For me. I'm not interested yeah. in that. Tropical. Well, I don't pick. I don't pick up chicks anymore. I don't run out here do, picking do up a, chicks. Do you have a main girl? I'm not gonna talk about my personal life because sure. I'll tell you why. Because there's feral psychopaths who are out to, who have attempted to destroy me. So I, I have to be very careful what I say now. No worries. Wow, very interesting. Oh, we're talking about body. Oh, go ahead, Brittany. Oh, no, go ahead. I, you've been I'm just thinking because I'll give you two minutes. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm good. I, I feel like it would just be probably um, for the viewers and everybody out there. I feel like it would be interesting to hear everyone's perspective on how they feel about the 100th episode and sitting with Andrew Tate and good like idea. like really kind of seeing how his energy is in person because mm -hmm. a lot of people are most likely never going to meet him. Yeah. So I feel like we all got a chance to kind of yeah, that's see. a good good idea. John Zerka, you know kids are watching you too, right? Fucking idiot. Children also, right? They don't need to do drugs, but they have to put in their head that one day they'll be an adult and that Zerka is going to bring the plate to them, right? Zerka is going to bring the plate. And I don't even know if this joke's too far for the internet. Is this like, I haven't streamed in so long. I don't even know where I'm going with this one. Is this something I'm going to regret? I'm fucking with you, man. I'm not finishing this joke. Has anyone done this joke? Yeah, I think it's always the rule of if no one's done it, don't be the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brittany. I don't know. <laughs> so, Brittany, why don't you start? Your what did you think? Ms. I, I felt like he was he was really polite in person. I didn't expect him to be like you said, so smiley, um, very warm. Children don't do drugs. I'm John Zircon. I approve this message. Don't. And I will say that I do feel like he is very, is very pretty grounded. He is fair. If you do drugs, you're going to get a chick like this. Right? But then the drugs wear off and she doesn't actually look like this. Um, there are just things, obviously, I just don't agree with about the being agreeable to the point of where it's not your own identity but i also understood where he was coming from um i understood the perspective i don't agree but no i felt like he was like so different in person and i feel like that's why you can't really judge people based on that mm. he was just different i don't know am i am i tripping did you guys no, feel that no, way no no, no. Uh, go to why don't you I, 45 seconds <laughs> i actually i liked him a lot i remember when he got canceled i said the only problem with this guy is the fact that he's exposing certain truths and not providing a solution to those who are suffering from it that's it 
other than that, listen, yeah, he's better looking in person. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I I, I, I tried to hate on him. He's very looking in person. He's smiley. He's friendly. He's got high energy. He's a good Sagittarius. Sunshine in human form. He's actually quite cool. I liked him. Yes. Yeah, I feel like he was a straight talker. And you know what? I, I really rate the way he speaks. He really knows how to speak. Like, it will add context and then it'll make his point. I mm -hmm. think it takes a lot of talent to do that. And you can tell he's been doing it for a long time. So I have to respect that in him. Obviously, I didn't agree completely with a lot of stuff you were saying because I, I feel like he was a bit one-sided mm -hmm. when we were talking about what men want and he wasn't really talking about how to make women happy. But I, I appreciated that he was also giving us a perspective of a lot of men out there. Why it's not important to talk about women being happy is because they're kind of losing their minds. You know what I mean? Like, they got everything they wanted, and now they're, like, supposed to be happy, but they're losing their minds. So it's like, whoa, I don't know how much happier you want to be, dude. I'm going to push you over the edge, you know? Yeah. So I did appreciate that. But I, I just wish we could, like, explore more about what women want, really. But mm -hmm. I just think you? that society... I was always talking about what women want. Right. Is that the timer? <laughs> I just feel like society is always talking about women, what women want. And whenever, whenever we talk about what men want, like we always need to have a response. And it's like, why can't we just let the men talk for a second? Because like we, we, there's Steve Harvey like talks about what women want all the time. There's a million different shows. Um, as for Andrew Tate, <clears throat> I was actually so nervous. I don't know why. Like I was. Yo, ciao. What I was too. I was. Oh, this, oh, this yeah. whole day. I was. I think I was. I. I kind of think I was a little quieter because I was like, I'm just like nervous. I don't know why, but he was so nice. Um, it was really nice. If a lot of people don't know, we were supposed to go to do, all of us. We're supposed to go to Dubai. Uh, my passport expires within six months, so we couldn't actually like get in. I couldn't get in the country. Uh, so he actually came to us, mm -hmm. which I thought was really like kind of him to come. Yeah. Like fly all the way here, but yeah, he was really nice. Um, I was really nervous, but overall, I, I already liked him before. I didn't like him the first time I saw him. If you see my very first reaction to him, I was actually mean because he had a cheating party. Uh, and I was like, what is this cheating party? Yeah, <laughs> and it was like, he would invite all his girlfriends over at the same time. Or like all the girls that you would cheat with and like they would just go to the same wow. party. And it was kind of funny, but I was like, what? <laughs> why would you do that? But I didn't understand what. That's but now that I understand his worldview a little bit more, I was like, oh, well, that's why. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. very, I, from what he, the stuff he was saying like beforehand, from uh, watching mm. Kevin Samuels, uh, with Pearl, it mm -hmm. it opened up um, my view on like actually listening to people or listening to what these men are saying instead of just taking a clip and taking for how these people are clipping it and sh wanting to get their agenda across. Mm -hmm. but actually, like, listening to them, and uh, I like sat down and like actually listened. To See, women think they want more female representation online, but if chat was only women, the donation button would never be used. Like that. The worst nightmare for any man or woman is for men to not be on, you know, in the internet. That is everyone's worst nightmare. Some of the stuff that he said beforehand, so I was like, he, the, what he is saying is not crazy. It's the way he's saying it. And people, mm -hmm. a lot of, I would say like, people and a lot of women don't like the way that he is saying it because it's very like raw, like this is it. This is how I'm going to say it. I don't care if you don't like the way I'm saying it. I'm going to say it this way. And uh, I feel like a lot of people don't like it like that. But it's like, uh -huh. if you get past what he's like, how he's saying it and listen to actually what he mm -hmm. is saying, it's like, oh, yeah. okay. It's not mm -hmm. as outrageous as mm -hmm. people make it out to be. And that's a problem. Okay. If some liberal woman says, hey, Andrew Tate makes sense, then really, what are we doing here? You know, is this really our revolution? Is this really where we want to be? We don't want this. Yeah. That's why I actually purposely didn't really go and look at his content. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I want to see who he actually is and what his energy is actually saying. Because mm -hmm. I understand. The same way that people say, oh, you clip rated, you edited this way to make me look worse. Da -da -da. It's the same way that it happens to him. Mm -hmm. And realistically, he was way more balanced and actually a lot more kind of calming in his presence than what he actually seems online. I'm not going to yeah. lie. He mm -hmm. spoke sense. There was a lot of balance in what he said. And, you know, I... She's breaking through with the programming. What the fuck? No, she's not. Sta snap the fuck out of it, you fucking retard. People who break through programming do not repackage what some man said to make it fit better for liberal ears. 
They repeat what he said and offend those people and join our side. We're not here to fucking repackage shit. You've been doing that for fucking 30 years. Where the fuck has it gotten you? Enough of that fucking pussy ass shit, bitch. Been repackaging your whole life. You're at a fucking house party. I'm at a house party, Twitch, Twitch party. And some girl goes, Zirka, I heard you say on your street that men are better than women. And I go in literally every category. I don't fucking break it down in front of her so I can have another friend at that fucking party. I fucking triple down. Let's go right now. Let's argue. And then they just laugh and walk away as in like, you're the enemy. You are the enemy. You are fake news. You are my enemy. Okay. I'm not here to fucking repackage messages. That's fucking retarded. Okay. The fuck kind of, what kind of fucking revolution is repackaging a message? I know people expected me to clash with him, and I didn't. He was cool. I liked him. Mm. It was yeah. funny. He had a bit of banter as well with his Clementines and stuff. <laughs> he's just, he's I think the only cool. thing I didn't agree with was like him talking about a man will cheat. Like women are delusional. Like I think that's not if, a good message. If they have the opportunity like, to, they will. If they have like the. It's okay. Way, okay, whatever. I'll give you an example. Even a good man would have a hard time being in Tiger Woods' positions, having position, having a bus full of models waiting for him that are trying to fuck him every single day. Mm. It's like it, he... it, it, Tiger Woods is actually a very holy man. Because he only piped like a handful, whereas most men would pipe a thousand, right? Even a good, like my, my dad, I'll give you, he's top 1%, doesn't cheat. But my dad doesn't have social media and he doesn't have beautiful models waiting for him every day after work. Mm. I think that would be hard for even a good man yeah. to, mm. to say no to. Like even my dad, if he was in a position where beautiful women are trying to do that every single day, that's hard. That's really hard for a guy. Women get approached as well. In fact, women right. get approached true, way true, more than men. True, 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 true. But it's not husband. usually. It's not usually by men you want. It would. I would also it's argue. True. I would also argue <laughs> that it would be hard for a woman to stay faithful. My dad once said to me, like, "If I was your age on Twitch, the way you are, like, oh my God, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you keep yourself to, you know, keep to yourself one girl." And he's like, "Very impressive, very good." And uh, he's like joking around. He's very like, not like that. And then I played an e-girl talking for over 24 seconds. And he got up and turned the fucking television off. And he said, never do that again. I said, hey, you said they're cute. Well, if every day she was approached by high value men. That's true. So, That's but yeah, like you've been in that position. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's if every day you're getting messages from like the top men in society, I, I, I think that's hard for women to turn down. We're hypergamous. Mm -hmm. So, as many of you know, I was just banned on TikTok, and we are demo. You want to be better than Tate? And hey, we support Tate. What are you talking about? We just don't like that he unplugs keyboards to flirt with men jacking off for his first million in Bugatti. That's the only part that's not that based. Everything else we support. Okay. That hurt you, Piers Morgan. Tate. I love shitting on these people. <laughs> right? It's a good feeling. It's another Piers Morgan Uncensor, one of the most infamous men in the world, Andrew Tate's misogynistic tyrant. Why does this look like a green screen? What the fuck is going on here? This is so weird. It's another Piers Morgan Uncensor, one of the most infamous men. So Piers Morgan is someone who keeps redeeming himself, but then you look at his fucking face and you go, you know what? I'm not ready to forgive you. Like, he apologizes for COVID comments, but I'm not ready, bro. To not appear as Morgan Uncensor, one of the most infamous men in the world, Andrew Tate's misogynistic tirades have been viewed billions of times online. He's now been effectively banned, though, from the internet. He doesn't think that's fair. Tonight... You know who Piers Morgan is? He's a man who's a sexist after a couple beers. And you just look at him, you go, y it took you beer to get here? Some of us... Some of us... Some of us wake up like this, Piers. Some of us don't drink alcohol, Piers. I'm going to try and work out if it is. From London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Well, good evening from London and welcome to a special edition of Piers Morgan Uncensored. Andrew Tate. One he definitely eats the box. He's one of those. One. He's the most famous man you've probably never heard of, with billions of views online. At one point this year, more people were searching Google for Andrew Tate than Donald Trump or Kim Kardashian. Hey. A former professional kickboxer, he was kicked off Big Brother in 2016 after a video emerged of him striking a woman. And what they now both claim 
was a consensual sex game. He's since made millions as a pornographer and casino owner in Romania, but it's his online videos that have made him notorious across the world, posing as a playboy with fast cars, cigars, weapons and cash. Bruce Wayne. He rants about his often scandalous views on women. And or instruct a female to provide sustenance. Cook. So I think my sister is my her husband's property, yes. Tells young men they can get as rich as him by paying for his digital life lessons. I have a hundred business tips I'm going to teach you, which will allow you to make your own money instantly. But amid a global media backlash, the net has closed on Andrew Tate. While millions still share his videos, he's effectively banned from the web, booted off Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. To his fans, he's a misunderstood satirist and the victim of big tech censorship. To many others, he's oh, is this not part two? Tonight, I'll try and get to the truth. Well, good evening. Is it this one? And welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Have you ever heard of Mr. Beast? What about PewDiePie? How about Keemstar, Logan Paul, Jake Paul? The answer might well be no. But you haven't heard of them. I did. If you've got kids, you will definitely have heard of them. Yeah, and they they're all gay. Most certainly have. They're just a tiny handful of the legions of digital personalities whose videos are viewed by literally billions of young people across the world. Their endorsements are worth millions in sales. Their opinions can instantly reshape conversations in schools, universities, and across social media. They're more influence than most musicians, soap stars, sports stars, columnists, lawmakers. But unlike those power brokers of the past, the politicians and cultural stars who can set the social agenda... What a fucking lying little bitch. Your program gets like 20 million views compared to these guys who fucking crack a million after seven-day post. You shape society with your fucking bullshit fake news, bitch. What a weasley little bitch to give it to the fucking influencers. The influencers are shaping fucking school opinions. You fucking retarded. You work with the state, you fucking fed. He's a fed. And, uh, these people seem to exist in a parallel universe. Their views go largely unchallenged, shared only as bite-sized clips. Their digital businesses often operate beyond the scrutiny of normal journalists. And, even and these influencers get paid by liberal ad companies, right? Li li literal adver li liberal advertisers. So they're pushing your school and legacy media agenda already. The fuck are you complaining about? When the fuck has Mr. Beast made a video on Obamacare? When the fuck has Mr. Beast ever talked about foreign policy? What are you talking about, dude? Shape school opinion with YouTube channel? They, f they follow all the blue pill rules you give them. Regulators, they wield massive influence over young people, and they're restricted only by the ever-changing whims of this big companies. This guy's a companies. snake bitch. It makes no more sense than senators or secretaries of state simply never appearing on television. Well, my guest tonight is a perfect case in point, an example of both enormous digital conquest and the risks that come with it. He's Andrew Tate. His last interview with me Let's so go, far Tate. viewed well, over 8 million times on YouTube alone, 17 million times across all platforms, which is staggering for someone who perhaps you're watching and thinking, who is Andrew Tate? It was a robust exchange. And Andrew Tate was here because he'd effectively been kicked off the mainstream internet for supposed misogyny. His tirades against women were viewed literally billions of times. Well, the first time around, I wanted to find out if he deserved to be banned and if he'd ever actually crossed a line from shocking opinions to genuine hate speech. Or if he just What's the P word that Andrew uses? What's the one that gets us, our skin crawling? It didn't fit the ideal model. Of the Perspa. Of Can't say it. Let's go through some. Sure. Right? Do you think women are the property yeah. of men? If he says it once, I'm going to fucking turn the stream off. No. The point I was why, making. Why have you said they are? No. If he says it three times, he loves that word. I made a religious point. Authority implies that you have the ability to control someone. No. Right? Authority believes. Uh, the authority implies that I have the moral right to sit and say that that's an irresponsible thing to do and I'm responsible for that. That's not what authority means. I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to point out that's not what authority means. If someone gives, you can, a person can give Voluntary else authority. authority is not authority. Uh, no, but that's the point. If it's a not. Woman, Piers. If Andrew, it, stop. And this is the thing that's interesting, Piers. Please let me finish. Are you, again, you're Please. behaving like a politician. But hang on. You can say I'm interrupting. You do. But, if, but you're answering a different <laughs> question to the one I asked you. Fine. No, no. The you're point. weaponizing the weaponizing, which no doesn't problem. exist. No problem. If someone comes to me and says I'm clinically depressed or I feel very, very sad, I would say the first thing you need to do is stop accepting the identity of a clinically depressed person. Stop accepting you have no control over this. Andrew, you're simply wrong. 
if that's what you believe, Piers. That's what I believe. I don't believe in things that take power away. There is not an eminent doctor in the world Pierce, that would agree with Pierce, you. Pierce, I you think you know more than doctors. I can't become clinically depressed. Bro, there's a fucking Japanese scientist who did a study on water memory, and he said, fuck you to water, and he said, I love you to water, and it made distorted shapes for the negative vibration and beautiful snowflakes for the I love you, and he proved that your mental frequencies can affect you, that when your mental health is low, you get sick more often, you get, like, this has been proven time and time again that... Rest. Why do you know? Because I don't believe in it. It's a lively stuff. I also wasn't sure if I should be interviewing him at all, if he was so unpleasant as so many... So the words have power, but really we're looking at the will, right? Will is everything. People said, well, why extend his profile and give him a platform? But the fact is that that ship had already sailed. Every teenager in the country knows Andrew Tate. It's just a lot of the parents who don't. And since that interview, Andrew has been returned to Twitter. This new owner, Elon Musk, is determined to perfect, protect free speech online. Many young people, especially boys, have literally stopped me in the street since that first interview to ask me about Andrew Tate. I've been staggered, honestly, by the response that I've had. What does it say about society that people like Andrew Tate can reach so many more people than conventional stars or journalists even? Who gets to decide where the line is and whether people like Andrew Tate cross it? Are they part of a poorly understood movement that panders to teenage rebellion like punk rock or pornography? Or are we exposing young people to new and damaging experiences we often don't see and don't understand? It's a whole new world. There are more questions about it than answers, and we're not going to answer them by pretending it doesn't exist. Well, Andrew Tate joins me again now. Andrew, good to see you. Salam alaikum, Pierce. Good to see you. I, I... Wow, he doesn't say it back. And he's in a diverse UK nation where he knows what to say, but he doesn't say it back, not even out of respect. I've genuinely been amazed by the reaction I've had in the streets. Not just here, but I went to Qatar for the World Cup, had the same thing there. A lot of people coming up about Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, but also a lot of people coming up about you. And they were almost exclusively men, young men, who genuinely see you as a role model, as somebody who inspires them, as somebody Hell they yeah. want to be like. Yeah. So that made me think, I, the first interview you had was quite combative. The second time, uh, a short interview. We're rooting for you. We're standing for you. But anyone who wears a shirt with a blazer, oh my God, is there anything worse than that? to be less so i want to try and work out in this one who you are because it struck me as extraordinary that google this week revealed some stats for the year the number one person whose name followed people google searching who is in 2022 was andrew tate yeah that's quite remarkable i think there's a whole swath of the population especially young men that feel disenfranchised they feel disenfranchised with the media machine and the things they're supposed to believe they don't feel an affinity with the educational systems or the culture, and they look at a person like me who stands up and says the things that many young men think. I haven't put a magic spell on the world. The fact that people like what I say means that they agree with me deep inside. They may be afraid to say it themselves, but I am seen as a bastion of free speech and a bastion. Not to diminish him, but don't you ever feel like Andrew Tate, kind of like ISIS, not in a bad way, but just listen to this. He's like ISIS where he took the the right wing vacuum, right? We had a Alex Jones banned and everyone banned and there's no one left and Trump banned. And then he took that vacuum perfectly, right? Where no one else was there. No one was pushing content. And he was just like, okay. And he, he was very like involved with right wing circles before he even did this shit. So it's like he absorbed all of the right wing warm, bastion for masculinity as a whole because a lot of men are largely forgotten about. Do you think you're a force for good or are you a force in evolution where perhaps you've done and said stuff what? you shouldn't have done and as you get older, perhaps as you get bigger, more follow around the world, you sense a responsibility perhaps you Bro, didn't Here's have. how you answer media. You say this, I've never done anything in my life that I regret ever. And they bring up examples and you go, nope, nope, don't regret that either. Nope, not that either. Nope, nope, nothing, never, 
Not once. What's your next question, Piers? Have early on. Well, we all evolve. Every human evolves day by day. You wouldn't be human if you didn't evolve on an hour by hour basis. But I do not think I'm a force for good. I absolutely not really know I'm a force for good because I'm a force for truth. And truth is a good thing. Without truth, we're going to end up in absolute tyranny and slavery, and we're already on our way there. I feel like we're starting to combat it. My cancellation was the beginning of a change in public consciousness. Elon having Twitter is another beginning of a change in public consciousness. And anybody who stands up and speaks what they truly believe, even if it's something I don't personally agree with, I think that truth is absolutely important. And people's personal truths and people's personal opinions, even on differing sides of the same opinion, should be heard. Tell me about your life. You were born to a, a mixed race uh, couple. Your yeah. father was an African American. Free speech is so cringe, bro. I'm so against free speech, dude. Both sides should be heard, says Andrew Tate. Uh, no. We've heard enough from that side. They should shut the fuck up for eight years. They should shut the fuck up for eight years straight. They should go in their fucking safe space and shut the fuck up for eight years. Hearing both sides just means we're still fucking losing. I'm tired of it. American, a chess player. Yeah. Uh, and your mother, she was from this country. Correct. Yeah. So my... Hey, Mods, you're going to let someone say build the camps in my chat? Like, what the fuck? I hope you're talking about FEMA. What are you talking about, dude? What is that guy talking about? Father was was black chess player. He was in the Air Force. He met my mother here in England. And then I was raised initially in the United States. And then I moved. This is not how you do it, Tate, bro. You troll a lot. Then you get serious. If you want to be protected, where you don't have to troll and then get serious and do all the angles, right? You just have to apologize. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to apologize to my dad. I'll be like, dad, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get these fucking liberals off my back. I don't mean to dishonor you, but... I need to use your name as a shield. And he'll be like, yes, son, do whatever it takes to make you safe. And I go live with peers and I go, my father was a black paraplegic lesbian with bad eyesight. And then everyone in my family goes, oh, he's strat, he's strat, he's stratting hard right now. Like this guy's not, he's not Andrew Tate. Like he's going perfect into the game. Yeah, he's covering every single base, right? As soon as Pierce does the back, he goes, actually, that's not your father, John. I go, are you talking about my biological father, Pierce? Or the one that took me when I was abandoned? And he goes, what the fuck? Now I will turn the tables on that little fucking cuck bitch, Pierce. And I'll keep playing their liberal shit with a straight face until I win the whole game. And hopefully I don't get lost in the sauce and turn into one of them, right? Because you... you you role play as a liberal long enough and you just fucking rich and have everything you want. You're like, oh, wow, this is great. Like, people are just handing me shit. They're like, do you want to come on my podcast because Zerka's identifying as a fucking tree? Moved to, to Luton, England when I was younger. So I've moved around a lot. I've lived an uh, eclectic life in many different scenarios. We've moved around. I've done a lot of different things, lived a lot of different experiences. And uh, what I'm thankful for What nationality are you? I mean, what do you identify as? I consider myself British now, but I will say that Part of me, the patriotic Brit inside of me, is devastated by the state of the UK currently. And I want w to make that very clear. The patriotic Brit in me truly loves this country, and seeing what's happening to it, especially to our major cities, is almost heartbreaking to watch in real time. In what way? Uh, it's falling apart. This is a failed society. By every metric you can possibly measure, it is absolutely and utterly failing. The cost of living crisis, the crime rates, everything is falling apart. If you compare it to a country like the United Arab Emirates, you compare it to. He's trying to say it's a shithole. City like Dubai, London, which should be the greatest city on earth is failing in absolutely every metric because our leadership is a joke. If you look at Dubai and the UAE, the leadership there is so flawless, so genuinely... The difference from leadership in Dubai and EU is that in Dubai, they don't share their wives. That's the only difference. That's the only politics that matter. Genius. They saw ahead and built almost a utopia. And then you look at London, you can't even walk around with a watch on. It's disgusting. You know, it's very interesting. I was in Qatar for the World Cup. Obviously, a lot of people in England taking a very censorious moral view about the World Cup being in the Middle East at all because of their laws against homosexuality, because of their treatment of migrant workers. I've got to say, not that I don't share the concerns about those things, of course I do, but I found a lot of the virtue signalling, and I think that's what it was in many cases, about the whole region actually quite distasteful. 
Because when I was in Qatar, A, I thought the World Cup was fantastically well run. Incredibly good experience. It's like a fucking perfectly evolved diglet. But a lot of Qataris were saying to me, you know, there's this weird quaint feeling back in your country that we all want to aspire to behave like that. That we all want to ha live in a country with massive drug problems, with massive knife crime issues, with scenes like the European Championships final where it's complete lawlessness going on. Um, where stuff like the NHS, the system of healthcare, is basically collapsing. Yep. Where the education system is dropping behind. Yep. So on and so on and so on. And it's a really interesting perspective. They were like, I know you all think that we want to have your form of democracy and your form of life. But actually, we're fine, thanks. Absolutely, because it's a failed society, and it's godless. I think it's disgusting. We leave our old people to... Piers looks like if you fuse the Lickitung with a ditto, and he's, like, melting. Raw in old people's homes? And then we sit there and say we don't have enough money... Piers looks like a melting ice cream cone. Money for nurses? I understand. Like that uh, scene in X-Men, when the guy comes out of the... The president comes out of the water this nurse strike very well and how frustrating it can be if you walk into a hospital and the nurse is not prepared to work but the nurses would be prepared to work at the current wage if they believe this country was spending its money prudently when you see this country spending its money and just absolutely wasting it pulling out of thin air to fund proxy wars god knows where that has nothing to do with them of course as a nurse you're going to stand up and say well can't i get a pay rise this country has failed on every metric and especially our major cities I, i've just come to london now i made it very clear to my private jet pilot i said fuel the jet and leave it running because the second i'm finished talking to peers i'm leaving this Base. it's disgusting Get this country fuck. and London as a that is so based. Get out of the country, man. The whole ten years ago was one of the most hospitable cities on earth. Now you cannot walk around safely with a watch on, and you're a full-grown man. You're a full-grown adult. When's the last time there's been a serious problem in your life that you completely ignored and it fixed itself? Never ever. What are any of our politicians doing to fix any of the problems we're? Well, I saw facing? today that Sadiq Khan is planning to run again for the third term of office as mayor. All I can say is, oh, I just, everyone I know who's had any experience of crime at any level in London in the last few years has had a bad experience of it, of the way it's been handled. You know, I mean, I can give an example. I can reveal this now. I've talked for 18 months. I got a specific death threat on one of my son's Instagram pages in public, a, a, a public comment. And it was Am I the only person that when I got on the internet and I got all these death threats, I go, f I, the first thing I said was, Oh, it's real. It's not a dream. People know who I am. This is great. Like, I'm the only one who used it as a metric of success. Everyone else is like, oh, I got a death threat. Oh, no. It was very specific about what this person was going to do. Yeah. I couldn't use the police to evade him. We, we know where you live. We're going to come and kill you. And then a second one threatening uh, my son and his mo mother, my ex-wife. I called in the police. I thought, I'm not having them putting death threats on my son. For sure. I called the police. Police investigated this. They arrested somebody over a year ago. And then I heard from the police this week that despite 18 months of investigation of a public... People who do death threats don't do shit. Dude, you know who does... You know who's behind most death threats is like a huge supporter. Like Tapia. Like one of those guys. And it's like someone just wants to see if you're like a courageous... You'll react courageously or like how you'll react to it. ...posted post a comment on Instagram threatening to kill me uh, on my son's Instagram that they ha will not be able to pursue the case. Now, and I thought, imagine, th th I'm high profile. This was a front page of the Sun newspaper, this if story. If that same man called a transgender person the wrong pronouns, he would be in trouble. Right. So doesn't it just show absol how absolutely asinine and banal our legal system has become? That would never happen in a country like United Arab, Emir United Arab Emirates the place I'm now residing in Dubai, where the leadership has common sense. And I'm saying that all the leadership structures, doesn't matter if it's labor or conservative, across all of it in this nation have completely and utterly failed. Sadiq Khan is a loser. Because when you have yes. a city which is losing, which, which London is, is losing in all, very, in all metrics across its competitive cities around the world, mm. and you're in charge of it, mm. by extension, you're a loser. I will tell you right now, instead of virtue signaling and giving Qatar a hard time over their religious beliefs, what we should be doing is a treaty with Qatar to build a prison deep in the desert. Give me, make me mayor of London. We'll make a prison deep in the desert. And if you're caught with a knife or robbing someone, you can go do 25 years with one meal a day in the, in the scorching sun. And then what we'll do is we'll put cameras there and we'll interview you once a week and broadcast that out to the nation and see if you change your mind and make people understand that this is a country that should be respected and our laws should be respected. Instead, what happens? What has Sadiq or any of the people in charge of this country actually done to fix any of our issues besides...
25 years? Bro, you get caught threatening someone with a knife. Death penalty. Worldwide death penalty in every country on earth. How about that? I sit around and talk. Nothing. None of them have done anything, but they seem ultra concerned with finding money for proxy wars, ultra concerned with rainbow flags in another country that is uninterested in them, and their priorities are completely messed up. Of course the ambulance people are. Of course the ambulance drivers are striking. Of course the nurses are striking. Nobody cares about the most important things in this nation. It's a failing country in real time, and that's why I've left. What about the specific allegation? By the way, I don't disagree with a lot of that, um, because I do think this country is in big trouble. And I do think that one of the problems is people think if they do have a crime against them, nobody cares anymore. I right? know I know nobody cares. I can I have specific examples and people who I know personally. Absolutely and utterly nobody cares. I was in Harrods yesterday and someone tried to rob someone's watch in the middle of the store. I walk around with six full grown I have a security team of six full grown men, plus me and my brother, eight military age males all over 110 kilos, mm. big men, just so I can walk around this city. It's absolutely unacceptable. What about the issue of race? And I mentioned that in the context of the Damn, Harry so. and Meghan ongoing debate, their war with the royal family, war against the monarchy, their specific uh, constant... Uh, Meghan Merkel is a stupid bitch. And the Queen is an adrenochrome drinking pedo. Referencing to the fact that they believe they were driven out of here because of racism in Britain. What do you make of that debate? That, that's absolute fallacy. I and you're from a mixed-race background yourself. Correct. I'm from a mixed-race background myself. And while we're discussing the leaders of the UK, although I do think they're doing a terrible job, it's kind of hard for Meghan to say that... The She's dead now, though. You want to hear the weirdest thing is... I'm just like, when the Queen died, I was like this, chilling with my fam. And I'm like, damn, that fucking pedo is dead. And my dad turned to me and he's like this. She was like my mother. And he got up and walked away. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm like, Ma, does he know anything about the Queen? And my mom's like, no, I'm pretty sure he just, like, first Googled her when she died. Because my mom grew up in London. So I'm like, how come you don't care? And she's like, I don't care. I'm not lying, dude. I don't know why he said that to me. And then later, I guess he regretted it. I guess my dad's the kind of guy that's like, if anyone dies, you cannot disrespect them. Even bad people, it's like, he thinks it's like a bad thing. The UK is a I'm racist not country when the leader of the UK is darker skinned than her and the mayor of London is darker skinned than her and I am a person who's probably darker skinned than her and I've never experienced any kind of bigotry. Against no, remember when they killed Osama and Americans were partying on the streets? <laughs> what the fuck was that about? Like, could you imagine you're doing like a beer bong with frat guys because Osama's dead? Americans are so funny, dude. Like, you can't make this shit up. It's myself, besides the fact I'm a straight <laughs> male. I'll get bigotry for that before I'll get bigotry for my skin color. I think it's just a cop-out and her not wanting to be perspicacious and self-reflective enough to understand that she has attacked an age-old institution and there are people who are very patriotic about that institution. And by attacking it and bringing a degree of distaste to it, there's going to be people who don't like her. And if you're a dislikable person, you can't just instantly stand up and say it's because of my skin color. It might because, be because of your actions and some of the things you've said. I mean, I think it's probably no doubt she's had racism on social media because it's... Who a hasn't, it's a, it's a cesspool. You probably have. Well, as I said just now, I've had death threats on social media and no, no, one, no one seemed to care very much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's probably inarguable. My issue with what they've both been doing is if you're going to make allegations against an institution like the royal family and the monarchy, you've got to actually provide some evidence. You can't just spray gun this thing out there and say, well, somebody was racist. Yeah, and airing dirty laundry is never going to be respected by the populace, and being a tattletale is never going to be respected by the populace. And I think the problem with the modern world we're living in is a lot of age-old traditions are being destroyed in real time. It doesn't matter what the tradition is. Most of them are being eroded. That's just weird. Why is Mohammed Atta's passport in chat singing to me now? The lonely stoner frees his mind at night. <laughs> kind of fucking world are we in? And something like the Mohammed British... Mohammed was a stoner? ...royal family, which has been around for a very long time. It's an age-old tradition. <sighs> One of the things holding the UK together... Bro, in my country, it's not Mohammed. It's Mohammed. It's a little different. That name's a little different. Okay, Mohammed Atta. They're one of the last things we have to sit and 
detriment it and to sit and insult it and to give away secrets from inside of it and try and paint a, a negative image of it is going to upset a lot of people. And you have to be prepared for that backlash. You can't say I've done things that upset people, but it's nothing to do with what I've done. It's purely because of my skin color. Also, it's kind of ironic that she's doing that because she's not particularly dark skinned. It's kind of funny to sit here, sit here, sit here, I mean, look, watch I, her sit and say, yeah, race, I, race, I, race. I think the truth is I don't know what, look, you can say that. I can't. Um, the, the reality of it is, bro, anyone can say that, bro. Just because you're a pale guy doesn't mean you cannot observe reality. <laughs> you can say that I can't because of some weird <laughs> rule. <laughs> right. Oh, I didn't notice. Obama's just black. Obama's a black guy. Oh, wow. I just don't. I can't say that, but you can. I just don't know what the specifics of the racism she says she's had because we've not seen any evidence. The universe is a funny place, Piers. If you're looking for something, you're going to find it, right? When I got cancelled, when they attacked me unfairly, lied about me across the entire main... If you're looking for something, you're going to find it, so stop looking through your girl's phone and she'll be loyal. <laughs> Stream media go. deleted me from social media so I couldn't defend myself and lied about me repeatedly. I could have stood up and said, it's because I'm brown. I didn't do that. I sat and said, okay, there's people who misunderstand my message. My message is a, is a positive one. People misunderstand me. Let me self-reflect and understand that, yes, perhaps this said a long time ago was said in the wrong way. Perhaps this was misunderstood. Perhaps people don't understand this. I could have just copped out and could have just been refusing to self-reflect on any level and said, it's because I'm brown, that's why they did it. But that's not the mature way to be as an adult. What did you think of the Jeremy? Bro, you gave us a story about your Batman lunchbox as a minority and your gay best friend. <laughs> you can't be doing that kind of shit, my guy. People like me never forget. <laughs> People like me don't have a job. We don't have mine to forget. <laughs> hey. Fucking get to your little lunchbox. <laughs> okay, Mohammed, stop. Hey, Clarkson. Fiori, where he wrote what I. He says, You want the Sonic song? Sonic. No, we're doing this after. I think most people, but including him uh, belatedly after he'd published it and written the column, he did make a, an analogy from a Game of Thrones uh, scene, which most people, I think, did find crossed the line and was deeply offensive. Mm -hmm. I, I think it crossed the line. What do you think? Yeah, I understand why people feel that. But when you attack an institution as old as the British royal family, you're attacking... Something so cute about Piers where he looks like a pigeon. You know? He moves like a pigeon. He's like a very bird-like person with his, like, gobble-gobble fat neck and shit. Attacking patriotism in and of itself for one of the... And then most you got fucking Geo dude next to Respected countries or previously most respected countries on earth, and you're going to have some visceral reactions. Perhaps you, Jeremy Cole. Clarkson is, is too famous and too well renowned to say those kind of things, but there's a lot of people who genuinely feel that way, and mm -hmm. that's why he said it. And this is what happens when you attack age old institutions on in any country. Should he have ap apologized? That's a good question. It looks like he did. Personally, I think as a man, you should stand up, say what you mean, mean what you say. I don't think you should ever apologize for anything you've ever said. Even me. Mm -hmm. what, if you, what if you say something truly then if, 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 very well, offensive and you actually do regret it? If you truly regret it, then yeah, okay, you can apologize. But if at the time you meant it, then the best thing you can do is say, look, I have just changed my mind. I no longer feel that way. But at the time, that's how I felt. And I'm the person who stands, says what he... You got to learn to apologize, Craig. That's when you get... When, that's when she gives it up, right? And you go, hey, babe, my bad. And then she goes, okay, come inside of me. Right, your wife will be like, come inside now that you've apologized. And you're inside, and you're like this. Hmm. I don't know how sincere that apology was. And she goes, what did you say? And you say, hmm. I said, I love you. He feels, and that's what I felt at the time, <laughs> and I apologize that offended you. Andrew Tate, we'll be back with you after the break. We'll talk to you about Twitter again. I'm kidding. And uh, Elon Musk retort restoring you to the platform. Has it calmed you down? Are you as controversial on there? Are you mindful that you're only one false move like Kanye West, for example, away from being removed again? Well, Elon Musk has restored a throng of banned accounts that's taking over Twitter with a small commitment to free speech. He's also shown he has a line of his own, though. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones remains yeah, What happened to the anti-Jewish Avengers? Like, what is Nick Fuentes and Kanye 
and the gang up to now. Like, I feel like it's Aquaman. <laughs> They're like in their uh, bat cave and shit. And Kanye Ye West was reinstated, then banned again for posting a swastika inside a Star of David. Andrew oh, Tate God. is back too for now. Anyway, he was first removed in 2017 for saying women should bear some responsibility as victims of rape. And he hasn't exactly been shy since his reprieve. Let's take a look. Must be so, it must be so hard having a dinner with Kanye, right? Because you're just chilling, right? You're eating your oodles and noodles. And then he goes like this. Say their name, John. I go, oh, fuck. He's doing it to me. I knew this wouldn't be a free dinner. Like, say their names. Name them, John. And I go, oh, fuck, I'm sweating, bro. I don't know. I just fucking, I don't know if you're going to be, are you still going to be my friend after this? Or am I going to lose my job and get canceled and not have Kanye West on, on my team anymore? Like, what's, what's going on, dude? <laughs> like, what am I returning to? Like, can I, if you guarantee me a compound where I can stay with you and, like, have, like, a good life, right? I think we can work something out, but like, I don't want you to just ditch me after I JQ hard live, right? He'd be like, say it, John. I'd be like, oh boy, I don't know, you know, it's like our greatest ally in the Middle East, and I start panicking. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I don't, it's just, you know, people, people, uh, as individuals, you don't judge people and they don't move like a, he'd be panicking. Genghis Khan had endless women and 200 children as a reward for conquest. He tweeted, I'm the most searched man on the planet. I've conquered Earth. I'm the highest status male mm -hmm. on the planet. Females do not expect loyalty from me. They only expect that of lesser men. Wow. Then there was this. Imagine having less than 10 children because you're a... <clears throat> who doesn't have four wives. Genetic failures. I think it's pussy bitch. <laughs> Finally, if a girl follows me and she's hot and I see a single picture of her in a private jet... It's block. Women can't afford jets. Women are all brokies. Why are you <laughs> flying around on some man's jet? You should have been a virgin when I met you. Haram. All right, Andrew Tate. Nice. Are you, you're nice. getting very near the knuckle with some of those tweets. Am I? Will you tell me? I don't think so. I think people can understand they're semi-satirical. I think people can understand. Do you mean them as jokes or do you mean them? No, I don't mean them as jokes. I mean, they're a overall public commentary and observation i do mean what i say if i were to see a girl on a private plane on instagram for example i would assume that a man put her on that private plane i would not assume she bought it herself what if it was perhaps Ari that makes me misogynistic what if it was ariana grande or beyonce well that's slightly different isn't it why because they're famous and very they're rich women? yeah of course and they're famous and very rich but so if there I, are lots of women if I you saw, wouldn't think that if you well, actually saw them on if i saw plane. well if i saw a 19 year old girl from moldova where the average wage is 200 dollars a month and she was on a private jet i would assume that with the balance of probabilities considering i'm an adult is very likely because of her beauty, a man has put her on that private plane. Yes, if that makes me misogynistic instead of just perspicacious enough to understand how the world works, so be it. I'm a realist. Should you be such a generalist about these things? Well, you have to be a generalist when you're looking for in the balance of probabilities and trying to find balance in the world. You have to be a generalist. In general, if I stroke a lion, it's going to bite my hand. In general. There might be a nice one, but I don't want to find out. So that's how the world works. You've praised the Taliban in the past. Would you do so again tonight? The world is not black and white. The world is gray. It's very difficult to sit and make black and white assumptions about anything. To sit. Damn, that's his worst take. Where have you heard that before? <sighs> that's how Destiny starts off most of his streams. Where he goes, These are nuanced, complex issues, John. The world is not black and white. Oh, shut the fuck up, you fucking Freemason. I know you're a Freemason, Steve. Sit and say that the Taliban are completely and utterly evil and we're completely and utterly good, as you just discussed with the moral high ground. There's I good and evil in the Quran, dude. The Quran talks about good and evil. How are you saying it's not black and white? Are you a fucking salesman? I believe that the Taliban bring law and order. It may what is wrong with Freemasons? Pooh! Spits in the chat to that Mason. Hello, brother. How are your brother Masons? Pooh! Pooh! Huh? Secret old religions? Is that what you're into? Pooh! Huh? You like Osiris? Pooh! I have Horus? Pooh! Your mom's a whore? Pooh! Yeah? May not be the law and order we like, but it's a form of law and order, and humans tra usually gravitate towards... What about towards their treatment of women? I mean, only well, tonight... Only tonight, they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists 
to go and teach them a lesson. The feminists are so tough, and they stand up and say they can do anything <laughs> a man can do. Let's arm them up and send them to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah, but Beast. It's, it's, not a, it's, a, it's a serious matter, isn't it? Are you kidding? Women fucking run the world. They're so powerful. They don't, don't even give them machine guns and arms. Don't arm them up. Let them go no weapons into Afghanistan. Because who rules the world, girls? They got this shit, bro. Trust me. Don't listen to Andrew Tate. Listen to my game plan. Women don't uh, that's get the education a, and, that, they and, that's, and that's a very serious answer. If women are just as capable as men in terms of combat, like feminists pretend they are, then they can go over there and they can deal with the a Taliban. A lot of women do go to combat. Oh, exactly. So they can go deal with the Taliban. It's nothing to do with me. They can stand up and fight for their own rights. Surely you wouldn't defend the Taliban it, banning women from university. It's saying it's nothing to do with me, Pierce. It's absolutely nothing what to do with me. What about the Afghan women? It's nothing to do with me on any level. You don't have a view? I have a view. My view is that people naturally gravitate towards law and order. And if you didn't have the Taliban, you'd have different warlords operating in lawlessness. And there would be okay. I'm just gonna interrupt. They should be having families and at home peers. Okay, snap out of it with your dumb liberal programming. Okay, geometry is not that important. University. It's saying it's nothing to do with me, Pierce. It's absolutely nothing what to do with me. What about the Afghan women? It's nothing to do with me on any level. You don't have a view? Hmm. I have a view. My view is that people naturally gravitate towards law and order. And if you didn't have the Taliban, you'd have different warlords operating in lawlessness. And there would be no way to prevent your store, your market stall, getting completely robbed by someone with an AK-47. And people are going to gravitate towards a form of law and order. America left. They left the power vacuum. And the power vacuum is now full. Well, I don't disagree with that. Okay. Well, I do, think, I do think the banning of women from university in Afghanistan is utterly horrific. And I think the feminists are going to arm themselves. They're going to show us that they can do anything a man can do. They're going to go over there to combat. And they're going to teach Taliban a lesson. Why mm -hmm. can't you just say on that, you know what, it's completely wrong? Because it's not my point. It's I don't understand. But it makes you it makes me think. It'll make your critics think that you don't think it's wrong. They could ban all men. They could ban all short. But they're people. not. They're only banning women. Correct. They could ban all short people. They could ban all people with long hair. And it, none of it's anything to do with me. So they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to go to war with the Taliban. But you've just literally spent an impassioned first segment comparing the way, for example, Dubai handles law and order Correct. to this country. Correct. So you do express views about different laws. Absolutely. Both places. So when like I put to you a law that basically bans women. Wouldn't Tate's best guard here be a religious take? I don't know why he doesn't like, didn't you convert so you can do that? Like use what you got now. I mean, from being educated, it's not, why is it a problem for you to say, you know what, it's wrong? There are both places I've resided in, Dubai and London, so I have personal experience. I can give my personal opinion, but like I said, it has absolutely nothing to do with me with what the Taliban decide to do inside of Afghanistan. And if they decide that's the most prudent way to run their society, then we have two choices. We can either go over there and start another war that we shouldn't be involved in and waste a bunch of life, or we can sit and say, it's up to them. They should govern themselves. They're people. We're no better than them. Here, let me answer Piers, okay? Piers, why do you assume... Afghanis are some fucking savages who are marrying goats. Why do you assume your dumb liberal system that has formed the worst mental health in the West, you, you're the highest suicide rates and anxiety and depression, why do you assume your system's better than the one built off the Quran? You sick, fucking, disgusting bitch. Is Tate fucking retarded? Like, he has no fucking response to him here. This is such an easy response, man. And they've decided to live their lives a particular way, and that's how they're going to live it. Like I said, if feminists are very upset and they're very disgusted by the fact that in Afghanistan, women cannot go to school, I've been told repeatedly by feminists that they're just as capable as men in all realms, and I expect them to arm themselves and fly over to Afghanistan and fix it. Like a lot of women have done in combat. Um, good. Congratulations. Go fight. Well, this is the thing that's very interesting. Because when you talk about ideas, it's not even just about Afghanistan and feminism. When you talk about ideas, they must all be defended at some point. There has to come down to violence. The world is backed by violence. Nobody wants to talk about this. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have a disagreement between two parties, eventually if the disagreement continues, it ends up in violence. Feminism is defended by men. Men stand up and defend feminism, not feminists themselves, because they're incapable of violence. And we're in a situation now where you're saying that we should send men to go and fight for feminism. Why? It's not a man's problem. No, I think I'm saying feminists that, believe. Well, I, think, I think well, hey, I think men can be feminists too because if feminism believes in Ugh. equality for women, it's not I'll sign up to it. Any, I don't agree with radical feminists who hate men. Right? They're, they're do, to me, the radical anything to me is a bad thing. This is where you trip him up. You go, Pierce, can I be a black man as well? Just trip him up there because usually he can answer it quickly, but because he said men can be feminists too, he will hesitate on this one.
right? In this moment, right? This would be the off guard moment where it's like you start to strip his credibility and people go, oh, he's kind of flippy. Like Piers is kind of shaky in this topic. And, right? You gotta fucking throw curveballs at Piers, bro. Yeah, and I think most feminism in the West currently is radical. Well, some of it is, no yeah. question. Absolutely, but this is my point. My point is that what the Taliban are going to do whatever the Taliban decide to do. If I'm going to fly over to another country, I will respect their laws and customs. It's not my job to come along and tell other people how to live. I don't believe I have a moral high ground in that degree. And if people are genuinely upset and disgusted by it, the bottom line in most disagreements on the earth is violence. People who feel like they should go and fix it, then fix it with violence, then it can be the feminists who feel so outraged by it. But it's funny, they don't comment on these subjects, feminists. They seem to instead mm. attack the Western male for some reason. You've deleted a video in which you praised ISIS. Why? I don't know which video you're talking about in particular. It might have been a video from a long time ago. But in general, I understand that, like I said, the world is not black and white. The world is gray areas. And Western imperialism as a whole has been causing more problems than it's ever fixed. And it's disgusting. There it is. I don't know the exact video you're referencing. But sometimes when an underdog destroys a Western imperialist, I have a degree of... I wouldn't say satisfaction, but every satisfaction. Single, no, but there's a, there's certainly a degree of uh, oh, the, the, the way ISIS. Well, I don't know the particular. Themselves. I don't know about the particular video we're talking. Well, about. ISIS were one of the most deadly terror groups in the world. Absolutely, they committed a series of appalling atrocities. Sure. Oh yeah. Killing innocent people left, Completely. right, and centre. Yeah. How could you possibly have satisfaction? Well, I, if it's the video I'm recollecting, if it's the video we're talking about, it's about the fact that I believe ISIS was funded by the West and created by the West in the first place. Ooh. Getting hotter, not totally hot yet. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm totally a joke. I'm joking. I'm not entertaining. And it wasn't a degree of satisfaction like I'm happy ISIS exists. It was a commentary on the world. Well, here's what you said. ISIS are the real Muslims because ISIS do exactly what the book says. Kill everyone who's not a Muslim and chop people's heads off. And <laughs> them oh, shit. I remember this quote. Be raging lunatics. But all the other Muslims go, they're not real Muslims because I read the book and ignore those parts. Well, then you're not an effing Muslim because you're ignoring the effing book. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, shit. Is there a recovery from this? Oh, shit. Oh, he's in trouble, dude. Let's see how he recovers. Because ISIS do exactly what the book says. Kill everyone who's not a Muslim and chop people's heads off and set them on fire and be raging lunatics. But all the other Muslims go, they're not real Muslims because I read the book and ignore those parts. Well, then you're not an effing Muslim because you're ignoring the effing book. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point you've just raised because I am now Islamic. And it's, it's funny because I used <laughs> to be an atheist. And when you're an atheist, you believe that religion causes more problems than it fixes and then you come to a realization and you start to learn the truth of yourself and the truth of God and you realize that religion is actually the cure for most of the problems in the world and godlessness is the problem in the world <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. so that is something I will apologize for and admit I was wrong about because I was atheistic and now as a Muslim I understand that's absolutely not the case if that's the particular video you're talking about, then... then there's well, that's really interesting. So you, you regret saying that? Yeah, because you learn and you grow and you evolve, as I said. Uh, at the time, I believed it because I didn't believe in God at the time. It was a very long time ago. It's actually kind of a testament to you, Piers. You managed to find the oldest possible videos of me that have ever existed. But at the time, I was atheistic. Well, no, I was curious because you have recently converted to Islam. Correct. So these questions, I think, are pertinent to your conversion. Absolutely. As to what you actually believe as a practicing Muslim now. Uh, yeah, I believe that Islam is beautiful. I believe it's the last true religion on earth. It's certainly the last respected religion on earth. And I felt differently inside since I've converted. And I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. That particular video was once again satirical. A lot of people watching this would not have seen it. They would not have seen the joke element of it. It's fine. It, but It's not funny, though, is no, it? Well, you know, it's like most of the time, as we discussed in our first interview with me, things are taken out of context, short form, et cetera, et cetera. But... All in all, you could say the same things about Christians. If you were to read the Old Testament and say, stick to the Old Testament, you'd kill anyone who works on a Sunday. So it, it, it's not applicable to You wouldn't books countenance violence. Say again? You don't countenance violence. I absolutely do not countenance violence. When I was talking about violence being the bottom line, salute, the bottom line decider between dis disagreeing points of view, it's not I'm s calling for violence. I'm just making a commentary on how the world genuinely functions. But when you use a word like satisfaction, 
you understand that people will watch that and think, how can you possibly find any form of terrorism satisfying? I don't find any form of terrorism satisfying. I don't find Western terrorism satisfying either. I don't think it's satisfying that we managed to find $500,000 per bomb to drop on some farmer who makes $4 a day under the name of freedom. And, well, then no we can't, uh, and, and, and we can't seem to pay our... And I'm a good guy too. I'm with you guys. <laughs> Nor do I. <laughs> God, they're such fucking rodents. Why doesn't... Tate just say, yeah, it's a little satisfying seeing, you know, the Taliban take all the military equipment and they're like the underdogs. It's kind of like comedic. There's like this, there's this funniness to it. I don't know. Nurses enough to do their jobs. I don't find any kind of terrorism. And it's actually very interesting. You talk about the world terrorism, terrorist and freedom fighter, good guy and bad guy. All of this is. John, are you for or against abortion? Why the fuck are you asking that question here? The fuck do you think? objective there are people who believe that the west are the biggest terrorists on the earth there are people who believe that america causes more wars than anyone else and they've killed more people than anyone else and there's people who believe the absolute opposite so once again it depends who you're talking to it's a subjective conversation there's no black and white in the world there's areas of gray and that's how it is so i thought you were talking about another video where i was saying that isis is standing up and fighting for what they believe in i'm not saying what they believe in is right but that's what they were do you believe government created isis well if by government you mean Mossad. I'll be doing comedy all night. Make sure you guys all spam. John is a funny comedian. This is all jokes. Have fun. Love thy neighbor and all that. Fighting for at the time. And it was a completely different video than the one you were actually referencing. But you would condemn them now? I don't condemn anybody doing anything bad to anybody. I, I'm not a person out here with a criminal record. I don't hurt anyone. I just spent my first segment on this show talking about how I believe in law and order and how important that is. I think people can operate inside of their lives safely and walk around. Man, woman, child can walk around in safety in any city they live in. How that law and order is constructed is not my jurisdiction. I'm not in charge of the law and order of, of Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, any of them. It's nothing to do with me. I want to talk to you after the break about masculinity. Why is it that so many young men John, should I be a Mossad agent if I get the opportunity? Dude, your name is Goblin underscore for life. You're clearly anti-Semitic. That's your final warning. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm really suspect. Gravitate to you. I'm what is your view you. of what it takes to be a man? Welcome back to this special edition of Piers Morgan Uncensored with Andrew Tate, one-on-one. -on -one. So Ash Sarkar, who's a... Uh, a lively contributor to this program has tweeted, Andrew Tate, who you're interviewing about free speech, thinks women are a man's property. We shouldn't be allowed to drive. Boasts about only dating teenagers to imprint on them. Misogynists are disgusting, whether they're in Afghanistan or a swanky London studio. Am I a misogynist, am I? I don't think... I, first of the things she said, I don't even truly believe. Uh, it's, I can, if you're prepared to listen to me, I'll explain to you exactly why she's utterly and, completely and utterly wrong. If you can go through the points again, she well, said... Do, do you think one. you're a misogynist? Absolutely not. I'm not a misogynist on any level. This is one of those buzzwords they throw at and that just throw at people randomly. Homophobic, racist, misogynist, they just throw it out at people. What is I'm, your view of women? I'm a realist. What is I'm, your real view of women? I absolutely not really love women. I adore women. I have good relationships with women. Not a single woman has come up to me on the street since I've been cancelled. Not a single one has said anything negative. Every single one of them has said positive things. You're a traditional male. I wish more men were like you. You understand your masculine roles. You understand what you're supposed to do. You understand you're supposed to protect women. You're exactly the kind of man I'd be looking for. I've never had a negative interaction with a female ever since I've been dubbed the biggest misogynist Where in the world. is the... Please, please let me finish. I'm sorry, sorry, Pierce. Also, there's not been a single woman who's accused me of a crime, not a single woman who's accused me of rape, not a single woman who's come out and said anything from my entire past of 36 years I've done anything wrong ever. Anybody else with my level of fame, any footballer, any other movie star at least has people who've come out and accused them of rape. I love women who give good beaches. Your name is Guns Blazing XX. X guns with a Z blazing, and you capitalize the Zs, and then added an X to make it extra badass. You've never felt the woman. X, Y, Z. I have no woman who's come out and ever said I've hurt her. No woman who's come out and ever said I've done damage to her or been horrible to her. Everybody who ever interacted with me has said I've been a nice person. All of them. Hey, so, so this okay. random Twitter nobody who seems to know so much is full of... All right, you, you've responded to her tweet. Yeah, uh, she's a liar. But here's what, where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with? I think a lot of women like men to be masculine, 
and, and what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask you is that you are engaged in that debate with men all the time. Women don't like masculine men. They like toxic masculine men. Don't ever get that mixed up. Where is the line for you where men shouldn't cross, where the behaviour should be kept within a line? Please define toxic masculinity. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line from being a masculine... Toxic masculinity means so masculine that it rages people in society. It angers them. And you don't know why sometimes. Good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you have, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine where men. Did you, where did you get your views about this from? Just what I grew up with. It's the family I grew up around. And your the, father? And Bro, and on the Titanic, I'd identify as a small female child within the before it even hits the ice, right? Your mother? Yeah, both? And, and the world I lived in. And I think a lot... Excuse me, before it gets shot down by a torpedo because it was filled with bankers. All the things I'm saying now about masculinity and how people should act in the world how the world should function were considered completely normal and accepted by everybody only 20 years ago. I think the world's just lost its mind. For me to stand up and say a man should protect a woman now gets to be called a misogynist and cancelled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is, everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Who do you think? You think they go themselves? Are they going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. So well, we, send women, we send women in the armed forces too. We, you, you have to generalize when you make points. There are many, many courageous exceptions, people. Exceptions, exceptions women in the armed do not forces. disprove the rule. No, but there are, you've got to concede there are yes. many courageous women serving in the armed forces. Absolutely, and not one ever throughout thousands of years of history, right? Never. On this five thousand seven hundred year old earth, there's never been a courageous woman. Early, completely correct, but by and large, traditionally, soldiers are men. Exceptions do not disprove the rule. Well, it's not an exception. It's a fact that there are a lot of women now in the armed forces. Correct. But if you were to take the average soldier, they are a male. If you're allowed to say who's a male and who isn't nowadays, I'm assuming their gender, I apologize. If you were to take the average soldier, they're a male, which means that exceptions are the female soldiers, which because there's a lower percent of them, a lower probability. Exceptions do not disprove the rules. Men do the fighting. What right now in Ukraine, men cannot leave. Women are allowed to leave because men have to fight in the front line and women are allowed to go to Dubai. That is how it is. What do you say to young men who come to you for advice, who feel lost, who don't really know where they fit into society? I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that... A lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important. And What's the greatest attribute a man can have? Is hair. It's probably hair. Like you look at Vegeta, Goku, Trunks, all the greats. Strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dame Sheila Hancock says we've become too over-emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Has she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. True. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity Base. and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? 
you get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not mm -hmm. wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You need to suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there and cry your eyes out or blame other people. Tough or being cop a woman out. too. And John Zerga, you put words in people's mouths all the time. It's better than you, sinner, that you watch me put dig in your mother's mouth and all that. And your mom's a whore. It's certainly tough being a woman, but I'm not a woman, so why would I speak on issues I do not understand? I'm a man. You can feel so, an empathy for women. I feel empathy, certainly, but I do not understand their issues. See, a lot I, of men come up to me and they admire you. I've got to say, a lot of women I've spoken to don't admire. They think you represent misogyny. They think when they hear you not commit to saying the Taliban shouldn't be banning women from university education, well, why can't he just say that's wrong? Well, firstly, that's not my experience. I experience the absolute and utter opposite of that. Secondly... It's because it's a moral point I'm making. My moral point is I speak on things I understand. I speak on experiences I've had. Would you I believe on, in equality? I speak, yes. I speak on, uh, sure. I speak on subjects I know intimately. I do not feel qualified. I'm a realist, and I do not feel qualified to sit and discuss the gender laws in Afghanistan. I have not been to Afghanistan. I have not researched the subject thoroughly. I am not going to sit here and say how the Taliban should be running their country. It's nothing to do with me. I find it quite flattering, Piers, that although, you know, I understand I'm monumentally influential, the most Google man on earth, etc., I find it very flattering that you think I have some kind of control over the domestic policy of Afghanistan. But I assure you, I don't. I don't. No, no, so I'm, not, nothing to do I'm with not asking you to have a view on having uh, influence over domestic policy. I'm sure the Taliban couldn't give us stuff what either of us say about it. Um, it's just curious to me that it's an easy win for you to make women think you're not anti them, to say that when they're not given equality, as the women in Afghanistan clearly are not, because they're not allowed to go to university now, as of today, that is clearly unequal, unfair. We should all be able to agree that that is wrong. Well, certainly as a realist... Even you, tough guy, I, I, Andrew. It's Tate. not tough guy. I am a professional. As a professional, I can state that, yes, it is not equal. Yes, it is not fair. That is obvious for anybody. I'm not saying those things are not true. What I'm saying is, it's nothing to do with me. Right, OK, but you made a concession you think is wrong. It's wrong I said it's unequal and it's unfair. Yeah, so wrong. Well, perhaps. And, Force and, yourself, Andrew. No, perhaps it's wrong under certain moral guidelines, but under the moral guidelines which are currently in charge of the jurisdiction of Afghanistan, they don't believe it's wrong. It's nothing to do with me. Well, then I, I'm not going to sit here and tell other countries how to run their laws. I'm going to live in societies which, with right, laws I'll I respect. Take a, you know what? I'll take unfair and unequal. Sure. Because that's self-explanatory. We're going to have a game of chess in a minute after the break because you are a very good chess player. I can hold my own in the chess board. Your father was a chess uh, international master, uh, in fact. And we're going to have a five-minute game of speed chess. Winner takes all, Mr Tate. Welcome back to Pittsburgh on Central. Andrew Tate is still here. Andrew's father was an American chess international master and his son's pretty good at it too. Well, I can hold my own as my school chess champion. Uh, and with five minutes left on the programme, we're going to have a game of speed chess. When it takes all. All right, well, you're white. Off you go. It's racist. Off we go. Five minutes. Go. That's racist, Piers. Cancel Piers Morgan. Okay. Protein. Are you good, Piers? Well, clearly, are you going to destroy me? Clearly, from this opening, better than you. Let me see how this on me. Okay. Let's be aggressive, shall we? School chess champion, eh? Mm hmm. It's tense. Certainly. Lennox Lewis was better than you when I played him. Was he? Well, he beat me 39 times out of 40. Check. Yeah, he is uh, pretty good at the game, I heard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Time to get aggressive with you, Mr. Tate. Show you a bit of toxic chess masculinity. Well, the world's been pretty aggressive with me lately, Piers, so... Uh, I'm used to it. It's fine. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. Oops. Apologize. 
How long we got? Why do you think the queen... 3.45. Why do you think the queen gets to jump across the board and the king doesn't? Because it's sexist. The game of chess is sexist, but perhaps it reflects life, Piers. Haven't you ever thought that when you look at a yacht in Dubai... You're running out of time. Oh. Stop stalling. I know what you're Fine, doing. I'll just take your queen. Oh, God! I'll just take your queen. Damn it. I was trying to give you a little speech there. You didn't want to listen to it. No, I was trying I didn't to tell you when you see a yacht in Dubai, the girl just gets an Instagram invite, gets to jump right on board. She so gets listen. to run across the board and do whatever she wants, but the man has to get there a square at a time. The man had to buy that yacht. That's the difference between being a man and being a woman. That's why the queen gets you to know do what? how she does. A chivalrous man just always lets ladies go first. Life and chess <laughs> That's reflect. That's why I let you go first. Life and chess reflect, Piers. Mm -hmm. I've made a catastrophic error, but I'm bouncing back. Let's see. I always accidentally take someone's chick. Three minutes. Pierce fucking sucks. I don't even mean to. It's just like, oops. <laughs> Bro, he's doing worse you than the random. You need to stop knocking my pieces over like some. Doug. Yeah, exactly. He's not getting in my head. They're talking to me saying you're getting in my head. Um, How do you think chess reflects life? I think that it's all about strategy. Correct. That if you're good at chess, you can be good at pretty much anything because it's about thinking ahead, it's about planning, it's about relentless practice. And you know what else is beautiful about chess? Mm -hmm. If you lose, somewhere you made a mistake. There is no luck. Absolutely right. And chess, even if it's the smallest mistake, somewhere it was your fault. It teaches absolute self-accountability, which yep. is something that we need a lot more of in the world mm, today. That is true. And that's why chess is so important. You can take my knight if you want. Okay. You don't want it? Why no, do you want my knight? Because uh, I'm playing a long game. Oh, okay. Yeah, growing up, I played a lot of chess. Uh, checkers, I never played once, though. I thought you'd want it. I'm going to leave it there in case you take it anyway. Okay. I'm going to go. Because I know what you want me to do. And I'm not going to do it. Actually, I will do it now. Okay, good. Check. <laughs> uh. Yeah, chess is intimate. You know, I like it. How long? <laughs> I need to buy some time here. I need to buy some time. It's getting uh, destroyed. This is really playing well on radio, by the way. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. What an idiot. I will say that, How Pierce? long have I got? One you minute, 12. You believe in yourself. Oh, I never, ever give up. Believe in yourself, Pierce. I do believe in myself, thank you. Good. Self-belief is important. I do believe in myself, but this has not gone well. You're quite good at chess. I'll give you that. Yeah, well, in the chessboard of life, I've done pretty good. Mm. I've done okay. Mm -hmm. What is Check. he doing? The question is, can you beat me in time? You've only got 50 seconds. Check. Well, that's interesting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he I can. I don't think he can. Let's see. Uh, quickly, quickly. Uh, mate and two, peers. Oh, no. Yeah, you can have that. Doesn't matter. It's mate and two. Check. Mate. Good. Ah! Why? <laughs> <laughs> well played. 25 seconds away from safety. Brilliant. Okay, Brilliant. well, Andrew Tate, Fucking I'll give you destroyed. something. Uh, you're good at chess. Thank you. See. You have to be. You just beat me. <laughs> I know you're a national, internationally renowned What has player. chess taught you about life? Oh, he doesn't want the compliment. Like I said about the queen being able to run around the board, the king having to move a square at a time, about the fact you need to think ahead, absolutely everything is your fault. But there is a saying... He was trying so hard to win. ...sayings in the world that said a well game. Queers well Morgan is my favorite. A gentleman, but an expert game, <laughs> expertly played game of chess is the sign of a wasted life. And it's kind of sad. He's I played, I played fucking seething. He's so fucking angry. Uh, I was amazed. He was taught by his mum. But he was all about the way he fought, the way he He's fought. Shook, yeah. dude. It was all down to the way he played chess. <laughs> it was all about looking ahead, Getting ahead of your opponent, planning, planning punches, you know, all that kind of thing. Chess absolutely reflects life. Even I'm sure. now in my business meetings with my team. A lot He's golfing. His worldview is changing, dude. Team, he wants to call him for assault. He the wants to call out Andrew for assault right now. The bishop and the knight, and everyone does everything correctly. No psychological assault. You have a very formidable board. Small mind. And chess reflects life absolutely. You're a fucking retard. What man was your father? He was the greatest man on the face of the planet, but uh, luckily he had me, and now, in the natural order of the universe, he's gone, and I am here, and I carry his name, and it is my duty to bring 
honor to him. And this is one of the greatest things about achievement because achievement honors your ancestors. Bless people you. People talk about my father because of how successful I am. And people will talk about me into eternity well, go, after my death because of how successful uh, my son will be. This is the great Amen. thing about achievement. It's an honor let's to your go. ancestors. What would he have made of your success, your father? He would be extremely underwhelmed by it because he always expected it of me. I am Emory Andrew Tate III. I can do whatever I put my mind to. And he would be like, well, of course. You decided you wanted to become the most famous man on the planet. It took you a few months, of course. Does your, does your mother ever do what my mother does and occasionally go, I think you went too far there? My mother has absolute trust in my abilities and capabilities. She says, be careful, do your best, but you are the most capable and competent man on the planet. And that I wasn't the question. That, that's what she says. She says, does, be careful. Does she ever say you shouldn't have said that? Nah. She knows better than that. Really? No, no, never. She says, you're, just be careful. You know what you're doing. Yep. It's kind of hard to argue against me, and this is what my haters seem to struggle with. It's hard to argue against a person who is monumentally successful in every single human metric that can possibly be measured. This is why young men respect me so much. They but want you ever to tell be, your mother what to do? They want to be my life. You ever tell her what to do? I don't need to. She's a full-grown woman. Would you ever tell her what to do? I would give her my advice if she asked for you it. You say you can't leave opinion. the home, you can't drive, all those things you joke about? Or? I would give her my, I'd give her my opinion. I would say perhaps you should move house now or perhaps that's not safe. Or Yeah, I would absolutely because I'm responsible for her safety. And when you're responsible for somebody's safety, you have an opinion and you need to have a firm opinion on that subject. So completely. For any woman I'm responsible for, for any woman I'm responsible for her safety, I would not say that's an unsafe thing to do. How much are you worth? I'm a billionaire by now. Dollars or pounds? About dollars. We're not in pounds yet, but All we'll right. get there soon. So what to do? Yeah, we have a, a little bit of work to do. But and finally, I know you don't know anything about football, care even less, but greatest of all time, Ronaldo or Messi? They're both two very hardworking men. I have absolute respect for anybody on earth who dedicates... That lie kind of made everything cringe at the end, but okay. Andrew Tate, thank you very much indeed. That's it for tonight. Keep it uncensored like it was tonight. What do you guys think? I love seeing Piers' face get obliterated. <clears throat> What's that? I'm going to be honest. Like, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder you think. Mm. Yeah, Merck, it feels like that, but I'll be streaming daytime in Texas a lot more. And this was a long one, nine hours almost. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, I need a favor now. I done my part. And I gave you everything. We got Obama. I need you guys to boost this new video. It's only five minutes or six minutes, I think. I need you guys to put me on the algorithm, push the likes, and have more YouTube and uh, more good shit. And then, yeah, we're going to post on. T I don't have a TikTok, so someone post it for me and I'll get TikTok soon and I'll start doing a lot more but it's going to be good content street stuff and five minute stuff you know what we're going to do shorts we do all that and women are in my life jealous base this one's so jam-packed five minutes even that's perfect dead hex we killed that that was an accident that it's five that was perfect uh, I'm crying. This is gospel. Perfect. Perfect reaction from these cult like heathens. <laughs> Look at this. That fucking dirty harlot. This is beyond based. What is this? What is beyond based? Where'd you go? Whereas a guy can actually watch a Joker movie for two hours, not text anyone, and feel the energy of alone. And that's why they're meant to stay with cousins and family and grandma that's where they're mm -hmm. supposed to be socially calibrated but now that liberalism has stripped that they have whore one and whore two and whore three to talk to and a bunch of friend dudes that are trying to smash any woman who says these are my friends they're not trying to smash me that's like admitting i'm a whore or i'm the dumbest idiot in your phone don't talk to me anymore what the Jeez. fuck is worse finding out you're talking a fucking retard or finding out that you're talking the biggest fucking hoe and they have like a million excuses. If you're the type of guy who listens to a woman's excuses, you deserve whatever's coming your way. You deserve everything that bitch does to you.
Like, I couldn't ever be in a car where a girl's spitting excuses because they're afraid to. They know I'll be like, shut the fuck up. And that's what the weird thing is. Based men now hear their side of the argument. There's nothing to listen to. Hey, man, you don't need guy friends. If you're even having the argument, the communication, you're the fucking hoe. You're the guy is the fucking hoe. The fuck are you talking about that? I've never had someone walk into my car. Mm -hmm. I've never had a girl have the balls to talk to me like that where they're like actually i have a bunch of guy friends and stuff they all do the same thing mm -hmm. the worst they'll do is i'm getting rid of them john then hurry the fuck up bitch <laughs> hurry the fuck up <laughs>
could be anyone a lone fool out in the sun your heartbeat of solid gold i love you you'll never know when the daylight comes you feel so 